Good morning to one and all present here. Am I audible, sir? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Good morning. I would like to welcome all to the virtual presentation of IFERPC, Innovative Project Seeds Funding Scheme, which is organized by IFERP. More than 548 proposals received from 327 institutions. From the 548 proposals, uh, 119 proposals from 83 institutes were shortlisted by the evaluation committee for the second round of virtual conference. I would like to introduce about the IFERP. It is one of the largest professional association is on its way to digitalize innovation process through our professional networking services and thus providing an integral virtual scientific community, mutual engagements, exploring potential of researchers, creating a cooperative and collaborative academic environment. Moreover, uh, more than 75,000 members and 420 universities and institutions are associated with IFERP. Utilizing our service in the field of engineering, science and technology by organizing and providing international conference and publication, assistance, res uh, research assistance and guidance, students, professionals and institutional membership, ed schemes, international workshops, chapter guest lectures, chapters, guest lectures, faculty ex exchange programs, short-term training programs, webinar, scientific conference management systems. IFERP have stepped in an entrenched strong network in Asia, Middle East, and in many European countries. RP, a forum where innovations and research interest could be supported and developed, prioritizing our mutual interest. In this video, we want you to dive into our world, giving yourself a clear insight into IFERP. But first, who are we and what do we do? Institute for Engineering Research and Publication, IFERP for short, is one of the world's largest non-profitable professional associations operating under the techno Arete Research and Development Association TRADA, meant for research and development in the field of engineering, science and technology. We are one of the largest professional bodies for engineering professionals in India and across the globe, established in 2014. We extend to every part of the globe, with more than 28,000 professional members and 34,000 student members. Our growing membership at IFERP has led to an increase in members from Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa and the USA, fostering networking opportunities that strengthen ties within and across countries and technical communities. The mission of IFERP is to connect professionals at an integrated platform for growth to divert knowledge and skills towards the sustainable application of professional education and more. And our vision of digitalizing innovation processes through our professional networking services and more has pushed us forward to our achievements today. With our mission to make our academic services reach the top and grassroots level of institutions, we are funding colleges to organize conferences and scientific events, enabling researchers incubated at different areas of our country to directly contribute towards the transformation of India. IFERP simply connects engineers, exchange global innovation and acts as a bridge between researchers and academics 
by organizing international conferences, world conferences, faculty development programs, webinars, seminars, providing membership, and more. Some of our conferences include WCASET Malaysia, WCASET Jakarta, ICAS ETAM APU Malaysia, and many more. We've also organized scientific events in association with renowned universities done in the past with over 28,593 journal publication services, creating opportunities to get your research paper published in high impact factor journals such as Scopus Indexed, Web of Science, Google Scholar Index Journals, ESCI, UGC Approved, El Compandax, ISI, Chimago Index Journals and many more. To make our operations smoother and more perfect, we have been supported by our associated organization, Association of Cloud Technologists, Global Association of Nanotechnology, International Association for Big Data Analysts, International Association for IoT, International Wireless Network Association, and World Association for Structural Engineers. We have also worked alongside several clients and partners both nationally and internationally like University Malaysia Sabah, APU Malaysia, UNJ Jakarta, MC University Thailand, Ajman University Dubai, PUP Philippines, IIUM Malaysia, ISU Philippines, FCPC Philippines, WCC Philippines SRM University, Galgotia University, Amity University and much more government and private organizations in different countries. At IFERP, we believe that there's always a better way to treat professionals and that is what we do. If you would like to see more or go deeper on IFERP, you can visit our website at www.iferp.in. Thank you, sir, for the video. I, uh, IFERP, Innovative Project Seeds Funding Scheme, seeks the, uh, to assist students and researchers by providing financial assistance for proof of concepts, prototype development, product trial, validation, market entry, and commercialization of their innovative product projects ideas. For the researchers and students, easy availability of capital is essential for their innovative projects ideas and startups. The seeds fund will be distributed by IFERFP to the students and researchers who submit innovative project ideas. This would allow these innovative projects ideas to progress to the point where they could see investment for IFERP. I would like to welcome all our session chairs and evaluation committee members who have spared their valuable time to evaluate in the presentation. I would like to welcome Dr. Bala Murgan Sir, ACM Distinguished Speaker, Founder and Chairman of Albert Einstein Engineering and Research Lab, Vice Chairman from Renew Renewable Energy Society of India. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Thank you for the, uh, for the welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. I would like to welcome Dr. Ramaya Sambi, Assistant Professor from M. Kumar Samaya College of Engineering. I would like to welcome Dr. D. Tavya, uh, Tavya Prasad, Sir, HOD from Mount Zion College of Engineering and Technology. I would like to welcome Dr. G. S. Any Grace Vimla, ma'am, Professor from Savita Schools of Engineering. I would like to welcome Baswaraj Mangod sir, Dean Academic from Hirasugar Institute of Technology. I would like to welcome Dr. Gayatri Ma'am, Associate Professor from Pongu Arts and Science College. I would like to welcome Dr. Ushas S. Kumar Ma'am, HOD, Biomedical Engineering, SRM Institute of Science and Technology. 
I would like to welcome Dr. Komalgal Anupama, ma'am, professor from Periyar Manamani Institute of Science and Technology. I would like to welcome Dr. M. Vasmi Krishna, sir, professor from Sri Vyankateshwara College of Engineering, Tirupati. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome all our presenters who have shortlisted and eagerly waiting to present their ideas. Um, I request everyone to join the breakout rooms according to your department. Uh, let me tell you the uh, sessions. Technical session one CSC will remain in the main room. Technical session two ECE and Triple E will move to the breakout room one. Technical session three IT will move to the breakout room B2. Technical session four biomed, chemistry and biotechnology to the breakout room three. Technical session five civil will move to the breakout room four. And technical session six, mechanical, should move to the breakout room five. I request everyone to join the breakout room accordingly. Sorry for the inconvenience. Mm -hmm. I would like to invite Rajesh D. Sir from Dr. NGP Institute of Technology to present the paper um, from liver, liver ragging farm equipments using Android application that uses KNN uh, algorithm to find location of service providing centers. Thank you, ma'am. I shall now share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes. Yes, it is visible. Good morning to one and all. Welcome to our presentation. First of all, I would like to thank IFERP's Innovation Project Seed Funding Scheme for providing us with this opportunity. Me and my teammates are the students of Dr. NGP Institute of Technology, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu, pursuing second year of B Computer Science Engineering. I am Arunika. I am Ashifa. I am Indra Pradeshini. And our mentor for this project is our faculty, Mrs. L.R. Suchitra, Assistant Professor of Computer Science Department. We are greatly delighted for taking this platform to talk about the backbone of our nation, that is agriculture and farmers. There's a saying which goes, farmers are the magicians who produce money from mud. But talking about the truth, farmers are the ones who are facing major economical crisis. As per the surveys, farmers spend almost the half of their input costs on equipment and labors. So our idea is to leverage farm equipment using an application that takes the help of KNN algorithm for finding the location of the nearby service providing centers. It also has the option of hiring labors and also an included feature of price prediction system. The purpose of this presentation is to suggest an idea on how farmers can reduce the money spent on equipment and labor, thereby adding on to their additional income. The main objective is to develop an application for renting farm equipment at a lower cost that is fixed by the government which is the government shall fix the price after comparing it with all other existing prices. The farmers also get to hire laborers using the application if they want. They can check the availability of the equipment and the nearby service providing centers via this application. An added feature which I would like to introduce here is that of the price prediction system of the farm products, which will be discussed later on in detail in this presentation. 
Here comes the introduction to this project. As we see, there are financially settled farmers who have their own equipment and micro farmers who rent their equipment from rental stores at high prices. Actually, it is better to rent equipment for required period that, rather than owning it, since it demands additional expenses. The price rate is fixed by the government, which is compared with existing prices. Also, a new feature of prediction of price rates of farm products such as seeds, fertilizers, equipment, etc. for upcoming years can be implemented. Our reference application for literature survey is taken from Ulevan Mandi Kisan application and the fieldwork that we have done. These above mentioned applications are the already pre-existing applications that has the features of renting equipment. But there are some drawbacks in these applications that are rectified in this application. These applications are present only in some localities, whereas this application will be provided in large localities in more service providing centers and the information about the service providing centers is also available. They provide only basic equipment such as tractor, plough, cage wheel, etc. But this application provides these basic equipments along with latest technologies such as drone and artificial rainfall. Equipment are only rented for a large period of time. Farmers who require equipment for a short period of time are not able to rent it. This application rents it for both short and long period of time whenever the farmer needs. A new feature that has been included is the price prediction system. The farmer may know about the price about the same equipment in the future. As we see the proposed work, the interface requires Aadhaar card number, PAN card, and government authorized ID credentials to verify and register in this application. And on every login, OTP is verified. For finding the nearest service providing center, GPS with machine learning algorithm called KNN algorithm is used. The service providing centers are the government authorized centers such as Taluk office, Panchayat office, and eSavemIM. In this application, once an equipment is rented, the GPS device fixed to the equipment starts tracking for security purposes and a timer gets initiated to indicate the due for returning. This feature reminds the farmers by notifying the due time. Suppose if any equipment needed for the farmer is unavailable, once if the equipment is available, farmer would receive a notification regarding that availability. Now coming to the labor's part, labors are in great demand nowadays. So including this as an option will be of great use for the farmers. And not all the farmers know how to use all the equipment. So this facility helps this application to gain higher reach among the cultivators. Entrepreneurs can also include their hands in a project by setting up their own service providing centers. Now, moving on to the new module that is the price prediction system. A machine learning algorithm, long short term memory is used to predict the prices. The parameters like the price of the diesel, cost of living for respective regions, demand and cost of the equipment are taken into consideration while predicting the prices. For example, this changes from place to place. If we need to find the price for a particular place, we need to take in consideration about the crops which grow more or less in that particular area. So according to the demand, the cost will increase or decrease. User can know about the nearby service providing center in this application using GPS tracking system and KNN algorithm. Using GPS, the location can be tracked and KNN algorithm finds the nearest service providing center. It shows the user about, about the availability of the renting equipment, the equipment that have already been rented. A GPS tracker is also inserted in the equipment which tracks the equipment price prediction system. If a farmer wonders, what would be the price of the same equipment in the future? Then 
price prediction system helps the farmers to know about it. As you can see, the novelty of this application would be making sure that the equipment is available in all the localities, available, uh, allowing the equipment to be rented even for a short period of time, providing modern technologies like artificial, artificial rainfall and drones, providing labors and price prediction, comparison of the prices. So these are all the drawbacks in the existing apps. Can you proceed on with the presentation, Ma? It's, it's getting late. Yes, sir. Anyone? Any one of you from among the, among the three? Whoever is available, uh, kindly uh, proceed on with the presentation. Don't wait for the other person. Okay, sir. Moving on to the implementation, we have three parts. The farmer's login, renting price with comparison, and the price prediction. And here, in technical stack, the front end is developed with Flutter with GPS tracking support. Admin portal uses the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP if required. For backend database, the Firebase server is used where the database is dynamically updated. API and DBMS provide the interface to the application. For the implementation of this application, it would take around seven months. The first two months are allocated for front-end, the next two months are allocated for interface, the following months are allocated for back-end, finally, the last month is allocated for testing. Uh, Ma'am, time is up, please. I request any questions from the respected judges. Is, is, is it over, Ma? Is it your presentation over? The presentation you have a little presented? more, sir. But still, uh, you can just take about a, a minute of time and uh, try to um, um, sum up all the things which you have planned to say for the next uh, few slides and tell it right now. Okay, sir. Hmm. You can go to the conclusion part of the presentation okay, and so. uh, sum up all the points which you have planned to uh, tell so that we can uh, finish the presentation and move on to the question and answer session. This application is useful and productive for farmers and for entrepreneurs. Farmers will be able to rent equipment at affordable and cheaper price. This application gives us the advantage to increase the GDP of our country and take it to the next step. The financial assistance for this, for this would be conference paper would be 10,000, course expenses would be 12,000, laboratory and manpower would be 10,000, miscellaneous would be 5,000. It would be a total of 37,000. We thank everyone for providing us with this opportunity to present ourselves. Now time for queries. Okay, my very good presentation and a very novel presentation, which is the need of the hour also. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. So, Thank you, sir. So congrats to everyone, all the three. And there's one more person in your, uh, in your group. Yes, sir. We have Rajesh. Rajesh, okay. So in your presentation, you have mentioned about uh, the price prediction about the <clears throat> uh, various uh, serials and other things. Uh, so what are the parameters which you're using for price prediction? Predicting the price of one, for example, if you're going the, to harvest the uh, wheat or rice or whatever maybe it is. What are the parameters by which you can, you are uh, um, deciding or the, you are going to train the machine learning algorithm? So we will have the price of the diesel, hmm. cost of okay. living of the respective region, okay. demand cost of the equipment, sir. Okay. Uh, do you think that these things can can they can be uh, uh, predicted much more? Uh, comfortably like because cost of living we have a lot of environmental factors also uh, taking into account yes sir it changes so, from place to place 
so how you are going to optimize that so after our field work i think we'll be able to optimize it in a better way sir why you are using this k k n algorithm you would have used some other algorithm like any other uh, classification algorithm so even for regression type why you are using this so k n n algorithm is used to uh, predict the nearby places so so with the okay. help of gps tracking uh, we can use uh, k n n algorithm to find the uh, nearby service providing center it's more efficient than the any other algorithm sir Hmm. No, no. Uh, in, in what way it is efficient? That's what we because predicting the nearby places is you have multiple algorithms to do the same thing. Nearest neighborhood, you have multiple algorithms. Closest pair, even basic algorithm, not not even heuristic algorithms. Basic algorithms itself will do it. Why you are you are choosing the KNN for this particular application? Probably, if you are not able to answer to this question, you kindly think of it. Okay. Why we need because uh, this is uh, I mean since we are dealing with the uh, uh, computer science we have to be uh, confined and like uh, very confident about why we are using these particular algorithms. Yes, sir. And, uh, 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 so what you can do is that you can look into what are the other types of algorithms which are available for which will uh, produce the same result and uh, make an analysis of the of it and come out with a um, suggestion that probably this is the most you cannot be the best algorithm you can. find the most optimal algorithm ah uh, yeah optimal algorithm for this particular application like that you can confine okay, okay sir good 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 presentation thank you sir thank you sir thank any, you sir. any other uh, sir uh, ram sir sir any other queries from uh, yes sir yes sir, uh, yes, sir. Uh, good morning to everyone and uh, congratulations for the team members uh, the question is uh, it is a uh, android application no so it is mobile application So who is the server? Who is the hosting person or admin person? The how you are connecting all the farmers in which way? The flow it is required. Can you explain? So can you repeat the question? So the established among the uh, team members, uh, stakeholders. Sorry, sir, we didn't get your question, sir. It is a online application, no Android application, no. So yes, sir. The team members means uh, admin. The where is the server is uh, maintained by the It, it may be government or you people or any any one person want to maintain the server, and so, the farmers uh, want to interact in that application. How they want to use mobile phones, whether they will be uh, uh, able to know how to handle that application and how to communicating this uh, uh, server or the application. How they they want to contract. The admin will be the government and the entrepreneurs if they said they are. service providing center sir okay, okay. so yes sir farmers everybody knows how to use an application nowadays not okay. not just by himself okay. they can use it with the help of their family members so okay. it is feasible sir okay so shall we move to the next presenter with your information Yes, ma'am. If there there are no other questions from the audience, also we can move. I think there is no other question from the audience. Yes, ma'am. We can we can move. Thank you, sir. I would like to in, uh, invite uh, Dr. Subhu Lakshmi, ma'am, from Anna University, to present paper present on energy trading using blockchain technology. Yes, ma'am. I am ready for the presentations. Now, first, start my scan screen. There is a small instruction for the presenters. Uh, it will be eight minutes of presentations and two minutes of question answering. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, professors and delegate. I am Lakshmi, full-time scholar, full-time scholar in Big Campus and Nine University, Trichy. my ready logic blockchain technology my pro proposed supervisor dr s sujatha professor and head department of the computer applications come to my objective in peer to peer energy market using blockchain technology increases the decentralized energy resources but reduce throughout by more connect 
the small splitting into multiple small contract would reduce the necessary amount of data in one block so increase the number of possible market participants decrease the scalability to come uh, ma'am ma just a second ma'am ma yes, ma uh, yes your, sir uh, ma'am your voice is breaking that is one thing second is that you can make the slide uh, to the full screen and you can operate it also so you can make the slides move also We are still viewing only the first screen, opening screen. Sir, so now move on. Uh, uh, no, no, ma'am. Still, we are able to view only the IFERP energy energy trading using blockchain technology. The time. Oh, uh, yes. Sir, so possible now. It's audible now, sir. Still, Hello, there is sir. some problem. Is still, uh, still the voice is breaking, and just move on to the slide show over there. on the right side it is downwards um i slide uh, objective is seen uh, no. we are we are not able to view the objective slide ma'am oh. but i can see so there is some problem in mirroring i think again so again sharing. again restarting sir please ma'am sorry now can see sir uh the the opening screen the first screen we are able to see ma'am the uh, you kindly pass on to the next two uh, slides ma'am you can just navigate to the next sir? objective sir uh, objective no, we are we are in table to view what happened ma'am just click on the another slide okay take yes, your cursor yes. uh, on the second one and just click on it scope objective uh, not yet ma'am so presentations sad sir now visible to all sir uh, you 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 just yes, click on that hmm now you can visible, you can just uh, you can you so just now, click on the obje objective slide ma'am ah uh, yes sir yes sir uh, you, uh, so that you can present it uh, uh, okay sir now i start here okay, yes ma'am please please proceed oh, okay sir my title of the project is energy trading using blockchain technology uh, in peer to peer energy market using blockchain technology increase the decentralized energy resources but reduced throughput to splitting the smart contract into multiple smart contract could reduce the necessary amount of data in one block therefore increase the number of possible market participants so it increase the scalability of the user so blockchain to combine with the blockchain with the iot potentially fit for nowadays so blockchain offer a solution to challenges within iot blockchain provide a decentralized platform for trusted interaction and information exchange blockchain can be defined as a chain of block containing record of a transaction with the necessary data this make it immutable peer to peer decentralized technology blockchain offer great benefit to different application including iot duty characters characteristics in it include decentralization immutability and security this is the main goal of blockchain blockchain provide a robust decentralized platform for trustful interaction and information exchange but blockchain still suffer scalability to improve the quality of implementation to address the scalability issue such approach and also iot to improve the security of energy Excuse my me. scope of the project is to combine iot and blockchain to improve the energy resources continually available to the consumer without intervention in the rural area also uh, it is the one of the example for 
in my situation that is i am in the outer area in the uh, city that's why the, to break uh, energy level in the presentations this is the real time example for the virtual presentation uh, bitcoin implement in a literature bitcoin implement pwe consensus algorithm to mine block and ensure the security of the network it record all transaction and make them available to the public in an immutable and decentralized distributed ledger iot trading energy trading rely on centralized third party it negotiate between energy provider and energy consumer it lead high energy consumption to overcome this uh, energy consumption iot combined with the blockchain to eliminate the third party so third party organizations also removed in the combined with the iot with the blockchain so uh, with the help of utilization of smart contract smart contract is a digital contract that is recorded and stored permanently in a blockchain smart contract designed to automate transaction without central authority the smart contract means if then statement like a if then statement if uh, true in the statement is continue uh, else it not to continue that uh, smart contract is a stored program stored permanently in a blockchain in my literature survey in uh, title of implement a blockchain based local energy market insight on communication and scalability uh, in in this paper my observation utilize the utility company to distribute energy to energy nodes with the help of energy broker that is third party it uh, it uh, avoid by in my scope blockchain to provide transparency immutability and auditability of peer to peer energy market so p2b to avoid the third party utilization the next paper my observation blockchain enabled secure energy trading with the verifiable partners in industrial internet of things in this paper energy trading scheme to supervise and manage the energy trading process toward building a secure energy trading system and improving energy quality for industry using the field test setup in third literature is survey a, hello ma'am can you explain what is your product statement what is your solution simply short and small sir what is your product statement what is what product you are taken Okay, in that how you solve it? So can you simply solve it? Can you explain? What is the problem statement? Hmm. What is your problem? What you are actually? Ah, hmm. uh, my title is energy trading using blockchain technology. Okay. Ah, uh, in existing work P two B work presented, but a third party that is a uh, intermediate peer. Uh, Uh, sir or sir or sir, and when the um, internet broker uh, misuse the energy or uh, occur, so these chain. So here, here you are you are telling that it is energy trading. Okay, so energy trading yes, um, uh, it is in the form of uh electricity energy and you are telling no ah uh, no 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 uh, uh, i review the all the paper electricity oriented or uh, trading oriented or so now you've joined uh, all the papers are reached uh, hello i'm yes. trying uh, it is <laughs> hello ah uh, yes yes my uh, yes sir my proposal many of the iot devices have limited computational power and storage capacity okay. it make them difficult to secure vulnerable and easy for intruder to target my uh, already existing work proof of work there are so many concerns algorithm uh, available in the blockchain technology that is the first one is a bitcoin utilize the pow and uh, uh, then uh, pow energy. consume lot of energy Okay, yes, here sir. you are telling energy trading. Okay, here what the energy you are mean? Uh, energy means uh, depend on the signal. Uh, okay. From uh, 
producer to consumer uh -huh. or uh, uh, two parties peer to peer mm -hmm. what you are doing nothing but signal strength signal strength okay so, uh, um, signal my strength. point of view signal strength the okay, signal strength who is uh, uh, so far what purpose that energy is used to the signal strength is used actually uh, in some third party available in the p2p network who is the, user? Who is the uh, provider it consume energy uh -huh. i'm asking energy who provider who is the provider who is the provider provider means uh, for example in in a situation uh, in iot situations uh, one of the main concern uh, for example vodafone or jio the provider is a um user also number of user uh, we are number of user company is the provider we are a consumer uh, which company ma'am can you explain one or two example a jio company uh, or uh, vodafone or anything okay so who is the okay. user we are the user no uh, yes sir yes okay. sir so here uh, here how, how you trade the energy because jio is the authorized uh, in particular company is the authorized person okay so we will be giving all the uh, things okay we are using the uh, after fitting sim sim card we are using so how you uh, try, uh, trade the energy in which way can you explain uh, actually the the main uh, main uh, producer is the central area the consumer is number of uh, splitting pot so to avoid the splitting in the third party co companies or uh, intermediate companies are eliminated by using proof of authority a uh, smart contract yeah, intermediate company yeah for jio and with with jio and our end user or uh, who is the intermediate person yes uh, sir a uh, intermediate purpose means uh, the main co main uh, main company is the uh, tanjo district then a uh, subdivision is uh, uh, in uh, other places so it uh, going up to rural area it reduces signal strength of, um, okay and go to, anywhere uh, if you go geo if you have geo sim card on means geo only give the all the uh, services am i correct uh, yes then how intermediate person involved in this your uh, your proposal Uh, some uh, for example uh, uh, through communication okay. the energy is split to uh, third party or uh, attack some occur occur so to reduce the signal strength from provider to uh, seller uh, receiver the, that's why uh, uh, we utilize the smart contract Uh, the only person only received the without uh, interference or uh, without attack that's okay. why we, we can reach easily okay thank you thank you very much for your explanation uh, sir for yes. the sir you can ask some question the presentation was good ma'am uh, yes, i think we can uh, it's okay fine there's no no questions from my side okay thank you thank you okay, okay sir can i continue sir Uh, no 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 uh, it, it is time ma'am okay. we can move on oh. to the next presentation okay. okay sir thank you thank you very much thank sir i would like to invite the next presenter vishnu rama ak sir from anna university uh, and which you present on a paper presentation on application to manage food waste using uh, machines learning algorithm and ph sensor Vishnu sir, am I audible towards you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just a second. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, yes, ma'am. It's visible. It's my pleasure to welcome all the jury members and all my competitors. I'm Shrutika, and my teammates are Rahul Vishwa, 
and Vishnu Ram from Dr. NGP Institute of Technology would like to thank for giving this wonderful opportunity to manifest our idea about an application to manage food waste using machine learning algorithm and pH sensor. As we all know that food is one of the major source for energy for living beings. So the food quality and safety perform the highest demand throughout the history. For many people in the world, food waste has become a habit like buying food than we eat, uh, taking larger portions than we eat. A 2021 meta-analysis did not include the food, and food loss during the production because food waste has become a challenge in all the countries at all levels of economic development. Food waste is nothing but the food that is not eaten. In worldwide, tons of edible food are lost or wasted every day. Huge quantities of food are also wasted in parties, weddings, functions, and so on. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, but uh, in, in fact, okay. So due to time constraints, can you explain what is your problem statement? Clearly, can you explain what you are taking the problem statement, how you solve it? So, first, of all, what you explain, then we can, with the uh, police time, we can explain the uh, things. Sir, our problem statement is nothing but uh, to reduce the food waste and uh, recycling the food to help farmers by produce, uh, providing the organic manure. So. Can you sir, can you tell me the flow, how where the food waste is there and uh, how you will tackle that problem, in which way you are solving the issue? Sir, uh, food waste is uh, done in all, uh, all over the world. Uh, okay, like, that is okay. Uh, where, is, which, which exact, exact uh, situation you are taking? In sir, hotel uh, or uh, hostel or anywhere, which, which situation you are taking? No. Sir, uh, sorry, think, once again. Sir is asking what is your problem and what is the solution? Okay, you are sir, our problem is. Uh, uh, you, you okay, where is wasted? Means hostel or hotel or home. That it is wasted. How you find it out? The pro how much you how you measure that wastage? Is, how you solve it? Okay, sir. Sir, food is wasted in uh, hotels and also in weddings. Um, and uh, so many functions uh, that are uh, occurring in uh, occasions. Okay. So we are uh, uh, collecting those foods from the uh, those functions and parties and hotels and okay. uh, testing those foods uh, whether it is an edible or not a non edible. Okay. If it is an edible uh, edible food, we are uh, transferring it to the orphanages, nearby orphanages using KNN algorithm, sir. If it is non-edible, we are uh, transferring it to the testing, uh, we are transferring it to the uh, fertilizer industry, uh, mm -hmm. which will make it as an organic manure and uh, mm -hmm. distribute to the farmers, which will be uh, very less cost and uh, more effective to grow the plant. So what is your uh, application? Uh, in which way, uh, what is your use interface? It is mobile application or web application, what kind of application you are using for this problem solution? Sir, it's an Android application. Android application. Okay. So, uh, how are you uh, collecting this information? By a particular location, the waste is there. Okay. How you identify it with the Android application? Sir, uh, sorry, sir. sir. The volunteer, the volunteers can uh, voluntarily can uh, use our application and they can. Uh, they can uh, Send the message that they have a, a amount of food to be donated, okay. and then they can be collected from them. Okay, the, the user only, the volunteer only, the user only giving the information to your application. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. After that, what you are doing? So after that, we are collecting that foods and we are categorizing into. Okay, who will going to collect that food? So testing team, sir. Testing team, uh, okay. yes. team. So the after implementing this application, who are all, wherever the uh, testing people are available? Which locations are the testing people available? If it is currently uh, mobile Android application can be used by anywhere else throughout the world. Okay, in remote place, a person is a user is there, and there is a some wastage. If the that person giving the information to your application if the food is, food is wasted in on remote rural village. Okay, how the testing people where it is available, how they reach the particular location, in how much time, each time, how much time they will reach their location. How to connect it and how to organize the whole process. So testing will testing team will be allocated in nearby places in every places, sir. 
so if the information is delivered to the testing team they can using they can uh, use uh, gps where uh, the nearby places is uh, near place places where the donors give the foods and they can collect through okay then uh, here you are telling nearby places you have to uh, apply uh, you have to transfer the foods okay so how in which uh, the kn and algorithm which algorithm you are using for identifying the nearby places so do you come again sir so which algorithm you are using to identify the nearby places from the donor so we are using kn and algorithm sir okay for that it is required that kind of huge machine and algorithm is required to identify the nearby algorithm Yes, sir. It's more effective yes, than um. Simply in our application, in our application itself, you are in example, you are NTP. So you have mentioned uh, uh, Coimbatore and uh, uh, Pope Kalajar Airport. Nearby uh, nearby location, if you mention means under the store. Okay, this uh, the user registered with that application means they mention nearby location. So you can easily identify uh, uh, the nearby if you choose the Coimbatore and uh, Uh, airport location means who are all the receiver or alternate means they it is mentioned okay, if we, from the select by selection you can identify the nearby so who are the alternate okay for that again uh, algorithm is not required no when the this kind of machine learning algorithm is required means unknown location unknown information only we have to go for but it is a registered person it is not that much uh, algorithm is not required no it is my point of view can you explain me your point of view Hello. So, so, so it's nothing but we are using the mobile application, right? Okay. So we need some uh, securities and uh, uh, storing uh, storing purpose of data to store in this application. So, so we uh, uh, we are using those. You are using the can or other for identify the nearby location. For that only I'm asking. Any other purpose is the can or other is used. No sir. Okay, so uh, okay, sir. Uh, one more thing, sir. Can you ask some questions, sir? So Vishnu Ram and group, the good presentation and a, and a very good problem statement also. Uh, so from your title, what I understand is uh, it is uh, you are classifying the food based upon the pH value. Yes, sir. Uh, so generally, what from from the chemistry, what I know is that pH value is an indicator of the acidic property, whether it is an acid or base. So whether the food is acidic or basic. So that is the indication of the the, the pH value. Suppose if the food which is being wasted, for example, a milk-based food, like uh, a food which in which the milk okay. products are there, which is it is easily subject to uh, decomposition, degrading, decay. so in such cases suppose if there is one if in such for example if uh, um, uh, i mean for 10 liters of uh, milk is is being um, it is it is not being used in one particular marriage function and they are uh, transporting it to the other uh, um, uh, nearby orphanage so what uh, will happen if we, if that particular food gets spoiled in the meantime in the due course of traveling how we are going to ensure that safety are you able to get me Yes, sir. Uh, we are not going to transport the food without uh, testing the uh, without testing uh, the milk. As your okay. example, sir, we okay. are first going to test whether it is an edible or a non-edible. The pH level should be uh, in food as three point five to twelve point five, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be shown in this picture. Mm -hmm. If the food is an uh, if the food is not edible or uh, uh, it's very low uh, low to uh, low 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 state to eat. Uh, it will uh, show is the show like an uh, this alarm red alarm sir so we own uh, transfer uh, transport it to the orphanages will uh, directly transport it to fertilizer unit no how how this is uh, this particular thing is how it is uh, functioning that is what is my question see the food is categorized as fresh or edible food so yes. how we are going to categorize the the food whether it is edible or non edible 
non edible is like that uh, see uh, one, one particular food we can either be decayed or it can either be in the form of edible so what is that thing so ph value one particular value which you have mentioned as a ph value is uh, the acidic uh, the, it indicates the acidic or basic component of the uh, of any substance i am asking whether that particular ph value will indicate whether the food is decayed or not yes sir it will indicate sir it will indicate with a red alarm Uh, it is sure, sure. Here, right so so any uh, <clears throat> spoiled food will have ph value greater and the unspoiled food will have ph value less is it like that so there should be some yes, threshold sir. yeah there should be some threshold see yes, uh, I, i consider that 50 percentage is a pass mark uh, i say 50 percentage is a pass mark any mark above 50 is pass mark and uh, 50 per percentage less is uh, uh, reappearance like that there should be one um a threshold by, by, by which you uh, classify the food as edible or not edible that is what i am asking on, on what which particular whether it is a ph bad ph value means as far as i know it is 7 7 is the neutral value so anything which is greater than 7 is considered to be acidic and uh, less than 7 is considered to be base so it is whether that uh, spoilage of food is linked to this or not that's what i say okay okay fine Okay, you just uh, go look at it. You have something called as an E nose. You can um, you can note it down in your uh, notepad if you are having it. Uh, all the team members, you have something okay, called so as an E nose or a distal nose. Even I have not even inverted it. I have just uh, like uh, while uh, reading, I have just gone through this uh, this type of uh, thing. E nose or distal nose, the, which will uh, 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 which has the capability to differentiate between um, uh, the spoiled food. Especially they use this particular type of E noses in. Uh, um fisheries fish fish industries uh fish industries the i mean of fish once it is being caught and uh, it, they need to transport it to multiple places and there is a higher possibility for the fit, fish to get perished during the uh, transportation so they use this particular electronic nose to find the um, uh, uh, whether this particular food is correct like whether it is consumable or not so you can try using that that definitely there will be some problem i mean some issues in uh, adopting that particular thing to this application but you can actually think about it because nowadays food security is a very important now i mean very recently we have a lot of cases on shawarma and all yes sir so food security whatever we give it to even if it is going to be for a um, or for any anybody the food should be edible it should be good not to rich food yes. but a, any good uh, healthy food that should be ensured that is what my that is my input not a question that's just me okay very good okay, okay thank sir. you charlie thank you one sir. more thing you have a problem uh, statement and the solutions are good but the features you need to add extra okay then only give very good uh, uh, professional application so you in future you can uh, concentrate on that okay thank you thank you sir sure okay. thank you sir So can we move to the next presenter? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I would like to invite Rishi Kumar R. Sir from Bhartiyar University to present the presentation on motion sensor light bulbs. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir, you are audible. Good morning, all. I am Rishi Kumar. Uh, I am doing my MC at GRD College of Science, and my project is uh, motion motion sensor light bulb. And my mentor is uh, Dr. Linda. She is a professor in college, uh, GRD College of Science. Project objective: Motion sensor light bulb were first implemented to conserve energy in office and industrial environments. they were quickly adopted by consumers as well and they are popular among senior citizens with mobility issues and uh, dementia when lights are motion activated senior citizens doesn't have to walk to light switches to turn them on or off senior citizens are also spared for having to remember where the switches are located in each room and they don't have to 
trouble with switches if they need to use bathroom at night methodology when motion or body temperature is detected the sensor triggers the light when motion or temperature stops being detected the sensor sheds off the light without the help of the switches the light bulb is also linked to iot internet of things so it can be controlled using android or any other devices connected through internet each and every light bulb placed in a surrounding are interlinked with each other through the help of xb antennas so they can work effectively and communicate by knowing their surrounding and their environment these are my hardware requirements pir sensor illumination sensor thermal sensor xb and zigbee antennas microcontrollers pinhole cover server pc components the accelerometer and gyroscope sensor timer printed pcb resistors capacitor ac voltage density regulator recall coil um, sir sir in side for the next slide you can send me yeah yes this are my software okay, requirements this is very sir what is your can okay. you explain the flow of the processor okay sir i will explain it sir year ago my grandmother expired okay, sir okay one more thing uh, before the yesterday was yes, the title you your okay. proposal is novel one or already existing this kind of uh, sir i have done a, sir i have done a basic prototype sir okay uh, because of my real life incident my grandmother expired a year before okay. so i created this to uh, prevent the accident for uh, to not occur for my grandfather so okay. i wanted to implement in a large Larger. So can you explain the uh, working demo? Okay, sir. Sir, this is a very basic one, sir. Uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't costed a more for this. Uh, I used uh, yeah, some LEDs, and I only cost it only costed a uh, three to four thousand for the sensors, sir. And I used the bulb, and I used the non-working uh, vehicles AC to DC converter. Yeah, that is not correct. What is the okay. where you use it? How do you use it? Who are using it? That one, they explain. Sir, sir, for old age people, I have done this for. Where do you place this equipment? Sir, we can place it in a normal holder itself, sir. Okay. This one, I am talking about this one, sir. Okay. But in in advanced one, uh, we can make a three or four bulbs and connect it in each holder. I am asking the scenario, the situation. Okay, you are placed in a normal uh, holder, okay, bulb holder. Yeah. Yes, in the sir. room, anywhere in the room, okay. Yeah, then anywhere in the room. When it is moving nearby that place, the yeah. bulb is. Yeah. When it detects the when it detects the temperature or uh, it detects the motion, okay. The light automatically turn on, sir. Okay. When uh, the motion or the temperature detection, uh, it it if it de didn't de detects any motion or uh, heat, okay, this, it uh, automatically turn off, sir. Okay. Okay. This uh, this uh, this concept is already existing at as per my my point of view. What yes, is sir, it's existing. What is the novel thing you are added in this existing city? So, so, yes, sir, it's a, yes, sir, it's existing. I, I have, I, but it's not affordable for everyone in current uh, scenarios, sir. Okay. For that, what you added a new technology, new concept? Sir, I have reduced the cost, and How I have. Reduced? Sir? How you reduced the concept cost of this um, application or the device? So I, I have reduced by the sensors. Uh, by, so I'm asking simply, you are a, a complete application. So what is the cost of existing cost of the current market, and what is the your cost? So uh, the current. So I have linked uh, in today's uh, uh, only one light is been available, sir. But uh, in my project, three and four lights can be connected, uh, interlinked through it, sir. Hmm, I mean, cost so under you. What is the current market rate? And your cost, how what is the relationship? How much it is reduced? So I have reduced a uh, 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 variance of ten thousand, sir. From mm, the uh, uh, can you show the market price and your price? Any, sir, any I have proof, not any proof you are having. Sir, I have not added that slide, sir. Okay. But uh, the but the currently available but, but the currently available uh, uh, lights are really very costly, sir, comparatively. Okay, but anyhow, uh, when you present somewhere else, you need to yeah. be, whatever the concept you are targeting for that, you need to have proof. Okay, 
generally you okay. can identify what is your solution is correct or not okay so if your main objective is reducing cost so current market price and your development cost you also show then only it is easy to identify okay so any other point uh, features you are added in this uh, in your application proposal yeah yeah sir uh, benefits to the society sir a okay. project is primarily done for senior citizen and one with disabilities we can avoid unwanted accident for elder people in our house okay. we can say 20 percentage of electricity consumption okay. helpful for pregnant ladies and small children okay. scope of commercialization more than 1500 citizens senior citizens in india get injured or dead in a year at night times at home motion sensor light bulbs are very useful products for elders in the house a motion sensor light bulb ha to problem hai hamare paas hum sab driver hai kitni jo the sorry so any other features Okay. Are comparatively okay. cheaper than other motion light bulbs, sir. So it can be afforded by every family. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, explanation. So, Barman, uh, sir, do you have any questions? Rishi. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, Rishi, it's a good presentation, and uh, the one most thing I am very happy is that. Uh, uh the your innovation over here directly addresses the problem in the society yes sir so in that way i really appreciate you for choosing a problem because like uh, choosing a problem uh, something which happens to us to our family or our society is something which need we need to solve it instead of solving that part problem we go on for solving some other global problems but uh, instead of realizing that there we have so many <laughs> small problems uh, we have a, Within a near near by us, and also uh, to the people near uh, to us. In that aspect, I really appreciate the choice of uh, um, choosing the problem. Thank you. And a uh, uh, second thing is that the uh, I mean the analysis what you have done as far as the cost benefit analysis as well as technology analysis also it is good. And you have say you are saying that the, I mean um, the proposed architecture as well as the uh, the assembling cost is you have about. Uh, Ten thousand rupees. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, difference. Because of so their branding, they have cost more, sir. Mm -hmm. So that is also one. Because uh, when when it comes to a product, commercialization is very important. Commercialization is the key. If we yeah. are able to develop one particular product, very good product, very very nice product, and if it is very very costly, then who will buy? Yeah, sir. Any product which is come which is which which comes out of the innovation, you and I should be able to buy. Then only it is a successful product. yeah so so that is one thing that is uh, i really appreciate upon you and i also encourage you to do much more research upon as as um, said by ramasamy sir what are all the yeah, other sir, types of uh, uh, the other questions also you can actually look into it as far as uh, uh, the presentation is very good my best wishes thank you sir So shall we move to the next presenter? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Would like to invite uh, Loganath sir from Bharatiya uh, University to present the paper presentation on uh, same waste uh, smart waste management system. Yes. Loganath sir, are you there? Respected judges, can we move to the next presenter with your permission? Ah yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. We can move. We can postpone this particular presentation to the last, and we can move on to the next, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, i would like to invite dr g n r prasad sir from yes, chetna bharti institute of technology allocated to osmania university to present the paper on bloom uh, taxonomy level identification for the given question paper yes, or any items using machine learning techniques yes ma'am 
thank you thank you ma'am i'm audible madam yes sir you are audible thank you thank you thank you judges a uh, very good morning to all the respected people myself is uh, dr jannat prasad working as a senior student professor and my colleague and also head of the mca department dr b indira we would like to present uh, our project proposal in front of the judges this is the topic is bloom's taxonomy level identification for the given question paper or any item using the machine learning technique so how does this how does this idea came into picture is how do i uh, have this idea came into picture in my mind is whenever we are preparing the question paper so we are supposed to write and mention what type of the bloom's level is used in preparing this question paper is so there people get so much of confusion to write the to mention the question is both in the internal examination evaluation as well as external exam uh, examinations also so a lot of problem comes here now people used to do a lot of mistakes in identifying the exact bloom's level for each and every question for that purpose why don't you have a such type of software it is useful for the everyone for that purpose only i have started working on this later on also some other features have been added to this one so let me explain briefly about for the as well as for the judges as well as for the your point of view just i would like to take few minutes about what exactly bloom's is it is a instructional theory that categorizes levels of learning a tool for instructors to assist with writing learning outcomes curriculum planning content delivery as well as assessment of learning levels each level has a list of action verbs to identify the type of cognitive activity being performed by the student in this levels member is the lowest level using action verbs memorize reproduce or recognize facts and terms each step builds on the requiring a higher level of thinking and more difficult learning activities you can see here now the all six levels you can see here now remember understand apply analyze evaluate and create in remember memorize to memorize reproduce recognize facts and terms to understand is sorry for the interruption restate the in once correct sir apply is to utilize apply or make useful analyze is to identify and examine components compare and contrast properties identify assumptions or reduce implications evaluate is to make a judgment determine validity of a claim or select and defend a position create is to make connections identify new relationship or design something new the verbs comes under this uh, all six levels like this way so we have called knowledge understand apply analyze evaluate create so these uh, verbs here now comes in the understand here now explain describe interpret this type of words comes out for example we are asking the student explain about the uh, machine level techniques so now the question here now the aim of the evaluator is how much student understood the particular topic about this so here we supposed to mention is called bloom's taxonomy one apply here now called solve solve the given problem analyze the given situation analyze the what do you have is called corona post corona situation in in our country so and also to judge yourself is for how much you are uh, how much you are doing the work for any thing is so design a, a new component like these are all things comes in picture this one helps you so overall is uh, one of my student already done this project using the uh, machine learning techniques so we would like to give the same project to the the next batch student which is commencing from july onwards there we are going to use the deep learning technique lstm so long term long short term memory is a advanced recurrent neural network a sequential network that allows information to persist during the vanishing gradient problem faced by sir, is it audible yes sir yes audible sir sir just a minute uh, okay what is your input okay so what, what is your output can input is question input, input is a question sir okay, so how many questions are you are giving input for this machine learning algorithm so input input is a question to the uh, this model So, mm -hmm. for example, I said, "Call explain about the various machine learning techniques." Okay. So, explain is a word is used. You know? So, okay. it falls. It comes into the here now. Call explain comes into the remember. So, okay. we have the machine response and says, "Call is fall is falling into the DL one." Okay. So, one more one more point, sir. It, it is uh, for machine learning algorithm is two jumps of data. So, you have to uh, train the machine, and after that, it will predict 
in future uh, unknown data. So that is the normality uh, of a machine learning concept. Okay. Yes. Third here, you are in your question is explain this term means it should be here on particular category. No, that is not, that is the, your objective. No. Yes, sir. So for that is matching this service in there. No. So there is no need to go for machine learning. No. It's my my point of view. Okay. No, sir. No, sir. Prediction, uh, prediction point of view also comes, sir. This advancement, I said, predictions yes. also can be done using okay. this one. It's called analysis. Analysis can be done as much as possible, sir. Using okay. this uh, thing, sir. Because it's only just one, I'm explaining one module. Actually, mm -hmm. I have developed some other module using mm -hmm. Excel sheet. I have done it. I'll mm -hmm. include that also into this one because mm -hmm. basic some just I want to start this one. That's why I started. Okay, okay. you are telling the exact uh, what you are doing uh, in that application, so proposal, so that. Uh, those things you explain clearly, the telescope algorithm, not tracker, but uh, oh. how you are doing that one, you are testing. Okay. No, so using machine learning technique here now, call a front end we would like to develop. Mm -hmm. So, there, user enters the questions paper. What are the question mm -hmm. paper is there? So, question paper will be prepared mm -hmm. by some one, one examiner. Mm -hmm. And here now, because of he's getting confusion to tell that it's exactly which Bloom's level the question is falling. Mm -hmm. And this is the model is developed here now. This model. Based on this is called data set available there okay. because already data set it has all this. So, one more thing. So this this you are now currently you are writing the active works developed based on Bruce technology. These are the things for Bruce taxonomy identification keywords. No, these yes, are the finite keyword. No. Yes, sir. So from this, how much it is training of your uh, yes, how much you are using for training and how much you are for testing? So how you are tested this one? So tra training is as usual, sir, 80% for training and 20% for testing. Okay. That, uh, that is a regular process, sir. That we'll do that one. Okay. Already, this is developed using the SVM algorithm usually, sir, but okay. accuracy was very less. So okay. that's why we want to come deep learning technique. That only thing, sir. There is LSTM. <clears throat> we would like to use it now. That's why, and we would like to give the students uh, this project in next month. So that's uh, so that is called rather than matching a particular word, create uh, uh, create or uh, justify. These are yes. the matching word except that matching word. What yes. are the features you are added to identify the this one? This one come under the, this category of blue detection. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Can you explain? Sir, sir. So what do you have is called generally in the external examination, sir. Mm -hmm. So we they ask you call how much percentage you have given for the each Bloom's level taxonomy. Questions, okay. what are the questions we have asked to okay. the student? They mm -hmm. ask us call at the end of this, how much percentage you have given Bloom's level one, how much, two, how much, three, and four and five, six. Mm -hmm. So then your justification should happen. It's not like that I'm very good in one subject. I would like to ask all the questions about it called a create or a design. Such type of questions are not acceptable. So here now justification should happen. So examiner is not aware, not aware of all these things. Am I doing correct justification to my question paper or not? So once this is given to the system model, so model tells you how much percentage you have given for each and every level. So that is possible for an examiner to again recorrect the questions. Suppose here now call more given for one level, this is not acceptable, then it's possible again to correct it. So for that purpose, again, call some one of the confidential information is called one of the examiner have done the entire wrong thing just by blindly has given. And it went for the one more committee has formed to verify that his question paper has been correct or not. And the, the, the staff member faced so many problems because of these things only, because he didn't follow the Bloom's tax signing. So- Okay, sir. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, as per my point of view. So uh, machine learning algorithm, if you want implements, yes. then there is a uh, cost effective is somewhat high, okay? So basic applications, okay? Uh, Windows application or other application, mobile yes, application, sir. these yes. are applications. You will think of it uh, in future or uh, some after some time. So if, whether it is required for this application, whether this problem proposal, machine learning is uh, required, uh, essential or uh, extra extra thing. Okay, because basic application itself we can complete this part. It's my point of view. So you think of it, and uh, uh, I move on to Palamuran uh, sir. Say any other question. No, no, commercialization of the application is very much suitable, sir, because of so much universities you know, and people are facing such type of problem. Okay. Easily, we can do that one very easily. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Your uh, presentation is very nice. I yes. want to follow up, sir. Yes, sir. Shall I close, sir? No, no, follow up, sir, is there. And ah, sir, ask some questions. sir, other judges, you can yes, 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 yes. So, Prasad, sir, it's an excellent presentation. Thank you, sir. And I have been in academics for um, oh, I mean, uh, nice. later, I mean, uh, I mean, earlier, about seven to eight years back. Oh, and uh, during that particular time, I faced a similar type of yes, difficulty sir. for uh, 
um, setting up the question papers in Bloom's taxonomy. So definitely this is very much relatable for uh, any academic person. Yes, sir. So again, uh, the choice of the uh, problem which you have taken uh, uh, is, it is, it is very good. Like uh, um, uh, society, like a, a very much needed problem, problem which you have taken in that aspect is it's very good. Uh, can you uh, go on to the, what, what is the funding uh, um, uh, split up you want? Uh, a simple one. Sir. Some we need because front end point of view, we need some libraries to be get there. So that's why I'll get 10,000. Printer comes scanner because of uh, question papers, all this 15,000. And that entry person is required to enter the questions like this. This is a, just a, a rough one is entered, sir, not like that. Just like this. This can be adjustable, sir. It's not an issue. Getting a project from you is more important. Okay, sir. Fine. Good presentation and my best wishes to you as well as your project students. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Shall I close, sir? Ah, yes, sir. Yes. Ma'am, can I close? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Shall we move to the next presenter? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to invite Priya Darshani, ma'am, from Coimbatore Institute of Technology and Jaya Durga, ma'am, from Anna University. For presenting the paper on screening the conjunctive facts uh, facets of children using brain wave analysis to identify probable victims of child abuse. Priya Darshni, ma'am, are you present Good there? Good morning, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Uh, ma'am, I'm a student from CIT and I'm also a part of this project. Uh, so I would like to present. May I, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, ma'am. You can. Please share your screen, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, is my screen visible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, your screen is visible. Okay, so good morning, one and all present here. So our project is basically on discerning the cognitive facets of children using the brainwave analysis to identify uh, probable victims of child abuse. So basically, uh, in India, uh, child abuse is uh, getting increased day by day, where uh, especially for the children between the age of 5 to 10, where they are not even able to share on uh, how they have been treated by the society. So for this purpose, we are introducing uh, this PCI device, which can actually uh, trace the brain waves of the children and uh, including uh, inclusive of their facial expressions based on image recognition. So it can detect whether the person, whether the child has been uh, abused or it has any negative impact in its uh, life so which will be carried throughout uh, its uh, whole lifetime so to detect this at the early stage we are we are planning to build this device um, so for which uh, madam can you make it slide so yes ma'am can you make it slide so okay sure sir sure. visible sir yes yes you can do Okay, and so, uh, one more thing, uh, can you explain uh, Shaka Smart, what is the problem state, how you solve it, so what is uh, the output or objective of the solution? Okay, Shaka sure. Smart, can, can you? Sure, sir. Sure, sir. So, so, going to the goal of the project, it is just to um, detect or write, it is to detect the brain waves of the children and along with the facial expressions on how they are reacting to the emotional uh, pictures shared to them based on which we can detect if the person has been uh, or if the child has been uh, emotionally abused or not, with which we can give them early treatment that helps them a lot. So for this, we are concentrating only on a children of age group uh, 5 to 10, where they will not be able to share because the, those type of children doesn't know that even if they are abused or not. So. The technologies what we are using is the EEG graphs, which will be taken as the input data from those children. And uh, those data will be used to train the model. And uh, the model will be giving us an output of whether the 
the the the person has a negative impact or a positive impact based on their brain wave signals which can be detected through the bci device so basically the eeg is a, a very complex multi dimensional uh, data which uh, which is uh, actually hard to uh, annotate them so after doing that it is a long process we'll be feeding that into the machine or the model which we have built used in the machine learning or the deep learning techniques based on the complexity of the data that we are collecting so that will give us an output of uh, what uh, the whether the patient is uh, positive or negative emotions for in inclusive to increase the accuracy we are also using the facial expression recognition which will actually say whether the person is in a anxiety mode or happy mode or sad mode which uh, will help us to predict better so this is the process flow of how the model works so first we need to collect the data sets uh, from the children using the bci devices and storing those signals we will pre process the signals by giving them labels and annotate them then we will feed that into the machine learning models or the deep neural network models what we are building to classify the emotions in adding to that we will also do the facial recognition for detecting those emotions and uh, the child with the negative emotions will be detected after a series of episodes a uh, series of uh, episodes of uh, collecting the data sets from the same child and then that will uh, child will be taken for the treatment so this is the proposed budget uh, for the bci device and the cloud amount uh, for storing and processing the data sets and for stationary and so this device actually helps to uh, save the children uh, from uh, abuse and uh, help them in the treatment in the early stages okay uh, your presentation is nice ma'am uh, Thank so you. can you uh, explain in how the data is collected what what is your application interface and how you collect the data and how you train the model and uh, uh how to take the decision in which way in real time example point of view can explain a little bit uh, yes sir so actually uh, since we are in the primary region we okay. have uh, chose some uh, five to ten government schools okay uh, and to collect the data using the bci devices from the children of age group five to ten that is from uh, okay. it will be approximately first standard to uh, yes. the uh, children that is uh, every time they are using or you whenever you go and ask them that time only they are, they are going to use this any time uh, we will go and ask them sir we will go to the schools mm -hmm. and we will take the students approximately some 10 to 50 students uh, in a particular age group okay. and we will collect the data from them okay. by showing them uh, some uh, visuals or ppts of uh, abuse okay. so definitely at some point the child if it has been affected it will react to the uh, pictures or the visuals that have been shown okay. so during which that so time your, the brain uh, signals uh, my understanding is uh, we are going to directly visit that uh, uh, student and we are showing some uh, images or something uh, videos or friends and some kind of this kind of activity of, at the time you are collecting the face reaction kind of information am i correct yes sir yes sir okay so that is where in, in input you are getting from the data collection am I correct? yes sir yes okay sir. so from that how you identify or how you classify because at that time uh, whether the people or the student are giving the right information the right reaction or not how you identify whether they may give uh, accept the reaction or they may, may not be give some accept reaction yes sir that may be for the first time because mm -hmm. even we are strangers uh, so we are going to collect the data from a five year old child okay. so that children may not react for the first time so we'll mm -hmm. be taking series of episodes for okay. if we okay. concentrate on our first school okay. the same school and the same children will be um, taking the data for consecutive seven days mm -hmm. uh, during the time we will be talking to the children and will make them close to us so with by which they can share their feelings okay. and uh, we can even uh, make it confirmation through the bci devices and collect the eeg signals if it matches with the signals of uh, an abused child mm -hmm. then we can confirm that mm -hmm. okay. so 
So we use the models. So we will build our own model to okay. process these uh, data, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, we are a, a AAML student, so where okay. we can we already work on uh, data processing and uh, in your system. Okay, you are in yes, sir. In our own are, system, uh, uh, we are uh, yes, processing sir. Processing all yes, sir. Finding out the output. Okay. So yes, after sir. that, what is your solution? What is your uh, contribution? Yes, sir. After that, we will develop a small interface of web where we can. Uh, they directly input the uh, EEG signals from the children's brain. Those are this will actually help. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of the brain that students are affected by that kind of uh, abuse yes, kind of things. So after that, what is the uh, reaction after uh, finding the particular student uh, affected by that uh, problem? Then what is your reaction or solution? What is your contribution? So we can the... take them to uh, counseling or any psychiatric treatments uh, mm -hmm. to overcome their their effect of the abuse. Sir. Okay, uh, okay ma'am. The your uh, concept is very nice and it is very recommendable. Uh, uh, record in the current scenario. But yes, the sir. thing is, uh, whenever you go and uh, directly in front of you in front of the person, you are asking that person is no one uh, normally generally. The human beings are not uh, psychological, but this is a common psychological. So normally, they are not giving the exact answer. Okay. Yes, so, sir. Yes, uh, sir. whenever they are using mobile phone or some other thing, so automatically you have to collect that information. It is somewhat uh, efficient to collect the exact information. So, that is my point. And, uh, yes, sir. So, that's why we are actually planned to take a series of data so for seven days, sir. Okay. So. Maybe mm -hmm. if we are not getting any good uh, outputs in seven days, we may even try for uh, 10 days or so, okay. by which we can actually get the exact uh, data, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. My, my suggestion is uh, you uh, convert your application in some other manner uh, to collecting the data with uh, without your presence in, in front of them. Then they okay, can give sir. the input, input in correct way. Because yes, if sir. anybody is in front of me, I can't give my uh, exact uh, reaction. Okay, that is the normal sure. So that okay, point sir. you have to concentrate in your research and you do very well research, very good research in the future. Okay, uh, oh, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Ma'am, yeah. may I close my screen now? Uh, yes, ma'am, you can close. Uh, uh, yeah, ma'am, you can go to the next part. Uh, uh, Yes, yes, sir. I would like to invite uh, Pradeep G, sir, from Dr. NGP Institute of Technology for presentation on smart traffic control system using AI with open CV module and PIOD module. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, is my pre presentation is visible, ma'am? Yes, sir, your presentation is visible. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Okay, without any delay, let's start the presentation. A very good morning to all of you all present here. Thank you for having us here and give, providing us a wonderful opportunity to present our innovation. We are a team of four members, Ranjit, Pradeep, Ramadayal, and myself, Vandana. We are currently pursuing a second year computer science engineering at Dr. NGP Institute of Technology, Kwamadur. A project title is Smart Traffic Control System using AI with OpenCV module and PyAudio module. This presentation is structured as follows, introduction, objective, proposed work, novelty, expected outcome, work plan, and conclusion. So most of the people's life is impacted by transportation system. Traffic issue is a typical problem faced in our day-to-day -day life. The primary reason is increase in population. Due to this extensive growth of population, the biggest challenge faced by many cities is traffic management and control. The effect of traffic congestion has major impacts on accidents, loss of time, cost, delay of emergency, and etc. 
hopefully a project will turn into a robust and secure solution to all these congestion problems. A main objective is to create a user-friendly software to oversee the traffic proficiently in both urban and congested area to help the life supporting vehicles to reach their destination on time, to make easy for the pedestrians to go across the road with precautionary measures. Now to continue further, I would like to call in Pradeep. Thank you, Vandana. And now for the survey report. As per the report survey, the system uses IoT to reduce traffic only. It explains how traffic congestion causes various problems at not only creating a traffic monitoring system. Whereas the proposed... Hello, Pradeep, sir. Uh, sorry for yes, interrupting, but uh, I will respect it. Judges want to ask you something. Okay, yes, sir. Can you skip this literature survey and can you go to your problem uh, statement? And yes, sir. Okay, because due to time constraints only, don't take mistakes. Don't make mistakes. Uh, due to the time constraints only, this uh, situation. Okay. So, can you go to explain the problem statement? How you tackle the problem and how to solve it? Uh, from that, uh, some questions will be taken later. Okay, sir. Sir, our problem statement is smart traffic control system, sir. Sir, as we are know, currently we are using the time based traffic system, sir. Um, it will uh, increase the you time. Can move on to this slide, also, no problem. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Now I'm going to explain about the methodology of this project. Okay. In this project, okay. we are implementing an AI based traffic control system. Okay. Modern technologies are used to implement the system. Technologies like high resolution cameras, multiple sensors, AI, etc., which are integrally used to maintain a proper flow of traffic. The camera uses an AI algorithm to detect the most congested side of the junction. This is made possible with the help of CNN algorithm and OpenCV module. CNN is used to process the images to AI, helping it to detect the area with highest congestion, clearing the area without creating any fuss. OpenCV module is used in image processing. In this system, we will be using OpenCV module to get the inputs from the camera and convert it into an image for the AI to process it. OpenCV module can be used in many programming languages like Java, C++, and Python. We will be programming the OpenCV using Python. As we know, every sound is created by waves, and each wave has its own frequency, differentiating it from others, making each sound wave unique. Keeping this in mind, we use the sound detection sensors, which will analyze the sound with the help of the PyRU module which uses the input frequencies of emergency vehicles and normal civilian vehicles. And then it will compare it with the stored frequencies, recognizing if any emergency vehicles and clearing that side of the junction, making it easier for the vehicle to reach its destination on time. LiDAR sensors are sensors which uses faster beams in a sonar style. LiDAR sensors are used to detect the pedestrians on the walkway, then sense them into the system, letting it decide when it is safe to cross the road. This is also used to check the distance of the traffic and cameras have a limited focal range. Okay, okay, okay. So, can you give me an example? How you solve it? Sir, could you can come you, again, sir? Can you take on real time example? Okay, in that, what is the problem you identify? How you solve it? Can you tell in this, in this scenario? Sir, nowadays uh, emergency vehicles are not going in the time uh, uh, for the hospitals, sir. Okay. So uh, we have uh, Do you used. Have any uh, image or video clips or anything for, for presentation purpose? Sir, we have explained it in the computer or uh, architecture diagram, sir. Okay, not, uh, not in our. Sir, okay, go, go for the architecture diagram. Okay, sir. Sir, as we can see from the slide, the AI cameras, LiDAR sensors, ultrasonic sensors, and sound sensors are used, sir, okay. in live traffic, and then feeds are analyzed and sent to the control room for the under instructions. Sir. Okay, that's all. Okay, my question is, if you consider your point to city, okay, sir, okay, they are in uh, consider the uh, airport and uh, from airport to uh, the bus stand, Gandhi so that is in between in the evening time. So consider that scenario, traffic scenario. 
ஆல்ரெடி <laughs> particular uh, distance from whole road is blocked by the uh, one way vehicles in the back end one uh, ambulance is coming so that time how you resolve the problem that so how you move the uh, in front of uh, vehicles to somewhere else how you move it what solution you are the, having to solve the problem sir with the help of the siren sound we can identify the frequency sir and will help of the a high resolution cameras the a will detect it and okay. clear the area uh, uh, how, with clear? The low how you clear that area the person the driver itself want to move somewhere else or you uh, make them some uh, give some signals to move them out so the people will move sir okay, they... but uh, normally that uh, siren no that siren is uh, somewhat loudly the yeah. all the vehicles are uh, the drivers are having that uh, can clear that uh, siren signal normally it is an existing system when the siren is coming the driver is giving uh, it's, it's their own responsibility to uh, move the vehicle to somewhere else uh, without disturbing the uh, ambulance vehicle this normal scenario no what is your role in this project that is my question sir sir uh, our role is uh, Uh, knowing the which part of the road the ambulance is coming and okay. first let the signal uh, clears the vehicles first and helps the ambulance to move further okay i am asking how you clear because it is you told previously you told it is the responsibility of the driver then what is your role in this application that is the so this application blocks the other roads first and then uh, let this how to clear the traffic and move okay how you clear that is the any uh, any solution you need to provide no so because i already told the whole whole road it is blocked by the, the previous in the initial stage one road one image you shown okay can you put that particular so that image fully vehicle fully uh, traffic control image you shown no in the initial uh, slide can you show that slide பிரதீப் <laughs> so in in the back end it is d71 bus is there no okay sir we began the one ambulance system me okay there the whole road is blocked by the front uh, front vehicles so now the situation there is no space to move the vehicles front vehicles to somewhere else so how you solve the problem using your application so in such situations uh... when the signal is red as uh, such traffic are occurred sir okay and uh, when the signal is turn green mm-hmm. even if the congestion is not cleared uh, uh, the the signal uh, the control room will be alerted okay. so even if it is, the system is not able to clear it uh, the the uh, traffic policemen they can come and clear it up Yes, but it is normal that this existing system only you know when the siren is there the uh, traffic people take uh, responsibility to clear the uh, traffic so, uh, so, uh, what is the 
system if it is not able to take over it then it will uh, hand it to the hand it over to the policeman in in uh, uh, such uh, scenario uh, this what is your normal contribution handle it your application our contribution can you say some features pardon sir your normal contribution to this application it is existing system okay the wire siren is there the driver take responsibility to clear the situation so what is your contribution in your application how will it help to resolve the problem i couldn't get your question okay it is existing system one siren is coming okay the driver is responsible to move the vehicle to somewhere else to make the availability of the road for the ambulance am i correct so uh, in in a few scenarios a few drivers will hesitate cause the signal is red sir okay, okay. so your application what will the sound is on sorry sir your application in which way is it, it will be helpful to solve the problem so here uh, like the current uh, current uh, systems okay. it is not controlled by a timer okay. the thing is the, uh, uh, in high congested area if that an ambulance uh, siren heard by the system okay. or if it uh, senses any such uh, sirens it will uh, turn the signal into green okay. allowing the uh, people to maneuver easily and okay. uh, people would not have to hesitate hmm. that's the thing sir okay, it is normally even our uh, siren system means the traffic people are uh, turn the green red signal to green signal and uh, solve the problem no it's not existing system my point of view now your system how it is also because uh, because the your problem statement no and the solution no, it is very good uh, Required scenario, required application for the current scenario. So only I'm asking, how you solve this? So only I'm waiting, giving more time for this. Very good application. So only I'm asking. Sir, comparing to current systems, uh, the system has reduced the time to reach the hospital. So the so we can uh, decrease the death rate of the patients. Sir. So okay. we have the system. Okay. Sir, uh, can you give your uh, budget cost for uh, for the application? So thirty thousand. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, team members. Your uh, product statement is very good. It is essential for the exactly in five months or the ten year uh, very uh, metropolitan city point test. so you can improve your futures okay uh, whatever is that uh, your application is very good the futures you need to add extra for solving the problem okay that is my point okay you do very well very good research okay sir so. thank you thank you thank you sir so we will uh, implement it yes yeah, okay. in the sense thank you sir yes engineer you know we have to give a uh, optimal solution that is that is yes sir sure sir so we'll work on it sure so we'll work on it for for uh, Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. So, Pradeep and uh, Ranjit. Yes, sir. It's a good presentation. So, um, uh, this particular presentation, I don't have any questions. I have just a few uh, inputs from my side, so that you can try to incorporate the same in this particular project. Sure, sir. Mm. Uh, one thing is that what i find is that there are certain um, uh, defaults in our life right see whenever we get, if it is going to be a monday to saturday routine we you used to get up uh, early and we have to uh, uh, have food in the correct time all these things sunday means it is an other scenario this is how the scenario is similarly you have certain you can develop certain scenarios for traffic system also traffic system for example there is by default 
this particular area for example this uh, hope college uh, near this national model school all these things will definitely by default it will be crowded in in this eight to nine time yes, yes sir, sir. true sir ah so that can what you can do is that you can feed that as an input to one uh, to, to a system and that particular system can actually communicate to the uh, 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 ambulance person that during this particular uh, time for example if it is going to be 8 to 9 or if it is going to be from a 3 to 5 uh, time it is not advisable to take this particular route because there are too much of uh, educational institutions in this particular uh, road and it is very difficult for a person or any other system like you to redirect it instead of redirect redirecting it we can avoid it sir so, so do like you mean uh, making an interlink system at uh, representing no, no, it like no, 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 a lot no, of google maps no. No, 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 ma. Ah, similar to that. No, no. I'll just tell you a simple. Are you, uh, um, are you from Coimbatore? No, sir. You're not from Coimbatore. No, sir. So you, you're from which college? I'm from Ot Otanjatiram, sir. Okay. Uh, I don't know about that particular place. Okay, that is one. Okay, but uh, there are multiple uh, ways by which you can uh, uh, reach uh, Otanjatiram from Chennai. Yes, sir. Uh, so in that case what we can do is that uh, if it is going to if, if suppose if i want to reach uh, otanjatram from chennai uh, suppose if i am traveling from uh, uh, 8 uh, morning 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock then the system should be able to give me an input that probably you should not take this particular route route a because route a it has a lot of educational institutions schools colleges hospitals so you can take this route b like that we can do it Okay, this is what I'm giving it to you. Okay, Second okay, thing okay. is that uh, as certain days, like for example, Saturdays, like so. So yesterday, Saturday, generally Saturdays are uh, are uh, holidays for the school. My son is studying in the uh, National Model School, right? Uh, so he, most of the Saturdays are are uh, uh, holidays for him. But yesterday he had school. Right? School was working. So during that particular time, okay, it is an unexpected traffic over there. Okay. Usually on Saturdays, uh, National Model School vans will not come. But this particular Saturday, National Model School van vans will be arriving in this Pelamed uh, area. So what they can do, they probably in any centralized authority like a municipality or corporation, they can intimate in prior that this uh, this Saturday is a working day, so there will be high traffic. There's there's going to be an in increasing traffic because of this school. So if if this input is being given, it will be easier for you to do your particular task. This can be a pre-work of your work. This is my uh, um, a small input to an enhancement to your work. Okay, Thank as far as the other, you would, uh, plan on uh, in, uh, which, which, which college you belong to? Sorry, sir. Which college you belong to? Doctor N C P Institute of Technology, sir. Doctor N C P is in Coimbatore only, no? Yes, sir. Ah, <laughs> uh, then but, you are telling me. But my <laughs> my house is in Norton Jatiram, sir. Anyhow, at least you know a few few things in Coimbatore. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, just just uh, by the surface. Okay, 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 okay. Best wishes. Do it. Uh, you can continue with this. And the uh, budget plan was also uh, really sensible. Uh, best Thank wishes you, for the all Thank the teams. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Can proceed on with the next. Shall we move to the next presenter? Yes, ma'am. I would like to invite Saran M from Dr. N G T Institute of Technology uh, for presenting Smart Agri Business Podium for farmers using Harvestine algorithm. Sir, am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, ma'am. Good morning to all the juries and students present here. We are the students from Dr. N G P Institute of Technology, Department of Computer Science and Engineering. Myself, Saran, and my teammates Priyadarshini and Sanmadi here to present to you on our visionary on the future of agriculture. First of all, I'd like to thank Institute for Engineering Research and Publication for providing us an opportunity to present our idea, Smart Agri Business Podium for farmers using Averson algorithm under the Innovative Project Seed Funding Scheme. And also for motivating us on creating our basic idea into a helpful product to the society. Move on to the introduction part. A country's gross domestic product is greatly depend on the agriculture. A farmer is the only man who can buy all everything in a retail and sells everything at wholesale 
and pay for the freight both ways investments in agriculture is the best weapon for the growth of an economy of the country now let me remind you your statistics a create 99.07 million metric tons of fruits and 191.77 million metric tons of vegetables are cultivated every year where 26% of them were wasted yearly but it can be reduced to 10% with the proper support of technology moving on to the objective of our project our main objective is it prevents the intervention of third party agents as well as the prevents the wastage of agriculture products by directly selling the goods from the farmers to the nearby consumers now let look into the disadvantages of existing system the first important point is the existing system doesn't prevent the wastage of vegetables as they only focus on delivering the order the second thing is the farmers spend more than 20% of their income only for transportation and preservative chemicals the third and the main point is intervention of third party agents these are all the obstacles that stand between the farmers and the rightful profit that could be earned by them and the methodology will be continued further more by uh, shanmadi a policeman a preacher but every day you need a farmer this is the quote that inspired us on creating this project the proposed project is an application called wayland which aims to help the farmers to gain back their investment with a decent profit by selling their agriculture product for a reasonable price as every application this application also needs some primary requirements like personal details aadhar card and pan card for the identification of loginers by getting the aadhar and pan card details we provide high security as it can be used as a footstep to identify the fraudsters this application has separate logins for cultivators consumers and administrator in the cultivator login the nearby locations of consumers and vegetable markets along with the price will be shown this makes the project easier for farmers as they as they can just sell their goods to customers who are close by and the earning will be directly handled by themselves while looking into the consumer module they could view the nearby sellers and availability of products and their cost since the communication or interaction is done directly between the cultivator and consumer it wards off the intervention of third party agents which greatly benefits both parties now let's look how the nearby locations of a user will be spotted the application depends on kn algorithm and havasan algorithm to identify the shortest distance between the user Havasign is a mathematical formula which takes the latitude and longitude of buyers and sellers as input and identifies the shortest distance with the support of KNN a supervised machine learning algorithm. This is the entire working of our application and the whole network can be maintained and monitored through a website provided to government authorized person or centers. Now moving on to the next slide. Here is the architecture diagram of our VLAN application. as you can see uh, all the loginers uh, have separate uh, logins that is connected to our application and the cloud storage where uh, where the details of, and I, ids and the passwords of the loginers will be stored and the computational process like uh, shortest distance finder and verification of this id and pin code can be done there so next moving on to the next slide uh, this is the novelty of our ex uh, this is the novelty of our project The first thing is the wastage of goods. This is controlled as the products are transported to the buyers within 15 kilometers before it reaches the expiry date, which in return reduces the uh, usage of preservative chemicals on them, uh, which uh, which benefits the farmers by uh, reducing their uh, uh, reducing their amounts on their on this transportation and uh, preservative chemicals. The next is it. Parts of the profit gained by the intermediate uh, persons, as a VLAN itself acts as an uh, intermediate between them. So the furthermore slides will be explained by Priya Darshini. Coming to the implementation part, here we are using Java for developing Android and Flutter for iOS to develop the front end of the mobile application. And GPS location tracker is used to locate the nearby markets and consumer and avoid spending more than transportation costs for the farmers. A separate website is maintained for admin to manage the application. We have used React JS to develop front end, and we are using Node JS framework at the back end. Moving on to the next slide, this is the work plan for the execution of the project. We plan to complete this project within seven months. Moving on to the next slide, 
talking about the expected outcome and the application of this project this application works as an intermediate between farmer and consumer instead of third party agents communication between consumer and farmer is more viable and efficient as the users could interact with each other through a private chat box present in this application this application supports farmer in creating their own business plan by forbidding the inclusion of third party agents wastage of agriculture product due to stagnant in market can be reduced by distributing to the consumer who are close by the excessive amount of preservative chemicals that are used over the vegetables and fruits is scaled down because the goods are transported to nearby consumers thus the consumer could get fresh agriculture product products this application aims to profit farmers by locating nearby markets and avoid spending more on transportation and on the preservative chemicals as it is a direct farming consumer can get products freshly at nominal price from farmers thus the overall working of the project is to sell quality products to consumer at reasonable price that also profits the farmer as well as a cutting of the share of an intermediate person velan also ensures that minimum amount is spent on transportation and chemical and strengthen the business relationship between users thank you sir Uh, very good presentation. Uh, uh, can you give some example scenario from the existing system to your novel proposed system? In which way your proposed system is poor compared to existing system? Any uh, threshold or some uh, amount, some proof? Can you say? So basically, uh, the thing is uh, the intermediate persons are not avoided in the existing system. Sir, uh, I will give you an example. Uh, if the consumer uh, wants to order some uh, products from the uh, farm, and your voice is not audible. Hello. Is it audible now? No, yeah, it's okay. so i will give you an example sir uh, the existing system doesn't check if the loginer is an in, uh, intermediate person or a genuine customer okay. so by uh, giving your other details and uh, uh, you can just uh, identify them as a uh, identify them as a can is can is command the security concern i'm asking you are proposed yes sir uh, uh, problem statement and solution point first you clear this point then you can go for security kind of thing Uh, pardon okay first you uh, come again sir i first you explain the existing system scenario from that what is the problem you are identify how you solve it first you explain this one then we can go for the secret kind of thing. okay sir the first thing is that uh, uh, they don't uh, interact directly so if a consumer uh, uh, wants uh, some products and uh, they order it and uh, they could just deliver it or they could find the nearby markets and they could uh, just go and get it Okay. This is the normal scenario okay. how the the system works. Okay. So uh, mostly uh, the ordering kind of thing is done in big basket and uh, some that kind of uh, uh, that kind of uh, applications. Okay. So when it comes to government side, uh, we only show the nearby locations of the farms and uh, such things. Uh, mostly okay. markets will be shown and uh, farmlands are not shown. So here. Uh, the uh, nearby locations of farmers and uh, the good storaging areas, as well as the markets where, uh, like uh, Olavar Sunday, something like that, uh, all could be shown. So either the consumer can order it in this website itself, website or application itself, okay. uh, and they uh, and the transaction of amounts can be done in the website itself. As uh, you can see, the PAN card is uh, yeah. as is one primary requirement, or they could just. Uh, Cash, Sorry, uh, give a okay. cash uh, while buying it. Okay, and one more thing. So, the who is the admin and who how the uh, vegetables are the farming things are maintained? Who are maintaining and how to uh, take over this process? Because like you consider so, Amazon. So, the price of card. every product. Uh, yes, yes. Ex, uh, yeah. Like that, you are telling me. Am I correct? In this manner, only you are. Could you come again? Uh, like uh, Flipkart, Amazon. Uh, your application going to work. Am I correct? Some 
something like that sir okay so means who is the like amazon who is the some like uh, a flip card cut uh, so government or uh, 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 farmer uh, if they uh, want government uh, government sir government authorized person will be monitoring this entire website okay. uh, they will decide the price of each products and uh, set the limits for them who will deliver the product to from uh, farmer to consumer hello sir who will uh, deliver the product means uh, vegetables or something else farming uh, uh, things uh, so there we open a, a employment opportunity for uh, to serve the government sir mm-hmm. so government could hire people Okay, to uh, to the yes sir thank you but actually whenever you preparing one application okay on on application you oh. creating that time you have to concentrate the things what is your features what you are implementing in your in your application features that one you have to concentrate more okay then only uh, okay, it will be executable okay as per your uh, point okay, of view is common thing a theoretical point of view it is good yes sir. whatever you are telling it is clear very good uh, solution so by implementation part of you what your contribution that one you have to clearly mention in your ppt uh, or in your application for that screenshot and proof you have to then then it is very good okay okay sir okay very very good nice presentation so i move on, uh, move on to parmar uh, sir sir can you have some question oh, yes sir so saran and the group yes sir Yes, sir. Uh, it's a good question. Ah, uh, why did you choose this particular topic? Sir, uh, nowadays uh, there are so many wastage of uh, agriculture products, sir. Uh, because of the storage of uh, uh, storage of agriculture products uh, during the transportation time, uh, during the selling of the products, uh, to avoid uh, the wastage of uh, f- foods and vegetables, and to prevent the intermediate uh, third party agent. Uh, we are creating this uh, application no no that is the objective uh, uh, there are multiple problems uh, uh, around yeah, us you are asking why you like choose... why we choose problem uh, statement uh, to begin with yeah, yeah. Why, why is your interest towards this so towards the, the solving started, the problems in agriculture uh, so the thing started because, uh, when i was uh, like 5 years mm. really really small girl so i grew up in a agriculture you know background from the village side mm. yeah so uh, when i was uh, i was i used to walk in the fields and my grandfather used to you know sow tomatoes a lot so he uh, he used to sow tomatoes corns and uh, those things so corns are can be easily sold because it's a seasonal type of thing while tomatoes get uh, rotten easily so uh, we we uh, on the first time of our uh, yield harvesting time we lost a lot during that dis- oh, business okay. uh, he still is in the business so i want to help him grow in his business okay so you have a, a, a i mean a valid reason for choosing this this and you have also invited your yes, friends sir. to solve this particular problem good sir i am yes, also sir. from uti same problem sir uh, relatives you, uh, you should be ha- proud man you are yes, from sir. an agriculture family actually you are proud you should be you should feel proud yes okay the second uh, good uh, second one is uh, for in the budgeting uh, you have, in the budget cost uh, for conference uh, you have put 10000 why it is 10000 so and what is, are, uh... what is the course fee what is the course fee excellent what uh, what is the cost uh, is for course? 3000 per person sir uh, we have applied uh, in uh, in github uh, one of the course for uh, machine learning so since we use a uh, kn and algorithm hmm. so is, the that... content paper is uh, uh, okay okay tell me tell me tell me ma so per person it's 3000 sir for three members it's 3 3 3 3 9000 Mm. and for conference paper we are preparing this as a big project to present in scopus and such thing so it would mm. need a conference paper of 10000 and i don't think so 
okay so fine normally what? i i uh, so, okay transportation is included over here what about what about this miscellaneous what about this miscellaneous cost <laughs> okay fine okay oh, you you take this into account and uh, i don't think as engineers we should take up a specific course and then only we should be able to do one particular project so self learning is a very important uh, what i'm giving is an input for you uh, you can just take it self learning okay, is a very important uh, trait of an engineer okay so whatever uh, projects for example now you have machine learning so you're going for uh, machine learning you you're taking up the project on machine learning, so you go for training for machine learning suppose if some other learning uh, uh, comes uh, some some other type of uh, learning um, comes in the future car learning something like that so you will be training so all these things are like uh, it is all self limiting beliefs that we have to train and then only we are get into it it is like you have to learn you have to have the spirit of self learning what are all the things which is needed for solving this particular problem this particular project and then acquire ourselves and then we can move on to that okay so this is all my inputs and yes, uh, uh, good good consider thank you for your input sir and we will we'll okay. promote okay very thank good. you sir very good. thank best you best wishes best wishes saran and team thank you sir We can move on to the next ma'am. Now I would like to invite Satish Kumar sir from Dr. NGP Institute of Technology for presentation on crop growth monitoring and pest control by organic pesticides using drones. Yes ma'am. Ma'am, my presentation is visible. Yes, sir, your presentation is visible. Okay. So good afternoon to one and all present here. My name is Sanjana Sri and my teammates are Satish Kumar and Shashank. We are from Dr. NGP Institute of Technology, Coimbatore. So our topic is crop growth monitoring and pest control by organic pesticides using drones. On to the next slide. While starting with this introduction, so modern agriculture technique has many methods for enhancing the crop growth. Uh, as technologies are improving day by day the farmers are forced to adopt this modern technique for improving their yield so uh, last month we had a conversation with the farmers stating that questioning the big question them asking why they are using these inorganic pesticides knowing their side effects they answered us by stating inorganic pesticides are more effective and they last longer while compared to the organic pesticides which should be sprayed frequently so if we come up with a solution to overcome this problem we can help them in many ways so our proposed project focuses on utilization of organic pesticides with the help of new technologies so in organic pesticides i mean like neem oil and boric acid which when used in small concentration it can act as an antiviral and antifungal agents so uh, last year uh, last month we attended a uh, seminar in anna university uh, named no fest uh, that they explained us the brief uh, explanations of drone technology uh, that they said that uh, in agriculture army and product delivery sectors the drone technology plays a major role so we came up with an idea of using that in our project and also we are using systematic literature review for imaging the crops with the help of drones and uh, providing a literature review of it uh, stating them which disease they are affected from so on to the next slide the main objectives of our project are we are monitoring each and every stage of the crop health by using automated drones with the help of machine learning algorithms and we are predicting the disease in the crops in a early hand to uh, increase their productivity we are replacing the inorganic pesticides with the organic ones brought from the local manufacturers organic pesticides are uh, sprayed within the geofenced area using the automatic drone technologies and on to the next slide uh, for this literature survey we uh, we did a little bit of field work so we we all know that modern agriculture is largely depend upon the chemical pesticides for removing the pest from the agriculture fields and uh, we also know that chemical pesticides alters the biological and physiochemical properties of the soil if we tend to overuse this uh, inorganic pesticides within 50 years all the fertilities in the uh, agriculture field will be completely depleted so we are we enhances the use of organic pesticides 
as they play an important role in agricultural field sustainability. And uh, emerging technologies should always focus on the betterment of human health while reducing the loss and increasing efficiency. For the next slide, I would like my friend Satish Kumar to present that. I'm here to explain our proposal system. Our application used to predict the crop's growth at interval of time by using advanced drone technology. The camera mounted drones are used to capture the image of the crops. On a weekly basis, the drones are deployed to circulate over the respective local region for imaging the crops. The images are analyzed and predict the crops which are affected by disease using prediction algorithm with the support of Google, GitHub, and local data repository. The farmers can receive the drone technology for the purpose of spraying the organic pesticides in farmers' land. Once the drone has booked, through our application, then the drones are automatically located at the farmer's land by using geolocation, survey number, and satellite images. This application replaced the manual work with the advanced automated drones producing an effective plan for agriculture. Moreover, this application promotes organic pesticides to enhance the soil fertility. Now this slide explains architecture diagram for our proposed system. Drones are used to use to spray the organic pesticides, capturing the image of the crops at regular interval of time. Capture images are analyzed and predict the affected crops using prediction algorithm with the support of a cloud storage repository. In our application, we used to reserve the drone technology. Once drone has been booked automatically located at the respective farmer's land with the support of GPS, report of the affected crops along with the suggestion is forwarded to the respective farmers through our application. The director monitor all activities of the drone technology with the help of geolocation. Now this slide explains model description. What are the stages to perform in our application? As we all know that whatever the applications we are installing on our Android mobile, we should register our profile. Then the questions, who wants to log in into the system, they use the user ID and password. Analyze space. This space is used to monitor the crops growth, which are affected by pests and the diseases. The report of the affected crops are notified to the farmers and request for the reservation process. Director phase. Directors are union member of society. This space holds the complete settings and control every activities of the system and maintain record in a periodical manner. Deployment phase. This space is used to reserve the drone technology for the purpose of spraying the organic pesticides with the respective farmer's land. Now, I would like to call Mr. Sheshant to continue our explanation. This slide explains about novelty ideas in our proposed system. To spray the organic pesticides in an efficient way, automated drones are used. So, the drones can automatically locate the farmer's land with the support of survey number and satellite images. To spray the pesticides in the farmland, farmers can reserve the drones. For once in a week, to predict the health rate of the crops, drones are circulated within the local region boundary. On the detection of disease or damage requests, an alert message is passed to the particular farmer through our application. If this model of implementation is successful, we can adopt the same module for the case of fertilizer. On to the next slide, let's see about the technical stack. Technical stack is divided into two categories. They are front-end and back-end. Front-end for the application side, we rely on Android Studio and Java for Android Mobile. Since we also create website, we have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for the website. Moving on to the back-end, we use MySQL database. To create an interlink between front-end and back-end, the interface API is used. Then the work plan. We have targeted to finish our project in seven months. For that, we have divided the project into four phases front end, back end, interface, and testing. The first three phases took two months of time for completion and one month for testing. Thus, we conclude by saying that nowadays chemical pesticides are sold because they are cheap, but they affect human health. So, through our application, if we are able to sell organic pesticides and spray it over the field at lower price than that of the chemical pesticides, then the farmers will start using organic pesticides. So it will not affect the human health and increase soil fertility and safe to the environment. To the next slide, with all these journals and articles, we referred about the drones and its application. Then till now, what are the implementations are made in crop growth monitoring system? Then the financial assist, the required financial assist for our project is 7,000 for conference purpose, 9,000 for course fees. The cost for purchasing our product drones 20,000 and for application 10,000. And other miscellaneous cost is 2000. Total required fund amount is 48,000. Finally, please accept a bunch of thanks to all organizers who gave us a wonderful opportunity to express our idea. Thank you. Your presentation was very nice. Okay, so now uh, your, your application, it is a 100 application. So in depth, how the uh, drones are 
spraying the uh, chemicals, no, the organic chemicals. So that how it will be monitored? Who will control them? Sir, in every panchayat, we know there is a union office and okay. uh, employees, no, sir. Okay. So they will be controlling their monit and monitoring the drones, sir. Yes, yeah, this uh, your application is for panchayat office to uh, the agriculture lands. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So very uh, very good uh, thing and uh, okay. One more thing, uh, your application. Uh, have any mm, what did look okay how how, how the uh, availability of the uh, organic uh, chemicals are there or not how to monitor how to measure who will we need this uh, uh, requirement of your uh, drone or how to allocate that thing so what, what, are, what are the modules that are uh, sir, talking about these modules, uh, we are not only focusing on crop growth monitoring, sir. Okay. So when a farmer finds out there is a pest in their field, the next step is they will think about spraying all inorganic pesticides in their farm, isn't it, sir? Okay. So we are replacing their idea of uh, spraying those inorganic pesticides with organic ones, sir. This is our main focus of the project, sir. Okay. So your uh, concept is very good. Okay. Uh, so now I move on to the one more question. Sir, you can ask questions. Yes, sir. sir uh, from, from, from me, no questions from my side. No. We can move on to the next presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Next presenter. I would like to invite uh, Varun Karthik CS from Global Academy of Technology, Bangalore, for presenting ambulance detection and traffic signals. Yeah, um, hello guys. Uh, this is Varun Karthik from Global Academy of Technology. Firstly, I would like to explain uh, how I came up, wh what was the need for me to come up, uh, come up with this idea, that is uh, ambulance detection in traffic signal lights. Please I was share traveling from, screen. yeah, yeah, uh, Vaishnavi, please share the screen. Uh, one minute, ma'am. Yeah, uh, is the screen visible? Yes, yes, Are sir. Visible? Yeah, uh, firstly, I would like to explain now what made me uh, to come up with this idea. I was traveling from Rajajinagar to Whitefield in Bengaluru. And I saw ambulance getting stuck in there because due to the metro bridge, uh, which has been newly constructed, there are no diversions for the ambulance to take in between. Uh, it's a 40 feet uh, main road in Whitefield. So it was getting stuck there and uh, this made me anxious. And after reaching home, uh, I made up my mind to come up with a system which will free the traffic for, for the ambulance and preserving the golden hour for, um, for the cardiac arrest patients and also helping other patients as well. Further, the introduction part and implementation will be explained by my, by my teammates, Vaishnavi and Chinmay Jodh. Okay, so good morning to everyone present here. We, the students of Global Academy of Technology, are here to present about our, our uh, project that is ambulance detection using RF transceivers. So our teammates are Varun Karthik, Vaishnavi DH, Chinmay Jyoti, and we are doing this under our guide, Jyoti Prakash. I would like to first thank the Innovative Project Feed Funding Team and our college for providing us this opportunity. So talking about our project, we have seen critical patients losing lives due to delay in ambulance reaching the hospitals on time. It is important to develop a system that will help ambulance reach the hospital on time. And this will save precious lives in emergency cases. Therefore, we have come up with a system which will help clear traffic on roads for ambulance. So the concept will be explained by Vaishnavi Okay. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, continue. Yes, ma'am, okay. no audible. Okay, thank you. So, as you can see in the picture, there's an ambulance which is stuck in heavy traffic and it's very difficult to move these kind of uh, traffic. And hence, we have seen in many situations like this, critical patients definitely lose their lives. 
our idea is to save these precious lives as each life is important let me explain you the brief working model of our project here when an ambulance is approaching a traffic light signal both the ambulance and the traffic light will get connected through the rf transceivers and as soon as the connection is established the traffic light signals green and blue color light are turned on this will be on until the ambulance passes and exceeds the frequency range and gets disconnected after it has passed the traffic lights will work as before so here is the flow of work of our model here we have a control unit the vehicle unit and the signal section here the rf receiver that is, that is the radio frequency receivers is installed in the traffic uh, light signals and the rf uh, transmitters are installed in the ambulance then uh, the traffic light signals will catch these um, signals which is sent by the ambulance's transceiver and hence the connection is established let us go into detail of the idea here i would like you to uh, to emphasize on the directions as i will be explaining based on that here you can see an ambulance which is attempting to move in the north direction and there is a traffic light signal over here what happens is when the ambulance reaches a specified range the ambulance and the traffic light signal both will be connected when these are connected the traffic light signal to which the ambulance is connected the lights of that particular traffic light signal green and blue color lights will be turned on which will uh, indicate that the amp this lane all the vehicles from this lane have to move automatically what happens is all the other three traffic signal light will be turned red and blue by the other three traffic light signals i mean this one this one and this one so these three traffic light signals will have their red and blue colored light turned on you may uh, ask why the blue colored light let's go into detail now uh, suddenly when the red color light turn gets turned on the people on the road might get confused and think that there's a glitch in the system and may still try to move that is why we are we are introducing a new blue color traffic light which will indicate that the, there is a sudden change in the traffic light colors because there is an ambulance in some other lane which is attempting to pass and that is exactly the reason all the other lane vehicles should not move an inch until the ambulance passes through its direction after the ambulance passes again all the traffic light signals will start working as before this is the diagram which is uh, showed what happens is when the ambulance enters the specific range it passes it uses the tra uh, rf transceivers these rf transceivers are connected to all the light colors t indicates timers what happens after the ambulance passes that is let me get back to the image when the ambulance passes there are vehicles which are standing over here facing the east direction this directions traffic light signal color will turn to green and they will be permitted to move for 20 seconds when they are moving the vehicles which are facing the south directions will have their red color light turned on for a span of 15 seconds and later the yellow color will be turned on for a span of 5 seconds after the 20 seconds the vehicles which are facing in the south direction will be permitted to move for the next 20 seconds when the vehicles from facing the south directions are moving the vehicles which are facing the west direction over here will have to wait for the same 20 seconds wherein red color light will be on for 15 seconds and yellow light will be on for 5 seconds this happens similarly in all the directions one thing to note is when the vehicles facing the east direction are moving the vehicles facing east uh, uh, south direction will have their red color light turned on for 15 seconds and yellow for 5 whereas at the same time the vehicles facing the west direction will have their red color light turned on for 35 seconds and yellow color light turned on for 5 seconds similarly the vehicles facing the north direction will have their red color light turned on for 55 seconds and yellow color light turned on for 5 seconds that is why the total time taken for one cycle to complete for all the vehicles will be 80 seconds wherein Uh, they will be permitted to move for 20 seconds to each each of the direction now in this uh, we can imagine two scenarios now suppose what if there are two ambulances which uh, try to which attempt or which come to that place at a similar time in that case what will happen so in these cases the ambulance 
when when one ambulance is connected to one rf transceiver in one traffic signal all the other three traffic signals are not permitted or are not allowed to connect with any other ambulance system after this ambulance which is connected has passed only in the other traffic uh, the other ambulance which is waiting will be permitted to connect and as soon as this exceeds the frequency range that is as soon as the first ambulance will exceed the frequency range and pass the second ambulance will automatically get connected uh, from uh, wherever lane it is present and that will allow to move now another scenario is what if more than one ambulance uh, although this is a very rare case but there are chances this might happen what if more than one ambulance comes from the same direction in that case also the solution is same in the systematic way only we will be allowing the first ambulance which gets connected to the rf transceiver only will be allowed to move first after that when the connection is cut uh, because the first ambulance will move out of the frequency range the second ambulance behind it will be connected and that will be allowed to move now you might ask the ambulance in the other direction or the one behind uh, we are somehow we are stopping it to move so it might cause loss of loss but if we allow both the directions to move then there might be vehicles which can get clashed and it can cause more of a mess wherein if we think about a systematic way where the one which is connected before will move and the second one will wait for a while where the confusions which uh, might happen are reduced to a lot of extent and there are more than 90% of chances that we are saving time for both the ambulances because the ambulance speed as we know Uh, ambulance are very fast that's why the second ambulance which is waiting uh, it won't have to wait for a long time because we are creating a systematic uh, process wherein if after the first ambulance will pass the same second the second ambulance will get connected and it will be permitted to move so it's just a matter of few seconds and we think this is the most efficient way of working so this was our idea and this was the this is the cost estimate of our project where we where we will be requiring somewhere around 23800 rupees for the project thank you we are open for questions now okay so here the transceiver to the rf receiver no so how much distance you are considered from ambulance to that signal rf receiver sir uh, we are considering a distance of around 80 meters or 100 meters uh, from the traffic light signal wherever it is present okay so if consider uh, apart uh, uh, from the 80 meter or 100 meter on ambulance there means how to solve this problem sorry sir if the ambulance is at of 80 meters or um, 100 meters means if the how you solve the problem how the ambulance is received Uh, I am to be very signal. Ah, uh, sir, actually, we have designed it for hundred uh, meters. But okay. if the ambulance is far from that, then uh, it will have to reach a frequency of hundred meters only to get connected. Well, okay. in uh, if we see some scenarios where hundred meters is falling short, we can also extend this range to two hundred meters as well as per the requirements. Okay, that is one point. Okay, because uh, not only a single point, the yeah, uh, distance and RF receiver, that this kind of signal only you want to concentrate. Because it is a real-time scenario, so you have to consider multiple uh, parameters to identify an ambulance is there or not. Okay, that is my yes. one point. Uh, yes. Yes. And uh, another thing. Uh, uh, let me uh, clarify that uh, a little bit, sir. Uh, okay. It, it, that is uh, region specific. Like okay. uh, in some cases, the junction uh, width will be uh, more. Uh, the distance will be more so it can be set as per requirements so there is mm -hmm. no specific uh, fixed requirement it okay. can, that is uh, uh, flexible that distance can be uh, set uh, the range can be set by the uh, according to the uh, area conditions okay but area conditions okay but this, we can't uh, predict the traffic scenario no sometimes that scenario uh, very within the less period less distance the track may be there But some scenario, the length of the distance, the traffic length of the traffic length is distance is high. Then we can't predict that one. Okay, it is a area region is not common for every time. Yes, like sir. When uh, uh, in the center of the city, if we consider center of the city, obviously the traffic will be more in those areas. So the frequency range will also keep more. But when we are talking about other regions like rural areas, where uh, not exactly rural okay, areas, but okay. where the areas the traffic is less. we can keep uh, the frequency range for a little less because as the traffic will not be there the ambulance will easily reach up to the 100 meters frequency from the traffic light signal that's why okay 
Yeah, that is one of the thing you want to consider. Yeah, after yes, that, uh, uh, not, it, my point is not only consider the uh, distance that you are using. Or some other alternative uh, parameter also you have to consider for identifying the uh, ambulance uh, is present at that night. Okay, so that is yes. one point. Another one, after re uh, receiving that ambulance is there and looking there at 100 meter distance. Okay, yes, so in yes, front sir. of that, you told uh, after that only, after receiving that, uh, identify that the ambulance is there only, you are telling that it's a, uh, uh, signals are changing the colors. Okay, yes, up to that, yes. some, uh, some people are, it is not a uh, fully in a physical scenario, real time scenario, some vehicles are moving on the uh, roads. Okay, we can't yes, uh, predict them uh, or restrict them to. Uh, stop the vehicles. Okay, so that scenario how the done? Sir, when uh, the it, vehicles it are behind. Time constraint. Okay, this situation is very time constraint uh, scenario. So how you solve yes, this sir. problem? Yes, sir. The thing is when uh, the vehicles see now there are, there is a uh, space when the vehicles are standing behind the traffic light signal which can see the colors and the one which have already moved forward, which are already moving. So the ones which have already come in front of the traffic light signals, they will move. And as per our analysis, these vehicles which have already passed the traffic light signals, which not will not take much time to move or pass from the, the intersection area. That's why the when the ambulance will be 100 meters behind the traffic light area exactly, it will get connected. So by that time, uh, other people will notice the red and blue color light and they will stop the whoever uh, to whoever the lights will be visible. The ones who have already passed will pass uh, without any problems. Okay. It will not take more than five to 10 seconds for the entire road to get cleared and only the ambulance lane to move vehicles. Okay, so it's very nice idea to very good idea to solve this red time program. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, and now I move on to Parama Gunshar to some questions. Yes, sir. So, Varun Karthik and team. Yes, yes sir. sir. Ah, good presentation. Your presentation skills was good. Good. Um, Thank you, sir. Um, I mean, a very good, uh, strong literature survey and a uh, very appropriate uh, costing you have put in. Uh, uh, the budget also very accurate and very uh, uh, very reasonable costing also, also okay? yes sir. good yes, sir. best wishes thank you sir thank thanks you, sir. a lot can move to the next presentation now. yes sir i would like to call on Sad sadia alfia ma'am from june 2 uh, from presenting smart car parking systems using lot alia ma'am good morning everyone uh, my name is alia mehnas and uh, one more team member is nandan kumar and here we come with an idea of smart car parking using iot did you know that India took about 60 years in acquiring 100 million vehicles, but the next 100 million vehicles were bought in mere 10 years. With an increase in vehicles, a severe problem of vehicular congestion has also been arisen, which has put an urban health and safety at risk. What is choking on roads? Illegal on-street parking is one of the primary reasons why major city centers face progressively worsening traffic conditions. Inadequate and poorly managed parking facilities often force vehicle owners to illegally park on street roads. Illegal parking in cities eats road space away, leading to frequent traffic jams. Vehicles are often parked without any consideration for commutators. The main traffic problems are caused due to the visitors which are unaware of the places where of parking places. So this uh, here our product comes with an uh, uh, solution which will be taken over by Nandan. Uh, so we mainly concentrate upon uh, solving the parking issues mainly uh, in the ur urban areas and mainly, mainly highly dense populated areas. So our project system mainly uh, reads the available parking places which are specifically 
kept for parking the vehicles in a public area or any private occupied areas so this allows the users to know the parking spaces before we, we, the destination they are reaching so they can know the number parking space whether it is available or not and they can park over there preliminarily without waiting and uh, causing a traffic congestion and everything uh, the similar plans have been taken up by pwd for uh, urban mobility and parking spaces uh, they even uh, the target for them was to reduce the number of cars or number of vehicles parked on the streets causing congestions and improve the num- and also improve the number of parking spaces available but uh, the project system which we des- designed also uh, helps the users uh, to know the num- uh, parking space uh, which is available for them to park uh, in a available space preliminarily uh, by ac- uh, accessing the cloud server which we use to denote the parking space which we, it is available and they can park there uh, park the vehicle over there and the uh, uh, hardware and software uh, requirements for development will be g- given by my teammate here the hardware and software specifications are mentioned as uh, on screen here uh, we design a mobile app monitors the entry of database with the number of empty spots on every change the state of the notification icon on the app main screen is changed after type, tapping this icon the current occupancy of the individual parking spaces is loaded from the database so which helps in decreasing the traffic and it also helps the visitors to uh, see where, where the parking space is available without illegal parking on roads Uh, next slide please so this is the circuit representation of our project uh, here iot internet of things is the main thing uh, which is used to, to operate this we use iot gecko which is the uh, student friendly helps in uh, research and development of internet of things uh, it helps the people uh, people as well as uh, parking parking owner to Excuse see when they saw any implementation flow project sorry implementation project is a it is still in development sir in this sir, is kind of thing so i'm asking the right time scenario and how you resolve the problem so for that the project kind of thing please so Uh, uh the uh, mainly we uh, we not in order to uh, means the flow chart representation means uh, the uh, okay, i am asking of... how where the real time scenario okay, where you are the identify the so in the real time you, uh, sir uh, real time point of view can you explain what is your application what is the problem statement what is how you solve it uh, uh, mainly the problem is in the real time if we consider dur- uh, during in any fairs or any large meetings or any large group gatherings anywhere it ha- ha- happens or even okay. in the construction public construction yeah. the parks will the vehicles will be parked illegally on the sides of the roads causing the traffic congestion okay. and they will even be occupying pedestrians they are okay. not allowing the people also to walk on the pedestrians okay so the main problem is the usage of vehicles are increasing and the available parking spaces are decreasing okay so with uh, uh, so we in order uh, and uh, most of the people doesn't know that there are uh, legitimate parking okay, spaces allotted for them okay you are it is your product statement you identify so what is the solution for solution for means solution? Uh, we we will uh, through through the app which we develop and uh-huh. this is the uh, this is the hardware component which we design okay. to let people know the uh, parking space uh, through this we will let let people know if we sir That's if you are going to a particular clearly. mall so real time that one can explain clearly how they identify where is the uh, free parking space sir so who uh, are the user who uh, 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 yes yes so let me say uh if we are pa- if uh, we want to go to some particular place okay then that app will detect the nearby parking places and okay. it shows mm. where the parking slots are available without mm, that, uh, uh, my, my question is so that location how to identify uh, how your application identify that a particular parking space is there or not it is it, it is registered with your application or uh, in which way it is controlled that is my question uh, it, no, it, it is registered in, uh, with our uh, uh, application only sir uh, okay. so whenever the uh, who whenever arranging the, the uh, parking space who allocating that is a parking space 
सर पार्किंग स्पेस विल बी अरेंज बाय पार्किंग स्पेस ओनर ओनली सर गवर्नमेंट और गवर्नमेंट और म्युनिसिपल लोकेशन म्युनिसिपल म्युनिसिपल सर म्युनिसिपल म्युनिसिपल म्युनिसिपलिटी आई टोल्ड दैट देयर इज अ इट इज या यस सर म्युनिसिपलिटी म्युनिसिपलिटी ओनर इंफॉर्मेशन इट इज स्टोर्ड इन आवर एप्लीकेशन आई मेक यस सर म्युनिसिपलिटी दैट वन इन दिस काइंड ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन यू शुड इनकॉर्पोरेट इन आवर प्रेजेंटेशन देन ओनली वी कैन आई डू इट दिस एक्सक्यूट नो व्हाटएवर योर एक्सक्यूट प्रेजेंटेशन इट इज योर इंटरनेट थिंग ओके so that that is a real time scenario point of view uh, project i am expecting so that's why from that only i can understand we can understand it easily so that's why i am asking okay so that is one so municipality it is men, uh, stored the yeah. information to the application then that information is received by the user then they will identify there is a parking space then there the people go and place the car in the particular location am i correct this is yes, your application no yes sir okay It is very very good uh, application. A very good innovative thought. Uh, uh, you have to identify uh, one more thing. Okay, it is very uh, good presentation. Okay, so I move on to Balam Nagar sir for some other question. Okay, sir. <clears throat> so Nandan Kumar, yes, sir. Nandan Kumar and the group. Uh, so as uh, very similar to that of uh, Ramasamy sir's question. Uh, yeah, Ramasamy sir, Ramasamy sir's question wasn't uh, answered by you. Um, two questions he uh, he put forward. First one is where where is the flow chart? You told that you are in the currently in the process of uh, developing. Uh, we misplaced it, sir. We forgot to place it. The flow chart. No, no, no. There should be some flow of operations, right? Suppose if, if I consider this particular presentation. So in order to attend this particular presentation on sa- Sunday, you should have developed the the PPT Saturday. So that that is the first step. Second step is that you uh, you, you should uh, being a Sunday, you should get up early, take your breakfast early, everything. Then you are attending it. That flow of operation is there only. This, the operation is successful. If the flow flow of uh, the I mean the flow chart itself is not there, means then probably the 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 problem statement is still fussy only now. Uh, so no, that sir. you have to. Co- Okay, okay, sir. Sorry, uh, the mistake is on our side only, and uh, apologies. No, no, for it's not mistake. a mistake. Like, uh, it, 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 this is a very strong component that it needs to be placed. Okay, sir. I understand, sir. I understand. Sir. Okay. And second one also, as he, uh, as he asked, uh, I'm not sure about uh, you answered it or not. Uh, um, the parking spaces, like. Right? Uh, yeah, so yes, uh, w- w- the question what he was i, I mean uh, w- what ramasamy sir was asking is that uh, and uh, you and your teammates were also answering it yes sir the the, pa- uh, the parking spaces are already registered but uh, yes, the sir, parking slots it yes, is by municipality you can uh, but uh, the parking slots which are free and are occupied that is being uh, done dynamically one yes, sir. for example if i have five parking slots and if the second parking slot is uh, or second parking slot is free mm. okay this is uh, free at this particular time after 5 f- minutes this is occupied and last parking slot is free so this particular dynamic information how you are able to record it that is what that's why we step. placed the ir sensors sir the ir sensors are placed in every spot so that whenever a vehicle is in the spot or away, uh, the spot is vacant we get to know sir uh, dynamically we will be knowing in our program sir that's why we placed ir sensors in the program Oh, that you should have answered no <laughs> uh, sorry sir i maybe i missed the oh. question the oh. ir sensor helps us to know whether the parking spot is occupied or vacant sir Mm-mm. so that, that again that gives only whether it is occupied or vacant yes, so sir. based upon it you should have we should develop an intelligence yeah yes sir that's why we use uh, uh, the iot gecko especially in the uh, arduino compiler sir so the versatility of this program helps us to refresh even for the user also to dynamically you know whether every 5 to 10 seconds whether the parking space is occupied or parking space is uh, vacant it helps us to know in a very less amount of time if i uh, got this answer earlier i would have not asked this question <laughs> sorry sir sorry for the okay 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 best wishes thank you sir and uh, one more point uh, uh, presenter hey whenever you presenting uh, next time in the same scenario you have to prepare the uh, real time that is image okay in this in this manner the parking slots are there they are in this place the vehicle is coming and in this way they are in the thing there is a parking spot and it is occupied or not how it is uh, placed in next next alternative option so those and all you, you have to show in a uh, pictorial representation then only okay. the viewer can understand easily 
okay sir okay sir. this in this also you have to identify if it is the all the parking because in the crowd scenario all the parking space may be occupied then what is the solution for the uh, user so that information also you have to provide because uh, 100 places are there in the particular region 100 places are occupied then 100 uh, not one 100 one person is coming means who where who he need to go that information how you have uh, find the page uh, what is the uh, your answer for that uh, 100 one person Uh, 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 the, uh, we we will indicate that the present uh, spot which they are trying to reach is completely full, and uh, okay. we will de- we will denote them another area okay. where nearby uh, nearby to them only we will denote another area where there is a possible vacant spot. Okay. We will guide them to that. Okay. If we if the person violating that uh, situation, so what is the solution uh, you are providing to solve the problem? Anybody Pardon, sir. Is, anybody violating the your uh, rule and regulations provided in the uh, application? Yes, sir. Okay, then what is the decision taken by your application? Uh, the the vehicle number will be already registered in the app, sir, preliminarily. So okay, it okay. will be sent to the traffic police of the particular state department, and they will be uh, penalized, sir. Okay, okay, very very good, very good uh, idea. So it is a good thing. Okay, so we may enhance lot of features in this application in future. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, ma'am. We can move to some next next presentation. Yes, sir. I would like to invite Manisha Jain, ma'am, from Komuri Pratap Reddy Institute of Technology, uh, presenting paper on Sixth Sense robot. yeah uh, good afternoon to all the dignitaries and all my dear fellow mates uh, this is nimisha jain uh, from komuri pratap reddy institute of technology hyderabad so uh, yes, sir is my slide visible yes ma'am your slide is visible yeah okay uh, so uh, our team consists of four members and uh, we are uh, from the department of computer science and engineering here as uh, like uh, our robot is based uh, on under the domain of internet of robotic things so here as we all know that uh, robots are evolving day by day and they have like so many special features that can be useful in even in the human society so we decided why not create a robot which is based on the sixth sense technology so uh, what exactly is sixth sense technology Okay, uh, well, like way back in uh, 1994, the Sixth Sense technology was discovered by uh, Steve Mann uh, in MIT uh, Media Labs. Here, the Sixth Sense uh, technology is like a gesture-based uh, interface. So, using which, you, like, just with the hand gesture, you can uh, do like most of the works. For example, if we want to click an image, you can just do it with the hand gesture. But, uh, provided you need to. Associated with a, a projector or with a camera all the time, like whenever you're uh, moving around, that was the kind of disadvantage that uh, we found. And then we decided, why not create a robot which can uh, just work with the hand, like uh, the gesture interface, or with the data gloves, and then uh, it can navigate to all the directions and uh, without the use, if, uh, like use of a camera too. So here, uh, coming to uh, the uh, like uh, the introduction. Here we uh, the main purpose of our gesture interface is to identify the human gestures and then uh, it will convey the information to uh, the robot. So uh, yeah, so coming to the system analysis in the existing system, uh, uh, like uh, we created a robot, but it uh, had uh, like uh, Arduino Nano was connected directly to the laptop or a huge processor, and uh, just with the help of the colored markers or sensors, which were Uh, like uh, placed on the fingertips of the hands and then uh, like uh, uh, it was projected uh, on the laptop screen or the camera and then ba- based on the direction of the fingers the robo used to navigate but there the major drawback was the robo can navigate only within the radius of that uart cable or the cable that is connected to it uh, or the cable which is connected between the laptop and the um, uh, robo So that was the main thing, and moreover, there was a huge uh, software complexity too. 
and uh, coming to the proposed system so we designed a robo in which uh, just with the hand gesture we can uh, help the robo to navigate so here we'll be using the angle sensing technology and the nrf uh, 24l01 plus modules which can wirelessly communicate uh, from the transmitter and the receiver side and then help the robot to navigate to a larger distances here uh, like uh, it, it can navigate to larger distances within the radio frequency of 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz and uh, it uh, moreover our ro robo can rotate even in the 360 degrees and it is like very flexible yeah coming to the uh, requirements uh, the hardware requirements we have used arduino nano and then nrf 24l01 plus module and you uh, 6050 module and l2980 uh, a motor driver and then motor uh, uh, 60 rmp motors and the wheels and the robo chassis yeah and the software requirements that we have used is uh, so the operating systems i have used the windows 10 ultimate and the coding language was python language and the software environment we have used the arduino id so here the overall robo is divided into two parts the transmitter and the receiver part so coming to the topmost so here uh, we'll be using uh, mpu6050 module on the uh, transmitter side and then uh, we'll be using the arduino nano even on the transmitter side and the nrf uh, uh, 24l01 plus transmitter on the transmitter uh, side and uh, like further it communicates wirelessly with the nrf 24l01 plus on the receiver side that is our main robo so here the receiver is the slave you could say or the main robo and then uh, it further sends the data to arduino nano and then it processes the data along with the coding and then it further sends the entire information to the l2980 motor driver so it is like a powerhouse uh, and it acts as an interface between the motors and all the circuit components that are connected and then it uh, helps the uh, motors to uh, start and move Excuse in that particular me. direction Excuse me. so can you uh, certain smart in real time scenario how your application where the problem is there and how your application is helpful to solve the problem and which way it is working so can you explain in certain smart manner in real time scenario this uh, Yes, uh, yes, sir. So we have uh, created one of the real-time uh, prototype too. So here, uh, like, uh, uh, we have created uh, this robot so that it can be used to clear the junk which is uh, placed in the space. As we know, there's like lots of debris in the junk, and uh, to clean that, it would uh, like it's not too easy, and uh, it costs a huge. Uh, if uh, an astronaut goes, it is uh, of course like very uh, risky for the humans to go and clean the junks there. So we thought, why not uh, use this robot? to clean the junk or the debris in the space here uh, by uh, like uh, more than 27000 pieces of orbital debris like up uh, like are in the space junk so your application full and fully for uh, space oriented or real time uh, ground based also yes uh, so we do have the ground based also it okay, can be ground based on a real time scenario can you explain can you yeah. consider under Okay, uh, it can be used even in the wheelchairs, like for the handicapped people. Like uh, as we know, most of the handicapped people have to be dependent on someone, uh, somebody else, to help them move from one place to another. So, uh, what if we implement this ge gesture-based interface in the wheelchairs, so they can just uh, move uh, their wheelchair by themselves, just with the gesture. Like if they move the hand forward, the wheelchair would go forward. If they move it backward, it would go backward. And vice versa in all the directions uh, that they want to move in. Okay, so, so that is paralyzed. Yes. Then how they can use this application? Yes, uh, so uh, so here, uh, like, uh, there are two conditions. So one, like, on the uh, hand, we can keep, and one more thing, like, uh, we can keep on the uh, cap or on the head, like we decided. Uh, like, for example, if you keep a cap, so, of course, if a person is handicapped, at least that person will be able to move his or her, her uh, neck. So that part will be working. So we can keep our gesture interface on the cap and then uh, just they can nod the head in whichever direction they want and that uh, okay, can help you, them to proceed. Uh, can we do, uh, already you have one slide. Okay, in that uh, uh, gesture movement, can you show one second that in this slide? Yes, sir. Is this the one, sir? Okay. Yes, sir. So here, uh, this is our, uh, like on the hand, we kept a gesture interface. Okay. And uh, this one, this 
that can be implemented even on the hats like uh, even for the military applications as we decided to keep this uh, mm -hmm. for example if the military personnel are having some arm uh, forces uh, or some arm arms in their both the hands then now uh, in that case they can't keep our uh, hand gesture and move the robotic vehicle so in that case they can place it on their hat Okay, and what is scenario a a scenario no what is the a scenario is yes, uh, uh, so that uh, initially the vehicle is at rest if you yes, keep okay. the B palm scenario, B scenario you are down the uh, finger uh, down then it is moving forward uh. so, uh, sorry sir i didn't if you uh, down your finger hand finger then it goes the robot will go move up uh, uh, forward direction uh. yes yes sir if uh, we if Yeah. This scenario just opposite, no. So yes, yes. if you make it uh, uh, straight angle, straight uh, posture, then it is uh, break, no. Yes. So yes. How you identify that portion is straight? How you control? So here, uh, like based on the gesture, so if uh, mm -hmm. we. Is it? I mean, if uh, for example, if you're considering the head part, if my head is like if I'm not nodding the head, then it would uh, my vehicle would be still. And if I move it forward or nod my head forward, then it would basically move forward. Okay, and, and one more thing, in this application, one one point I'm trying to say. So every time if you want to move forward, means you have to make your uh, finger position in particular position. Okay, then only it will be continue long time. So it will be painful for the hand, no. Yeah. No, no, sir. Uh, so here, while we are nodding the head, so we have designed in such a way like uh, it depends on our coding. Okay. So uh, we have a time limit, like okay. of, uh, the seconds here. Mm -hmm. For example, if I move my head, uh, no, keep my head uh, like in the forward direction for more than like five seconds, then it would predict that okay, I want to uh, go further for uh, like uh, even uh, another ten or fifteen seconds. so here it will continuously help the device to move forward and for example again if i want to stop it so as like we can keep the brake just uh, if i keep my head straight it will stop okay so here it depends on anyhow, our coding any go if you want to change your posture in the hand posture because you, it is a uh, fully tied your hand that uh, uh, controlling unit is tied with your hand no so if yes. we, any any scenario or any another unexpected situation arises you Change your position, posture of your hand. Then it will uh, the remote will be redirected to some unwanted uh, position. No, how you control this one? Yes, sir. Uh, for example, okay, uh, you mean if some obstacle comes mm, on the yeah, way, any, no problem. Yeah, your, your finger yeah. having some problem, some uh, another uh, uh, obstacle set happen. So for yeah. that, you are you need to change your position of your hand. So for some other reason. Yeah. So yeah that yeah. time you are it is connected with your device. So how you can control this one? So uh, there we do have a like power on and off uh, switch. For example, if the situation is like okay, I need to uh, like stop uh, myself here. Then uh, direct uh, we have an option to turn it off, so it would automatically turn off with the button. And if I okay. want to like uh, okay, this is an unexpected thing, no? Uh, yes. Okay, that time how you plan to go on the switch off your button? Uh, sir, uh, Nimesh, I'll just answer the question. Hi, this is Tarun. Uh, Yeah, actually, so uh, this application is not only really like in person. There are a lot of other things we need to connect this technology with. It's not only based on hand gestures. So suppose if in case we are using it in a VR, say for example, so we'll have small IoT sensors there, small IoT camera sensors, which will help to navigate in case there's some obstacle there. It will automatically take a deviation or it will stop. So this application is cannot be used as a single. Only for hand gesture. Some other option. Correct. Also yeah. Can yeah. So can we need some other option. Yeah. Can yeah. Say, some say, suppose other... if you are using it in. Yeah. I'll I'll give you an example, sir. So suppose if you are using it this in a military. In okay. case if you want to, yeah. If you want, in case of war, no. Hi, like how now Russia and Ukraine war is going on. For example. i am against war just a disclaimer just just in case to use this technology so you uh, we don't need to use humans in danger situation so instead of they going physically taking their vehicles in attack mode they can send small small robots which can scan the area using hand gestures they can scan the entire area with infrared technology and cameras attached to that small vehicles uh, and sir, they can sir, scan sir. to the entire area they can bomb yeah. they can destroy the place Excuse me, sir. We can yeah. uh, understand yes. the particular concept with the constructive example. Uh, kindly not uh, uh, take this particular example into picture. 
Yeah, I am. That's why. This why I gave a disclaimer stating that I am purely against war. Just this is just an example. I'm telling. Yeah, yeah, I am not like promoting it, but just the use of this technology. I can give many other examples. Space, say, suppose yeah. if you want, in, in case of space debris, uh, uh, debris clearing. So there are billions of billions of dollars being spent today just on these programs on how to clear space jump. It's a major major issue today. There are uh, and uh, few few problems which the space agencies are facing right now is they are getting down those. Uh, say there are about three thousand. What do you say? Uh, orbital. Uh, what do you say? Space. Uh, satellites which are unused matlab which are not even in use now as of now and so now what problem uh, all these national agencies are facing is they need to get it physically down and it has to burn in the space car atmosphere and this is causing a huge problem uh, uh, in in terms of scattering of all those metal parts so what can be done using our robots which can be sent to space instead of uh, literally like nasa people i mean space people going out of their what do you say satellite and everything they they can send robots and you the the satellite the people who are sitting inside the what is satellite they can control those robots and clear all those things in the space itself and again there is no harm and you no know, loss of human life in case and no major expenditure on space suits okay, which is also a huge expenditure okay, listen, uh, yes sir yes sir yes sir. here you mentioned it is sixth sense okay what uh, yeah. what is here yeah, sixth sense means Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Nimesha, could you take up the question? Yeah. Yes, sir. So your uh, actually six sense technology, as I told, it was developed way back in nineteen ninety four. So it was just a gesture based interface. I think most of them might have that uh, like pre assumption that six sense would be something like uh, like uh, uh, like normally in humans we think six senses like. we uh, get to know the things prior or something like uh, in reality before it happens but, uh, that is not the case in this one here it is a gesture based interface so uh, it is used to sense all the physical environment okay, and one more time it is a sense person no yes yes they can uh, individually they can think and they uh, work no but here your application is gesture based based it is working It, it won't take any decision no uh, it takes then how you say it is a sixth sense no no sir it actually takes uh, for example if you uh, know the gesture also it has to sense the physical environment prior so hmm. after sensing the physical env- environment for example the angle itself it has to sense the angle and then it converts it into the uh, digital uh, part sir, so okay, that one is more how, thing uh, uh, one yeah. more thing if you uh, your your car is working with the finger gesture okay if any obstacle is in front of the vehicle means uh, how it will uh, control it? by so you only you see- control or the, the uh, robot in, uh, itself can dis- take decision to stop the situation sir a uh, robot itself can take the decision by like we can uh, like use the ultrasound uh, uh, ultrasonic sensors which mm-hmm. automatically detects if there are any obstacles and it stops itself yeah at the time so, you were gesture in uh, downward then it is the instruction to the um, robot is moving forward yes, how yes. it is handled that under that situation that is be, uh, that is using the mpu 6050 module sir that is through the angle sensing accelerometer mm-hmm. that, that and then uh, nr Obstacles there, and your vehicle is stopped. So at that time, your uh, finger gesture is downward. Then it, the instruction to the model uh, robot is moving forward. That one how to stop resolve. Let yeah. Uh, okay, uh, sir. I got your question, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. We have actually tried even this way. For example, if my hand is tilted forward and yet my robotic vehicle is moving, and mm-hmm. suddenly the obstacle occurs. For example. Cross. So uh, what it does is through that ultra uh, ultrasonic sensors only it uh, like stops by itself. Okay. So I'm far. Uh, it uh, stops it by uh, by itself okay. using uh, that uh, ultrasonic sensor. So as it can detect. The, okay. Very good. Uh, yeah. So sir, any questions from uh, Balmurthy sir? No sir. We can uh, proceed on to the next one. Okay. Thank you. Thank good you. Your uh, innovation is very nice. Okay. You have to consider this kind of uh, obstacles are uh, uh, drawbacks. Okay. So, according to you, are to improve yourself. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, can to the next one. I would like to invite uh, Sandhya Bansal, ma'am, from Maharishi Markandeshwar Dim to be University. 
presenting paper on towards enhancing educational skills for speech and hearing impaired in India. Sandhya, ma'am, are you there? Yes, ma'am. I'm just uh, sharing my screen. Uh, yeah, is it visible, ma'am? Yes, yeah, it's visible. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Sandhya Bansal and on the behalf of my team, I'm presenting our project proposal on towards enhancing educational skills for speech and hearing impaired in India. So uh, the problem that we have seen is that in India, a prop, uh, in overall the world, the total, there are 63 million people are deaf and mute and mostly other children which uh, by bone they are suffering from the uh, this problem and uh, however due to the use of mobiles or we can say that the due to because of the news pollution even at the old age people are going to suffer from that deaf and mute problem but however in india if we uh, see they are very less education uh, going in uh, towards the deaf and mute, uh, there are very less institutes and then there are very uh, few uh, proper instructions are going on. Like if we go in the small cities, there are very uh, only one school or two schools are there for deaf and mute. And the problem is that one teacher can handle only the uh, 20 to 25 students at uh, in a class because uh, it is very hard to teach them. It is because uh, like, if we uh, can't hear something, we are not able to learn it properly. So the problem with them is that if, if they can't hear it properly, they can't process it. And it's a very long process for them, them to learn something. Like for single alphabet, uh, uh, they will able to learn it at class five. So basically uh, the education for them is a very big problem nowadays. So the solution we are projecting is that we are trying to create a self-learning platform. We are trying to create a self-learning uh, app, which uh, is which we can provide elementary knowledge of the ISL words, ISL alphabets, I, uh, about the basic of ISL and its use to the persons. So by this product, a person will be able to recognize the basic alphabets, basic numbers, uh, some common functional words that we use in common daily life, like, for example, father, mother, help, food, hungry. So these type of words they can use and it will be very helpful for them to communicate with their peers. And the uniqueness of this project is that uh, as by we provide the ISL uh, elementary knowledge with also uh, students uh, students or the persons are can able to learn the basic uh, things by recognizing them. Uh, like I'm moving directly to the uh, flow chart. So uh, the flow chart is that uh, some uh, basic ISL gestures will be performed by the deaf mute person. The cam, uh, by the use of webcam and these gestures have already been stored into the system and by the model training we have already uh, trained our model on some gestures on some uh, uh, words so the gestures will be compared with the trained uh, with the training data and the corresponding alphabet or the corresponding number will be displayed over the screen however uh, because the they are not able to read the text. So an image related to that will also be displayed. For example, the student make the gestures of A. So with that A, like the related word, like the, for example, apple or uh, like aeroplane. So these are like normal words that a student can, can learn. And they are very, uh, they can learn very easily through the help of images. So an image will be retrieved at the same time, relatively to the gesture. So by this, the student will be able to learn the character formation with that and the image with that, that he can relate with the gesture with another things also. So this will help him to learn that how, may, uh, how these gestures can be made and how he can use these gestures in his common daily life. And 
the market overview of the project is that uh, it will provide a self learning educational platform to the hear, speech and hearing impaired person and we can implement into the uh, society and then we can implement this app to the deaf and mute educational institute where at one time a teacher can um, uh, can make learn to around like 50 60 students at one time and this may also help to the children which are suffered from autism because they are also very less responding to the things so by these kind of apps, by these kind of uh, by this kind of app, they will be uh, more uh, like uh, keen towards like making gestures, and then uh, like th by display they can by help the help of the GUI they can easily learn these gestures. And the technology we are going to use is the camera. Then feature extraction modules from the uh, because from the image we are retrieving the features. Uh, which makes the total gestures, then a gesture recognition module, then LCD display and the GPU. And the future scope of the project is that we can enhance the uh, recognition. We can implement these systems for the real time uh, world. Like uh, we can use these systems in the schools, in the banks, or uh, like in, in the malls where uh, deaf and mute can easily convey their, uh, their things. and. Uh, uh, we want to make it a complete project by using it for by for the both normal and the deaf mute society so that they can have a bi-directional communication uh, so that th those person who uh, who doesn't understand like uh, a normal person doesn't learn uh, sign languages because we think we, it, there is no need to learn that so if somehow we we struck somewhere uh, yes sir application uh, environment so environment How is python implement, uh, 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 i'm asking uh, ui application interface what is your uh, which way it is you are uh, implementing this application sir and actually sir, we are using uh so we uh mobile Java, application or we, which way uh, i'm asking real time the application device. so we are uh, uh, trying to make uh, uh, application by using the javascript uh -huh. Real time uh, environment. Yeah. Application Real time environment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, which one? What is your uh, real time uh, application front end? Sir, Python. Mobile sir, development. Mobile application. Sir, so, it is sir. Application uh, uh, sir, mobile. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, sir. I so got it. Sir, mobile application as well as we, we are thinking for the uh systems uh a uh, web page kind of uh, also because in schools it will be helpful that if if there is a lab in a system schools there are labs so in labs if they uh, have all interface in all the system so a student can learn there easily so that uh, whether basically we will start with the school then we'll go for the mobile okay, so application how the user is in speech are uh, that, that uh, physically the, that people are user okay how uh, how they will uh, enhance their education skills in using your application so uh, they can enhance like uh, so uh, right right now what is happening the teacher what the uh, in deaf mute school what the teacher do they use only sign language and uh, the teacher okay. will make the sign gesture and the student and they will show some uh, like uh, for example, they take the uh, apple or aeroplane in the like hardware form, and they will show to the student, okay, this is the mm -hmm. gesture and this is the apple. And somehow, like if they start from the pre-nursery, from up to five, they are able to learn simple only the alphabet. And if you talk about a class mm -hmm. twelve student of deaf school, they only learn how to like uh, the bus. Like for example, somewhere bus is written. So they can only, they will divide the bus in a single alphabet, B, U, S, and then they are able to learn a complete word bus. So if there are apps from the basic, like for, like nowadays, you can see that the uh, two, three and four year children are using the mobile phones. And somehow these students are very uh, talented, means they are very talented yeah, in other ways. Uh, use mobiles. Okay, so... Sure. 
but it's kind of it it is something we are trying to make it a very interest like 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 student please do you have any kind of do you have any slide to show or uh, you are application interface sir uh okay sir can i uh, can i use my screen can i show you uh, somehow how we are using it it's it's, it's in process time. no sir it may it may uh, run quickly it it's uh, it's in process but i can show you like two gestures we have have done on it okay, uh, let it. me share so, yes yeah quickly do yeah yeah sir just just a second Ma'am, whenever you are preparing your presentation, you have to show your screenshot of your working environment. Then only it is easy oh, to oh. understand by the new, new, new audience. Okay, sir. Sir, next time I will take care of this. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, so sir, by, this uh, is a gesture. Okay. So, will you able to see that? So, yeah, no, this is okay, how, like, if. and this just will be like interpret there so it's uh, okay. imaginative part is still uh, missing there because we have to uh, okay. implement gestures also like this is afraid like uh, if someone is afraid okay. of something that is student so okay. that is we are doing uh, to implement in it. this sketcher how the student can understand what sir using your sketcher you are showing your hand no Yes, sir. By sir, this is by using the. Uh, sir, because uh, because there are things that uh, the hand sizes will vary. If we see okay. uh, in a uh, like we go through the age, like the hand of a two year children, then hand of five year children, it will vary. Then in a class, the okay. hand will also. I'm asking vary. who so will the, uh, handle this uh, picture changing. Okay, sir. So the gesture changing will be handled by uh, the feature extraction module. We will create a feature extraction module there, mm -hmm. which so will the handle. Student in front of the laptop or mobile phone. Okay, the student or okay. children is in front of mobile phone or whatever. Who will give the instruction? The gesture changing. Who is going to do? Sir, they will make the gestures, right? Uh, means uh, they will make the gestures, and if they are. sir no actually what happens sir uh, that's why we are doing this now because a uh, teacher will teach them in the class and then they can practice it at their home another thing is that if like if they make the gesture in front of the camera mm -hmm. that gesture is accurate then it will have the prediction but if that gesture is not good that gesture is not uh, in the proper manner then it will show that this gesture doesn't exist so that mess This will also be displayed there. The user will change the sketcher by that. The, the, if they change the sketcher, means uh, it will give some uh, uh, alphabetical words or something. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The by that they can understand. Yes, sir. So by through they can understand means uh, basically we are trying to retrieve some images. Your application giving because... some words. Uh, some it provides some words based upon their the yes, sketcher of your hand. That is your point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. If the gesture is not match, it means it won't give any word. Am I correct? Yes, sir. It it won't give any word. It won't give any image related to that. Okay. How you you how you train your system? 
So we will begin by providing a data set on that and we are using deep learning techniques for that. Some okay. hand geometrical methods are also being used in that. And uh, uh, how many words it will uh, recommend for a particular question? Years. So for, so I think one year is uh, enough for that. How much? Actually, uh, sir, actually we got stuck because uh, we are trying to collect the data from the school itself from the deaf mute okay. school and due to mm -hmm. covid restrictions we are not able to collect that particular data from the students so mm -hmm. uh, so as soon as we are able to collect the data set from the schools then uh, we will Im uh, implement start the training of the model uh, right now we are training okay. on our gestures uh, the data okay. Get, uh, your uh, presentation was nice okay and anywhere else in future you Thank present something means you are to with the proper information Okay, because you are spending oh, 10 oh. minutes or 15 minutes of time, we can't get the exact oh. what you are going, what you are presenting. So that is the problem. So, okay. I will okay. move on to Paramahansa. Thank, thank you so much. Sir. Okay, sir. Uh, good presentation, ma'am. Ma <clears throat> thank you. And a very healthy conversation, technical conversation. Best wishes, ma'am. Thank you. I have so no much, questions sir. from my side. We can move on to the next. Uh, Next presentation. Okay. okay, thank you so much, sir. I would like to invite uh, Mohammad Zamuddin, sir, from Osmania University, for presentation on applications for roadside assistance. Mohammad, sir, are you there? Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir, you are. And my screen is, screen is visible, right? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. The respected judges and all the participants, a very good afternoon to one and all. I am Mohammed Zaymuddin from Usmania University, Computer Science Department. And today I am here to talk to you about my idea, application for roadside assistance, a platform to provide roadside assistance for the roadside breakdown of vehicles in just a few clicks. Imagine we are traveling in our vehicles and suddenly our vehicle got stuck in the middle of the road due to any mechanical issue, electrical issue or puncture of tire and it's hard to find any mechanic or puncture shop nearby and there is no one to help and the solution seems difficult. Then how do we continue our journey? To counter the issue of roadside breakdown of vehicles, we can develop an app that can effortlessly connect a driver victim with the nearest mechanic or puncture man or technician based on his problem with just a few clicks. By designing our algorithm such that the nearest mechanic will get the notification about the victim and the nearest mechanic reaches and solves the issue. The driver will get the earliest help. The problem is solved by the application for roadside assistance and the vehicle can continue its journey safely. Application for roadside assistance is designed for the user to get the quickest service possible at the event on any vehicle breakdown. All mobile users can access this application. This application will help to reduce wasting user time in finding a proper mechanic. This application shows the location of the nearest service provider and direct them the, and direct the nearest service provider to the user. Here is the solution for the breakdown. The user just need to open our application and select the problem or issue. Our algorithm will search for the nearest mechanic, then the mechanic gets the details of the problem and the location of the user. Then mechanic reaches the place of breakdown and solve the issue. Now the problem is solved by the application for roadside assistance. The vehicle can continue its journey safely as uh, the vehicle can continue its journey safely in the earliest way possible. Talking about our services, we can provide, provide many essential services like flat tire fixing or tire puncture repair, towing services for the vehicle in case of a car crash or severe issue, jump start, jump start for batteries, emergency fuel delivery in case of an out of fuel situation, and also the on spot repair service. All these services are provided to the user in the earliest way possible. Talking about the need. Thank you for your clear explanation. You can start at smart. So, what is your product uh, cost? Okay. Then, uh, 
Uh, I have the slide one for this. Oh, one second, sir. So for financial assistance, to build our application, we need to capital for building front end, back end, and hosting it to the database. Totally, it costs around 45 to 50 or 50,000. And it would be really beneficial for us if uh, IFERP help us with funding, and we will be really grateful for that. Okay, uh, what is your uh, software configuration work of software requirements, software and hardware requirements? Sorry, sir, I didn't get you. What is your software and hardware requirements for this application development? Algorithm, are you asking? Mm -hmm. Software and hardware requirements. Yes, we need to, to develop this application. We need to develop develop and uh, we also develop an application and we are also planning to develop website for this. Mm. No, no. What, what, what is the front end, software? back end and uh, hardware, hardware and software, what you require, what you are going to do with this particular financial system? That's what yes, we can design our front end for with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and back one with Node.js and React.js. And okay. we we need a just a, a mobile phone to 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 run this application. So just the cost of the mobile is the financial assistance you require. No, no, for building building our application for building a front end and back end. Oh, that's what I we are asking. Okay, okay. And uh, may I show some okay. slides? To is you, your mobile application, your application is mobile application. If the, all the users are registered with your mobile application, they can, if they have any problem in their website, they will reach the nearby uh, 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 mechanical shop. It is, is it correct? Yes, sir. From, uh, our, okay. from our application, the user can uh, see the nearest uh, mechanic and he he can call the nearest mechanic and he'll, he can get the earliest help. Get the uh, service. Okay. Yes, it's sir. very nice innovative applications. Okay. So, is there any question from uh, Balamurman, sir? No, sir. No, sir. We can proceed. Okay. Uh, thank you. Sir, may I show Either some slides? Start I, I prepared yeah, some yeah. more slides. Can I show to you? Okay. Yeah, quickly, you show it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I'll, take, I'll take more time. Uh, So, talking about the need for this application, uh, why do we need a specific app for roadside assistance? The first basic need is market dynamics. The rising number of vehicle associated problems results in high demand for the vehicle roadside assistance market. India reports around 1,279 road crashes every single day. Which any, means... any other extra points you wish to say? Yes, sir. About this? Apart from any other extra points you used to say uh, apart from this? Uh, sir, we need, but uh, I read the IFERP donation scheme uh, up to 50,000 uh, right now. Okay, okay, uh, you will. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Yes, okay. So, we have to move on to the next one. Okay. Your presentation is very, was very nice. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Sir, uh, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. You yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would like to invite Milan Nilsson, sir, from Presidency University, uh, presenting paper on solar power monitor using ESP8266 and things back peak. Yes, ma'am. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your screen yes. is open. Okay. So, good afternoon to uh, all the jury members. I'm Kunal Atikari from Presidency University, and today I'll be presenting my team's project on uh, solar power monitoring system using ESP8266 and ThinkSpeak. So, as the world has been moving towards the uh, um, renewable energy resources as their main major energy uh, resource, so we have to uh, like develop devices which can monitor all these. Uh, renewable energy sources so that we can utilize it in a much efficient manner. So we will be collecting all the voltage uh, output coming from the solar panels and we'll upload it into a, a data server like ThingSpeak, then use a Grafana software to visualize the data which is coming out. So the components which we have used is node MCU, then voltage detection sensor of like 250 volt, then solar panels to test the output. 
So now we have used two major tools that is ThingSpeak. So ThingSpeak is a MATLAB based uh, visualization software, which is used for IoT. So on the IoT uh, platform, what we do is we collect all the uh, voltage sensors and we try to plot a graph. And after plotting a graph, we take all the JSON data from this uh, ThingSpeak and upload it into Grafana. So you can see here, we have a real-time data which we collected recently from an indoor uh, like uh, environment. So here uh, we could see like we have a constant data, then we have a drop. So what we do is uh, like when there is a drop for a continuous period of time, we'll set something known as an uh, alert notification. So at a certain, like, uh, uh, like now we can think that the voltage drops like to five volt uh, for some seven to eight days. So we'll get to know that the solar is not performing like at a uh, much better rate. So uh, we will send a notification to the user telling that your solar has some malfunction or there is dust buildup on it. So uh, based on that, they can clean it and they can uh, get the faults for it. Now I'll explain how our whole uh, system works. So from the solar panel, we'll use a voltage sensor to collect all the uh, voltage and we'll send it to ESP8 to see things. So connect to so for us to connect to the ThingSpeak server, we'll use something known as a channel token or a channel ID. Then we will put that channel ID in the ESP8266 code so that all the data can be sent to the particular channel. So this channel ID is like a security code this is given uh, so that we don't upload our data into someone else's and nobody can access our data on the way. Then we use a JSON exporter uh, from ThingSpeak and we upload all our data into Grafana. So this is how our circuit looks. So a solar panel, the green color thing, then a voltage sensor uh, through which the voltage is detected, and this is a node MCU. So our budget for this project, like to test uh, with a higher voltage solar panel that is like 12 volt and all, we have recently tested it with the three volt solar panels. So the total cost of our budget with the 12 volt solar panels and many other uh, devices will be 24,700. And the major outcome is like, uh, now, as many of the countries are trying to get into solar energy, it is important like to like we have to clean the solar on a daily basis. But few countries have cri water crisis or water shortage, so these devices will help in like giving a water wash uh, at a particular interval. So you'll get to know okay today uh, like for a week uh, my output has gone low because of uh, like a dust buildup or something. So I can clean that time. So even this can even counter the water shortage uh, uh, countries which want to implement solar. So that is it. Thank you from uh, thank you to all the members who have helped me complete this. Okay, your presentation was very nice. Can you explain uh, what is your application interface? Okay, How do you okay. monitor the solar panel with the which device? Yes, sir. So what we do is we build a device, which is an IoT device, and we uh, record all the output uh, data. So we'll be giving a live feed of all the output data on a server. So I'll show you okay. the uh, like real-time data which we collected. So this is the Grafana output which we got. So this was real-time. Okay. So you can okay. see for each, uh, like a minute it is showing, but it is in seconds actually. Okay. Yes, sir. So what we do is using this, uh, we'll set something known as alert points. So at okay. if the graph falls below the alert point yeah. for a period of time, then okay. we send a notification that, okay, our uh, solar panel is not performing up to its expectation. So based on okay. that, we'll get to know an error is there or something has happened to the solar. So we can rectify okay. it. And other thing is like now few countries like Qatar are implementing solar, but major thing is there is a lot of dust buildup on the solar panels, which reduce the efficiency. And there is so a water- the user here? Sir, user is uh, like, uh, it can be a big uh, company which is providing uh, solar energy to the uh, area or a normal user, like a household users. Yeah, household users, they are implementing the, they are having a solar panels. Yes, sir. Your, your application is connected with the solar panels that, that your application monitors and gives some notification to the user. Uh, like which like what kind of notification it can give? Sir, like now it will tell your solar is not performing up to its mark. Okay. Okay. Or uh, there is some problem with your solar. So we can set it a custom notification. Due to sunlight, no. Yes, no, sir. We'll do that monitoring. Also. Right? That no, no. Solar we have another monitoring. Or... Yeah, we have another uh, monitoring system which tells like based on the weather. So it correlates. If weather is bad and voltage is low, it doesn't send an alert message. If the okay, work, so then your yeah. device fully monitoring the solar panel functionality. 
Yes, sir, and the environment too, together. Okay, that uh, provision is there. Uh, that provision already is there in our uh, solar panel, existing solar panel, or you are no, sir. In, uh, incorporating are, the. Yeah, now we are only concentrating on the voltage thing. That was our first stage, which we wanted to just test it out. Okay. Now. now you are only concentrating on the voltage thing, whether yeah. it is uh, how much it is produced properly or not. Yes, sir. We wanted to. Any problem? If this problem occurred, only you, it will be conveyed to the user. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Correct. But exactly what problem is there? That one it won't you as per your current scenario, that it won't be sent to the user. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Like uh, we are applying for the funding so that we can develop the project in. Uh, okay, what kind of uh, problem statement? So what are what problem? What kind of uh, uh, problems are there in the solar panel for producing the output? Uh, it is your point of view. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I am asking what kind of uh, uh, problems you can identify. Then we are implementing fully. Okay, so what happens is we'll uh, compare the uh, like weather of the uh, area and we'll compare the solar voltage. So now by chance the weather is good and the solar voltage is too low, then we will send there is a fault in the whole system. Okay. So okay. like that. Thank we'll you. Uh, your, your presentation was nice. I move on to Balam Ramesh sir. Thank you. Do you have any questions, sir? Good presentation, sir. We can. Uh, I have no questions with me. So they can okay. move on to the next presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite um, Pallavi Asar Reddy, ma'am, from Rao Bahadur Y Mahabaleshwar Appa Engineering College, uh, presenting paper on Bluetooth charger. Uh, wait a minute, ma'am. I was sharing the screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I'm sorry for us. Mom, can you say the meeting ID? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Meeting ID, can you share? Uh, sh shall you share meeting ID? Yeah, one second. I was problem in Wi Fi in my. Is possible? Can we move on to next participant? And he, this participant can to postpone to some other time. If okay, possible. Sir. Okay. Sir. okay. Sir. I would like to invite Subhash Gulabra Rathor sir from Sukhu Pune University, presenting paper on artificial intelligence powered at whole detection mobile app on road reporting and management solution to avoid the accidents hello hello subhash sir are you present there hello So your voice is not audible. 
the voice is very feeble we aren't able to hear hello sir hello hello sir ah yes yes uh, now it's right clear now it's clear yes. yeah just you start with the presentation yes sir it's visible yes sir it's visible yeah i'm subhash rathod uh, at present i'm working at uh, savitri bai phule pune university pune uh, the idea of my proposal is ma'am uh, and sir and all are expert uh, so i decided to build the pro, uh, apps which give alert to the road transport department and uh, the road care taker i will be uh, show yes. you yeah i will excuse i will give, yes hello sir excuse me uh, subhas uh, due to time constraint can you explain short and smart what is your yes very system? small sir what very small yes yes yeah, yes yeah, yeah. very yes, short sure. continue, continue so only uh, i want to press my idea only is that if there is a, like a, a pathol on the road it should be detected and uh -huh. alert given to the road transport department and the caretaker so uh, uh, so i decided to build the uh, pro, uh, apps which will mobile apps if you are going by on a road and you can see the, uh, suppose you can observe that there is a pathol which can, which may be uh, in a risk so in that case you can take the snap of it you, you can upload in the apps and that respective alert given to the, the particular area like so what is objective to overcome the road accident alert to be given to road transport department and it's a safe journey of individual so uh, for this proposal uh, i have decided to build the android apps which can be uh, download anybody can download it from the play store once it is uh, launched in the uh, play store and uh, suppose you are, you are in, in any way right, you are running by the roads uh, so if you observe the like uh, there is a pathol you can take the snap of it and you can upload it an alert given to the respective transport department so this is the primary idea so uh, up till now uh, so design is ready right it is in the development process right now and uh, so uh, so i have faced certain parameter uh, from the pathol what is the size of the pathol and the depth of pathols uh, and from that the risk will be calculated and if it is a high risk uh, then uh, alert is given to the uh, particular uh, uh, transport department and this project is smart city project uh, so i have taken uh, this project under the smart city so how we can be make the road smart and uh, safety for individual so this is the only idea sir right so it is in the process of development and designing so if any question from your side you can i am ready to answer sir in your yeah, thank you sir module, okay in your module uh, you have to provide whether the problem is solved or not i mean yes okay if it is solved means it is the problem solved like that it is dynamically it is subjected no i mean uh, hello sir why yeah it's not clear yes. right? Uh, your application fully dynamic one, you know. So yeah, every time it is updated, mm -hmm. what is the problem is identified? It's not is available in the your application. If if it is cleared, means immediately it is changed to uh, solve the problem. Am I correct? Yes. Like that, you are going to prepare a uh, develop. Yes. Okay. So your uh, idea is very innovative, and uh, can you show your uh, 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 the financial assistance uh, quotation yeah yeah is uh, what sir uh, just just uh, can you please what is your financial assistance you are asking yeah yeah please repeat sir financial assistance finally assistance so how much yeah so, it, so up hmm. till now i have i have put it the uh, 50000 only sir uh, because uh, so i want to only develop it and for the play store i want to launch it so nothing efforts okay. that i have to take it people can download it if they are going by the roads they can take the snap of it and upload it so only my part will be there i should be okay. I, I should be build this system in a way that alert given to okay. the road transport department or nearby uh, nearby caretaker of the road so if it is so alert, only, give, only yeah. the application give a notification to the road uh, uh, transport department or the user also can make use of your application notification. Uh, Some other users also, traveler also can make use of your application or only the road department can. No, no, anybody can yeah. download it, sir. Anybody can download it. So only things I need to, what I have to do it, I have to make it aware of it, how the apps to be used. 
how to app okay. to be used that manual that how to be uploaded once like a game anybody can download it if you are going by the road they can take the snap of it they can upload in the transport application okay, okay. one more thing one more thing uh -huh. if any uh, unwanted so uh, the person misusing your application how how you identify how you restrict restricting the people sir mm, yeah if you yeah, if anybody uh, is using your application if it is not there is a not uh, any path call but the person taking a uh, snapshot or random uh, un uh, unexpected situation and they are hosting it so the the memory will be consumed more no so how you resolve so it, it means you, you want to say you meant to say yes yeah, you mean to say that okay, suppose I'm going with the road and there is no path all, somebody taken it to snap yeah. and send it to that. Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, sir, yeah, this, this is a, yeah, sir, this is a question like, right, but sir, uh, now, right, suppose I'm going with the road and there is a path all, so I want to make the people uh, aware of the path all, supposed to mm -hmm. be. I don't want to create the uh, trouble to somebody else, right? So mm -hmm. it should yeah. be, uh, to be, uh, to be used it wisely. So only thing mm -hmm. is that I should put the document in a way, you should not be pulled somebody else. You should not be fully it, right? Mm -hmm. That is the only thing. The person, anybody can download your, your application, no? Yes. The sir. person misusing your application means, okay, the snapshot is not a patchable, but they are taking a snapshot, it is a patchable. How okay, will yes, uh, whether yeah. it is patchable or not? Yes, sir. I will take your suggestion in consideration. I am trying to build it in, in what way I can make it secure. Okay, very good. Very good. Your presentation is very nice and the large uh, idea is also very negative. So you can get the individual uh, one thing, a okay. uh, location based service and where okay. actually the path is. So somebody is, yeah. Okay. Hello, sir. Thank you very much for your question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, ma'am, I'm ready to do the demonstration. Yeah, sure, ma'am. You can. Uh, so can we take the Pallavi's ma'am presentation with your due permission? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can continue. Mom came, okay, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, ma'am. Is the screen showing, ma'am? No, no. It's not yet. Uh, it was showing in my... It was showing, ma'am, on my track, on my system. Have you shared it, ma'am? Yes, sir. No. It's not visible, yeah. Not visible over here. Is there any problem? It was showing on my device. There's some problem in sharing. Sharing mode. It was showing on my device. Okay, ma'am. Kindly recheck the same. Um, uh, and once it is okay, then we can proceed on. Okay, sir. Okay. We can move on to the next one. Yes, sir. I would like to invite Vishal, sir, from Sri Krishna College of Engineering and Technology for presenting on A to Z Agree. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, just a minute, I will share my screen. Whether the screen is visible? Yes, sir. Screen is visible. 
Good afternoon. We are from the team A to Z Tech Valley, and we are here to present our project on the field of agriculture. And our product name is A to Z Agri. So this is our team: Meet Vishal, Sasi, Christina, Rati, and that's our mentor, Dr. Balakrishnan. So uh, uh, one more thing: uh, due to time constraints, uh, certain smart your problem statement solution uh, uh, in development. Process that only your time. Okay. Okay. Sure. So, uh, in the field of agriculture, for, uh, so we always know that agriculture in India used to be very fertile and uh, very widespread. But you know, lately there has been a lot of drought, and uh, farmers are protesting, and uh, farmers are taking their own lives. So, in 1919, there were around 12 million people in this agricultural workforce. But in the past few year, uh, 25 years, it's reducing to less than 2 million people. So, this clearly shows that there is labor shortage. So, one thing is that they're being exploited by the middlemen, and they're not getting the profit that they actually deserve. Another thing is that the, when the generation is going by, the younger individual are not getting motivated to come to this field of agriculture. So we noticed this problem and we decided to bring about a solution. So to understand uh, more about this problem, we took survey in our neighboring villages to understand the problems faced by the farmers. So with all this problem in mind, we came up with the solution of a robot and an app which would work together to create a seamless solution. So our robot is equipped in such a manner that would do all the field activities from planting the seeds, removing the weeds, identifying the diseases, as well as harvesting the crop. And it doesn't stop with harvesting, we also have a marketplace in our app where the farmers can directly sell to the industries without having to deal with any middle agents. And our uh, robot can be controlled both automatically and manually. And this automatic feature is very distinct because you can be in any part of this country or this world and still have complete access of the robot, which is working in your field. And no prior knowledge about agriculture is needed. So this is brought so that the youth's participation can also be increased. And as we all know that conserving resources is the need of the art, we have certain features in order to use the resources very uh, efficiently. So there are certain existing uh, solution products in the market, but it's not equivalent to our solution that is A to Z Agri. So this is a clear visual representation of how A to Z Agri is stopping the chart in different fields like analyzing, planting, harvesting, and connecting farmers, uh, while the other existing competitors do not do so. So uh, as I said, as we saw before from the table, that uh, each functions like planting the seed and all have been individually done in the past, but all these features have not been integrated into a single automated robot. And that's what we are striving to do. And uh, our robot is also completely customizable. So what it does, it, it analyzes the environmental condition like the soil type, uh, the temperature, and also it makes future predictions about the uh, crop, which will give more harvest in the um, more income and uh, during the harvest period and with this all these data together it analyzes and says the suitable crop for the farmer and we have a regional language control so this is brought so that even the uh, illiterate farmers can use our application with complete ease another two very distinct features in our uh, product is that every time before the robot goes into the field it, uh, it runs a self-diagnosis and by this it tells the precision of all the motors and all the uh, wheels and if there is even a slight abnormality it reports and uh, it's soon verified. Another thing is that each uh, seed's location is precisely calculated uh, by uh, sending radio waves through the beacons around the field to the robot. And this, uh, this is used further while identifying the diseases and all the other parts. So these are uh, methodology and the project scope. So first we want to uh, find basic features like navigation and accessibility. Then we find suitable algorithm for doing each part like seeding mechanism, weeding mechanism, and identifying the diseases. And after perfecting all these individual features, we want to integrate them into the single robot. And once the uh, structure is perfectly done, we want to give it to test to the farmers and uh, take the suggestions and uh, make certain changes in our robot and finally release to our uh, market so so with our uh, uh, with the methodology we have divided it into three goals which is uh, initially uh, in individual uh, goals individual um, processes are set and then we integrate it and uh, eventually we uh, release it onto the field so this is a business canvas model 
So our key partners are the farmers, the industries, and for the back end, we have uh, AWS and the investors. And our key activities are connecting the farmers as well as sales and marketing. Our resources are the robot and the app. And the value propositions I've already discussed. And ap uh, apart from that, we strive to give them 24-7 uh, customer support as well as guidance. And our customer relationship is based on uh, user friendliness and as well as the on-demand self-service. And our main cost structure is for production. And we're really, really focusing on the research and development to make a product better for the uh, farmers and for the customers, as well as marketing, infrastructure, and licensing. And uh, the way we get uh, our income is by selling our robot to the farmers. And for the farmers who cannot afford to buy our robot, we give them on a subscription model in a rental basis. In our app, we also sell these agricultural products like seeds and fertilizers, as well as the advertisement. So this is a rough uh, prototype budget that we have created. And uh, approximately, we need about uh, 48,000 to create this prototype. And now let's further see the app prototype. So this is the basic UI we have designed for our app. So which has the features like as we discussed earlier, which has the features like uh, the complete robot control. Uh, and then we can also uh, identify the suitable crops, which will give the higher yield also, also the high income. And uh, we have a marketplace where the farmers can directly contact the industries. So uh, if they, for example, if they have a, a yield of mango, then if they click on the mango, uh, it means, uh, we can see the number of industries those need mangoes and the fruits required. So after uh, analyzing these data, farmers can directly contact the industries to sell their yields. And this is the uh, image of our uh, working model, which, we have, which is a basic working model uh, we have developed with the materials that we have. Okay. So your application is uh, running on Amazon Web Services mobile application, am I Yes, sir. Okay, so mobile application you have to control for everything. Okay, that's better. Okay, so your robot, what kind of a functionality can do? So, uh, the robot, uh, the robot will uh, from uh, seeding to harvesting the every every works will be handled by our robot. So first of all, our robot will identify the suitable crops by analyzing the location, soil type, temperature, and humidity. After analyzing these factors, our robot will suggest the suitable crop. So if if the farmer uh, Cultivate that crop means after three months of yield, he can get more yield. Also, he can get more income. So first process, it will analyze the suitable crop. After analyzing the suitable crop, it will suggest the farmers about that crop. So once the farmer confirms the crop, uh, it will start planting those seeds. Okay. My point is, your uh, robot only functional robot functionality is identifying the suitable crop uh, achieved for that particular soil. Am I correct? No, no, uh, this is one of the process. After identifying, okay. it will manage the seeds and it will also maintain the crops. It will look for crop diseases. So it will uh, manage the entire work which is done okay. by the one crop. single um, uh, device can do all the functionality in, like that. You are, you are going to develop. Yeah, we are going to develop in the, in the way. Okay, uh, seeding also and analyzing the crop uh, uh, disease also and uh, anything else? Yeah, uh, it will maintain the crops. In which way? Sorry? In which way it maintains? Yeah, it will look for crop basis and also it will uh, analyze the growth of the crops, like if the crop is healthy or not. How also, it, say, will, uh, it will give the pesticides and fertilizers at the correct time to the crops. Okay, for that we need to, so if fertilizers want to uh, pour into the crop, means how it, is, how it will do? Yeah, we have a, a fertilizers spraying uh, mechanism in that. So once the farmer gives the uh, fertilizer to the robot, it will start spraying. Can you show the uh, functional, uh, the robot from uh, structure? How it is one single robot can do all these kind of... Uh, so, uh, this is just uh, a basic uh, example of a representation of how our arm will plant the seeds, but still we haven't uh, moved into the fertilizer part. So just a basic working model. Okay, to perform these operations, how much time it will take by the robot and by the human being? Which one is compared to which one is better? Yeah, depending on the crops, uh, the timing may vary, sir. So for some crops, uh, the planting may be uh, the planting process may be difficult. So the time uh, consumed for planting those uh, uh, crops uh, can be increased. So the overall 
time taken for the planting of crops will be increased. Sir. So it depends on the crops on what it is planting. Actually, uh, my point is for every functionality, the robo should be designed such a way. Yeah. Okay, but you are telling in single robo, it can do all the things. So that, that's why I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, actually, uh, our robot is, robot is like a customizable thing. Uh, you can mm -hmm. just uh, clearly remove the parts and uh, fix it another parts like that. So it's like a customizable robot. Okay. Go so and fix on to Balamurgan, sir. sir. Sir, any questions, sir? Yes, sir. Vishal? Yes, sir. Uh, Vishal, it's an excellent presentation. Very good work. Back work is very nice, very fine. Thank you, sir. And uh, the preparedness for your uh, for the presentation is also very, very appreciable. Thank you so much. So all uh, the, I mean the works which you have uh, reported over on the on the presentation, you all you have the back work. So in that aspect, it is it is really appreciable, and the good amount of originality of the research is also there. Yes, sir. So we have been working around uh, 1.5 years on this project. So we have been this... doing much research, and we have Very also good. Been research. So it's worth it. Yes, sir. So Thank good. You. Good. Best wishes. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank you. Can I stop the presentation? Yes, sir. So, can we move to the next presenter? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'd like to invite B. Samreen Ahmed from SRM Institute of Science and Technology, presenting paper on diabetic mellitus prediction, type classification, and probability detection using machine learning concepts and techniques. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I've shared my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, yes, ma okay. Good afternoon to one and all present here, uh, respected panel members and the other participants present in this session. I am Abhi Shamreen Ahmed. I am doing my PhD in SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Vadapalni, and my guide is Dr. Meenakshi Arya, who is uh, in MIT World Peace University, Pune. Uh, my project uh, proposal is based on diabetes mellitus prediction type classification, probability detection using machine learning concepts and techniques. Uh, diabetes mellitus, like we all know, is an autoimmune disease. Uh, so basically what an autoimmune disease means is that there is no one particular factor uh, that based on what the disease is affected. So there are a number of factors based on which a person is being affected. And uh, this disease has been increasing uh, drastically over the years. Uh, in order to overcome this problem of increasing the disease and uh, people not being aware of the seriousness of the disease is what initially inculcated me to uh, start this project. Uh, so one major reason for diabetes mellitus is the blood sugar, which is uh, there in a person. Uh, and since this is a metabolic disease, uh, the blood sugar in a person not only affects the immune system, but also it affects the nerves, eyes, kidneys, liver. And there are so many other organs that get affected one by one once the person is being affected by diabetes. So like we all know there are different types of diabetes like type 1, type 2, gestational, pre-diabetes. Uh, there are even more uh, categories of diabetes if we go further. But these are the four major uh, categories in which we uh, divide diabetes. Uh, so the testing and the treatment will be a part of the diagnosis process. Uh, so uh, the treatment for diabetes mostly involves diet, physical activity, and in certain cases, the insulin that is given physically to a person. So I'm Excuse going to... Me. Yes, sir. Uh, due to time crisis, can you tell me? Ah, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. How do you identify the diabetes using with the, what parameter you are using? How you correct it? How you analyze it? Can okay, sir. Just, uh, yes, sir. I'll uh, keep uh, that in mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so I'm going to be using machine learning. So why I'm using machine learning is because it is a part of artificial intelligence and by using algorithms, we can characterize uh, the different uh, features that is the factors that I'm going to be using. So there are different algorithms in machine learning and uh, on the screen, there are, these are the set of algorithms basically that we use in machine learning. So in uh, my uh, project, I'll be using three different types of data sets. The data set is nothing but the information 
information that I retrieve from a person and I'll be using these algorithms and I'll be featuring these algorithms uh, so that I will uh, come into the categories of prediction of diabetes, type classification of diabetes, probability of prediction and a mobile app for probability prediction. So I'll explain them one by one. So the first one is prediction. So in prediction, what happens is that first I will take my primary factors such as age, family history, glucose, blood pressure, pregnancy, cholesterol, BMI, and uh, the skin thickness value of the person. So these are my primary factors. And uh, the secondary factors will be based on varieties of tests like blood test, urine test, A1C test, etc. So based on all these factors, I will first create a data set. So once my data set is created, I will process my data form exploratory data analysis, uh, feature selection and extraction so that finally I can divide my data into training, testing and validation data. So these are the different algorithms which I have compared. Uh, so out of these algorithms, uh, I have built an architecture in such a way that the data will be given into the uh, pre-processing exploratory data analysis and uh, after division, the data will be augmented and then run into the predictive model that I'm going to be creating and finally the outcome. So this is the accuracy prediction. So once the predictive model is uh, created, uh, will be I'll be dividing it into either uh, uh, whether a person is being affected by diabetes or not. So in case they are not affected, I will ignore the data. In case they are being affected, I will go to part two. Part two is nothing but the type classification of diabetes. So like I said, diabetes uh, uh, type can be diabetes, pre-diabetes and normal. So these three categories can be given based on three tests, which is A1C test, fasting blood glucose and uh, glucose tolerance. So by using this, uh, these values, the output can be predicted as diabetes, pre-diabetes or normal. So this will fall under the type classification category. And then uh, this is uh, based on supervised learning. And uh, I can use a decision tree algorithm and do and the performance measures will be entropy, Gini index and classification. So like this, uh, once the type is classified, uh, again, uh, we can proceed to the third part. So the third part is probability. So probability as supposing a person is affected by diabetes. Uh, there are other factors that are involved, like he can further be uh, affected by some other disease, that is relative disease to diabetes, or his family members or uh, his blood relatives also can be uh, affected by diabetes. So for that, I'm going to be using a probability uh, prediction. So this probability can be uh, divided into two. One is the probability percentage of occurrence. For example, on the left hand uh, figure, uh, you can see uh, age, hereditary, BMI. Uh, for example, supposing a person has very high blood pressure and he already has a heredity in the family and his age is above 60 and he also has high glucose, the percentage at which he is probable to get the disease is higher. Likewise, on the right hand side, the figure states that supposing a person is affected by diabetes, there are other uh, uh, diseases also related to that. So supposing a person is affected and uh, slowly one by one, his uh, blood pressure is increasing over time or diabetes degree function is increasing over time, he may further be uh, affected by other diseases also. So in order to overcome that problem of uh, worsening the disease, uh, the probability percentage can be identified. So uh, this, this is based on the Napier's algorithm that is a uh, conditional probability algorithm. Uh, so in part four, this is an app development. So the app development is just a correlation of all that prediction, type classification, probability of occurrence and probability of other diseases. So this is the way in which uh, the disease, uh, the portal will appear. So in the place of age, BMI, pregnancy, etc., you will have to give in the values and press the submit button. Once you press the submit, the result will be uh, given as either positive or negative. In case it is negative, you will not have diabetes, that, that, but the probability that you might be affected will have a certain percentage. This will be based on the correlation matrix. For example, age plays an important factor factor and as an example i have given it as 20 percent so supposing the bmi is also high and the, the blood pressure is also high the percentage will naturally increase so likewise uh, to conclude i 
and uh, have a method for prediction, type classification, probability, and app development. Uh, the future scope of this is that, uh, like in my previous slide, but the first the probability percentage is there. Uh, I'm still working on how to inculcate the other diseases also in this. That is from diabetes on what based on what I have to uh, identify the other diseases. I'm still working on it. That is why I have not added it to my uh, presentation. So. This is the need for the presentation, so it will be very helpful for the healthcare industry. And uh, based on parameter tuning, the algorithm also can be modified and improved a little. The awareness among people will be higher, supposing when you give the probability uh, that uh, a person might be affected, so that in future he is a little careful. And by using the app, the analysis is easier than uh, going months together many tests. So the novelty in this is the algorithm that I'm using so far uh, is LGBM, GBM, and RF. This, these three I have chosen based on the comparison study that I have done. And these three have proved to show me results, which is above 95%. Uh, and uh, that is a kind of novelty because of my parameter tuning. And a combination of prediction, type classification, and probability have not been done uh, by many researchers uh, in as of today. So that is one of the novelty which I consider. And the development of app also will provide awareness, which I feel uh, is not into a mainstream uh, right now. So these are the three novelty uh, that uh, I'm having in my proposal. Okay, thank you, madam. Your presentation was very nice. Okay, where do you collect the data set? Uh, actually, one data, I'm using three data sets, three data sets. One data set is a public data set, like you all know, Pima Indian data set is a very common data set for diabetes. The second data set is a, a collected data set, manually collected data set, where I went around collecting it from various hospitals, uh, asking people to fill out, I distributed forms, and uh, based on their uh, inputs that I have got, that is one. And another one is from a clinic where um, I my major, the test results from the various people have been collected from a clinic. So these are the three data sets which I'm currently using for my uh, work. But I think uh, clinic, they won't use the, give you the data set I make uh, actually, sir, some uh, in some cases, when like common factors like BP, cholesterol, if, uh, the, if a person is uh, affected by diabetes, they will naturally have all their uh, values. So uh, based on all that, I created one data set where it is very similar. The attributes are the same as Pima data set. And I run it on the system. P supposing Pima data set gave me a value of 92% accuracy, okay, the data... You are uh, based upon the value you are classified and uh, based upon the value you predict in future. Uh, first one are, is prediction. One thing here. No, first. I'm, I'm asking mm. what kind of operations you are doing. Two things are only one thing. Uh, I don't get Classic. you, sir. Based upon the values, you are uh. only classified. The person is supported with the, the particular diet. That's yes. one. Uh. Uh, another thing, uh, based upon the current value, in future he may affect. Like that, they are going to predict also. Uh, actually, what three are categories are there, sir. There are three categories. One is whether a person is affected or not. That is first part. Second okay. part is if he is affected, what a uh, uh, classified like whether he is uh, highly diabetic or normal or pre-diabetic. That is the second part. And the third part is how likely he is to be affected by other diseases also in future. This is for people who are affected by diabetes. And for people who are not affected by diabetes, it is like what is the probability that they will be diabetic in future? So there are three uh, parts to this uh, project, sir. Okay, first, uh, your application, mobile application, finally you are uh, going to develop mobile application now. So yes, sir. Mobile application, uh, it is linked with your uh, system now. Uh, yes, uh, how sir. How do you uh, interlink your mobile application with your system? Because in mobile, you, you can't do all these things now because it is missing any. The huge amount of data set you want to monitor now. Uh, the data, the, the, the ones, if a person knows all the values, only he can work on the application. So because health, you cannot play with it. So once you have all the tests and only if you have the results, when you give it on the app, it will give you a result. But this app is ma majorly dependent on the model that I'm going to create. That is the first three parts. After that, only you can use the mobile app. Directly, you cannot use the mobile app. Sir. That is how I have, because anybody can give in some value. 
Um, I have actually not worked on the mobile app because my major focus is the first three parts. So once okay. the first three parts are fine, then it will give a the best accuracy. Uh, mobile app is just a supplementary. It is it is uh, a just an option. Which, uh, which language are uh, you using? Python, sir. Python. Python. Okay. So yes. okay, your uh, problem statement and uh, idea is very nice. I move on to. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Very good presentation. Yeah, yes, sir. Very good presentation, ma'am. Thank you, sir. And uh, your, your uh, uh, I mean, answers to the queries were also very, very much appropriate. Thank you, sir. Very much planned and organized. Thank you, sir. And, and I also appreciate you for having collected the real-time data sets. Thank you, sir. Because always this is like a, a mix of synthetic as well as the real-time data sets will always give near accurate results. At least yes, the optimal results. Yes, sir. But uh, generally, researchers tend to focus. I mean, uh, tend to get skewed upon uh, um, uh, the synthetic data sets for ease. But you are uh, taking the necessary steps to take up the real time data sets. Thank you, sir. Best wishes. Sir. Thank you, sir. We can move on to the next presentation. So after that, we will. Uh, I would like to uh, invite Professor Rama Samyo Mari Appan sir from VR Siddhartha Engineering College uh, presenting paper on food quality assessment and classification using NIR spectroscopy. Uh, Good afternoon, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sir, Ramu Sami sir. Am I audible, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, clear. Sir. You're audible, but your screen is yet is not visible yet, sir. Please. Hello, sir. My screen. Ah, sir, I'm audible now. So you're audible. Ah, yes, audible, audible now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But your screen ah, yes, is not visible. My screen is visible, sir. No, 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 it's not visible. Okay. Yes, I'm sharing from the browser. It is not sharing. Yes, the, the file not sharing. Actually, I am in the... Okay. Shall we move to the next presenter for the general commission? Sir, Ramasami, sir, you uh, try once in your system to share it. Shall we have it post lunch, sir, your presentation? Are you able to hear me, sir? There are some connectivity issues. I think we can move on to the next uh, the next uh, presentation.
ओके सर हाँ यस सर एक्चुअली द फाइल इस आई मीन द ब्रोसर सो इट इस नॉट सेरिंग द फाइल हाँ यस सर योर वॉइस इस क्लियर माय वॉइस आल्सो आर्डर बट ओनली द फाइल इस नॉट सेरिंग जस्ट कॉपी द फाइल ऑन योर डेस्कटॉप एंड देन शेयर इट इट इस पॉसिबल जस्ट कॉपी इट ऑन द डेस्कटॉप हाँ यस इस Ah uh, yes, file is copied, but still it is not showing the sharing screen. Ah uh, sir, so, uh, there is a small icon uh, on the lower uh, uh, desktop area. Share screen. You can click on that, and if it is in, on your desktop, just double click on that. It will start sharing itself. Hmm. Yes, actually, it is showing the uh, entire screen okay. application window like this option showing. I am clicking, but it is not selecting there. So it is started. We are able. We it is visible, sir. It is visible, sir. You can start your presentation, sir. Hi. Uh, it is. It is visible, sir. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is visible. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So, yes. Very good afternoon. Ah yes, sir. Very good afternoon for the expert members of IFRP under the seed grant scheme. My project, ah yes, my project presentation: non-destructive assessment of quality parameters of for fruits and vegetables using near infrared imaging spectroscopy. This window will be under uh, technical readiness level of five. Uh, that means the proof of concept with the project model. So. I am under the college of Siddhartha Engineering College with a collaboration with one, uh, one uh, electronics industry, electronic system private limited in Jawada. For the electronic components and uh, other guidance. Under the, Your voice is so my proposed work to develop a proof of concept model already mentioned in TRL five with a novel. Materials of near infrared hyperspectral imaging technique for the analysis of quality parameters of fruits and vegetables. So this will be uh, usable for the fruit processing industries and farmers uh, uh, who are using the fruits and the uh, other processing for uh, the inlet of the fruits to segregate the fruits based on the quality parameters. etc like this so here the main problem facing the fruit processing just at the existing methods which are using voice clear sir hello sir yes sir yes sir yes sir so my my voice hello, sir? voice is right now right now it is clear sir you may proceed but your slides are not moving We have the first slide only projected. Sir, make it slide show process. Hello, sir. Ah, uh, press F5. You make it a slide show presentation. Ah, uh, yes. Can you proceed? Proceed. Uh, okay, okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, slides not moving. Now, now, uh, are you seeing the problem? One intervention oh, display. First slide only. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First slide. First slide only. It's showing. You make it move on the. I mean the slide show. But it is not visible, sir. Oh, can I exit from slide show? One second. Do it, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Is it visible, sir? Now the. Changing slides? No, no, sir. Right now, not changing the slides. Slides are changing, sir. No, sir. You 
bottom right side there is your option sir you try it at home you can click that one sir for slide show and the uh, top top of the page is also slide show now orange color option there also you can select click or else click on a specific slide and start presenting sir okay otherwise I'll... okay look in the normal view I think there are some connectivity issues. The voice gets break. So, so your voice is breaking. Here they exist. Uh, existing problems in the processing industry. They are using the computer vision based or normal image. Processing or yeah, yeah. This technique that we seeing the seeing the same and some roughness on the surface. But texture only. It will not look into the inside matter within the flow. Ramasamy sir. Your voice is breaking much. Uh, we are not able to follow the presentation. So can you check with the audio and the connectivity and we can start fresh after lunch? Uh, yes, sir. It's after uh, post lunch we can start the session, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, that that will be better. Mm. Yes, yeah, that will be better. Sunil, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, okay, sir. I would like to announce thirty minutes of a break for a lunch. We'll be continuing after the post. Thank you, respected judges.
saya ini nyetir itu mereka nangis mati Good afternoon, everyone. Within five minutes, we are resuming the presentation. Thank you.
Oh, sir, can we start the session? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I request Professor Ramasomia sir to start the presentation. So are you present there? Professor Ramasomia sir is not present not here, ma'am. So, can you move to the next presenter, sir? Yes, 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 ma'am. Dr. T. and Anita, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'd like to invite Dr. T. and Anita, ma'am, from Vishwari, Vishwariya Techni Technological University, uh, presenting on automated system to detect and, and classify the diabetic retinopathy in retinal images using ML. Okay, thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my slides are visible. Your voice is not audible. Voice is louder and clear, ma'am. Slides are visible. I kept uh, maximum volume in my uh, laptop. Yeah. Vo voice is loud and clear, ma'am. Yeah. I will speak uh, loud. Yeah. It is loud, ma'am. It is loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. Slides are also visible. Okay. Um, I'm not using slideshow because in my okay, Zoom uh, meeting, if I use the slideshow, the slides will not move. Okay. So I'm selecting the slides and I will uh, give the presentation. Okay. So today I'm uh, okay presenting my proposal that is uh, automated system to detect and classify the diabetic retinopathy in renal, uh, retinal images using ML. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. T. N. Anita. I'm working as a professor in the department of IAC, ATA Institute of Technology. Today I'm presenting the problem statement, objectives, methodology, expenditures which is required, and outcome of uh, this proposal. The problem statement is, Actually, detection of diabetic retinopathy and classification of retina images using the machine learning. We are using the retina images to identify diabetic retinopathy and we are using the machine learning uh, okay, the tool to classify the images based on certain attributes. Main objective of this proposal is collection of data sets, choosing appropriate classification techniques, okay, enhancement of K-nearest neighbor algorithm, and methodology which is adopted in this proposal, that is pre-processing techniques we are using by collecting several uh, retina uh, images. And there is a training, okay, from that collected images, we are uh, developing a training data set and analysis we're going to carry out and classification we are using, okay. And uh, based on the classification, we can, we're can going to predict, okay, disease in what stage, whether it is a mild, okay, moderate, or there is a proliferation, or serve uh, damage will be there to the eye. All these things we're going to identify. So actually for this uh, proposal, we required uh, some testing tools as well as the mining software and uh, some cloud account we need to save the data. Uh, for that, uh, there is a certain amount which is required. And to collect the data as well as presenting our uh, proposal information to the various conferences, so we need the, the budget, uh, we estimated the budget of uh, 45,000. So this is the expenditure which is required on this proposal. Then main outcome of this one is, uh, this uh, proposal is applicable to the medical line. And uh, why we are chosen this is because diabetic retinopathy is a sudden losing of high vision and uh, it is not curable and we can't able to predict in the early stage itself. 
so that is the one important uh, thing is there so because of that reason we selected uh, this proposal here thank you any questions are there please sir uh, yes. good afternoon uh, your presentation was nice okay in you are to, you are told that uh, you know the retinopathy images you are identifying the diabetic uh, information so what technology you are, what parameter you are consider for identifying the uh, diabetic in the image in which you are identifying that is the diabetic image the technology in the sense that uh, we are using uh, uh, data mining is the one important uh, concept we are using in addition to that we are using uh, some convolution network also i am asking the what parameter in the image you consider for ah, it is a, yeah. it is classified for the diabetic or non diabetic okay the parameters what we are selecting is okay the usually the sugar levels uh, that is main important uh, the cause for uh, causing this diabetes uh sugar level will be there and with respect to the retina okay some parameters will be there okay that is uh, the causing of fundus okay in the retina and the nerve damages uh, iris uh, the pupil uh, okay affecting all these things the parameters we are selecting uh, to identify the disease in, that is in what stage so actually there is a lot of work which is going on on this topic okay. so there is a, so many people who are doing the research work so we are enhancing those work by uh, giving this kind of an uh, the proposal here so we are selecting the parameters in such a way that we should predict the disease in the early stage itself so the accuracy of the parameter selection that is on that okay the several researchers they are working and we are also okay enhancing those parameters in, in order to get the better accuracy result in the medical lab that is uh, our aim actually What set data set you are using for your application? What set? What data set you are going to use? What data set? Data set. Which data set you are using for this proposal? Ah, uh, category. Is there a category in the sense that data set? The data set. Data set. Okay. Yes. So uh, the, we are using uh, some data, live data set. Okay. Live data set is nothing but we are visiting the so many hospitals. even though there is a existing uh, the websites okay urls will be available but we are visiting the, so many the government sector hospitals will be there so many cases uh, every day the the doctors who are treating on what parameters what is the, how the patients were coming and what stage uh, the uh, the effect will be there on their eyes all these parameters we are collecting and based on that which parameter is very close to identify the this kind of an disease that we are assessing by using a uh, one particular classification technique sir okay well, thank you uh, very nice sir uh, okay i move to uh, balam sir sir any question sir hi yes, sir uh, professor uh, anita ma'am ah, very sir. nice presentation and uh, i mean uh, the project is also much beneficial to the society because my my father in law is suffering from a very similar type of uh, problem he is a diabetic person and uh, off late he has developed this uh, retino problem uh, mm -hmm. this uh, uh, i mean a mild blindness yes uh, so the the problem the solution what you have given over here is uh, promising uh, in order to add on to this i have few other points i'll just uh, pen it out uh, speak it out uh, uh, here we are actually detecting uh, i mean we are predicting or uh, detecting first of all detecting the a uh, possibility of uh, occurrence of the retinal uh, um, thing blindness uh, uh, using the image processing techniques on the yes. other hand can we uh, develop something like um, we have this uh, calorie calorific value and all indicator we we have some uh, device like uh, like a patch we are, we are able to um, wear it like, like a strap watch we are able to wear it so what is the amount of calories we have burnt what is the amount of calories we need to take all these things are being recorded such things already exist so can we um, go for developing something like uh, so this person is um, is diabetic it is in, the, in this particular stage probably uh, uh, level 2 or level level 1 or something like that so he is permissible to take this much amount of uh, sugar per day for this per, with this grams or something if it is going if it is uh, exceeding that particular threshold probably an alert should be given to the person that uh, um, there is the, the i mean the probability there's not there's no surety but there's a probability that he may 
um, develop this diabetic retinopathy. This is on the other way of looking at the same problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a several uh, ways also we are uh, okay thinking about to alert the patient as well as the uh, giving the alertness to the doctors also because uh, okay the diabetic in India there is eighty percent of the people who are suffering from the diabetic. It is a major disease in Indian uh, Asian country. So actually the food habits also one of the main cause for this diabetic. So because of this also the people who are not aware about what kind of an a the food intake they have to take usually for the diabetic I'm saying so they are not aware about the, those things yes. because of that reason the in the rural sector we can able to see this kind of an a blindness is more because yeah. people are not educated they are uh, not aware about their uh, disease okay uh, the uh, disease okay how it going to damage their vital cells okay vital organs these are the information they are not knowing much even even urban people also ma'am my own dad though yeah. he is having a diabetic he will always uh, prefer uh, yeah. uh, chocolates yeah, but yeah, at yeah. least we can have one meter like one threshold that uh, if it is going to exceed this uh, probably one particular one toffee with a low sugar he can have for one week if it is if he has that particular thing then we can uh, uh, we can have a grip on uh, or uh, uh, at least we can reduce the risk of this particular disease. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Suppose if we don't have any tracking system, uh, of, of course, it is very difficult to track uh, um, parents, elder people, uh, what they are eating, other things. Suppose if this is there, then probably it will aid uh, this, this particular process. It, will aid. it is just more, more or like, like a proactive approach than a reactive approach. Just yes, to sir. add on to what you have said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, here okay. it is a difficult in the medical line also. The doctors also they can't yes. able to give the much of the uh, the awareness caution for the patient also. Yes. So because yes. the people are not going to believe the things. Okay, they are very tempted. Okay, uh, towards <laughs> all the things. Yes. Okay. So that's why very awareness of one of the best thing is uh, to uh, develop self discipline. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's why we are uh, working out on this. Okay. Our idea plan is to give the best out of best for the societal people. On that line, we are working on these things. Yeah, definitely, it is going to be a boon for many of the uh, elder people. People who are yeah. suffering from diabetes are not much educated. Most most of them, my dad and mom are educated, but my uh, father-in-law is not educated. So uh, they will not be able to decode it. Like uh, they will not be able to. Um, um, they don't know what is diabetes itself. In, in such a case, uh, all these things, all these findings, research findings, all these uh, things will actually aid uh, a, a great help for uh, preventing the such diseases. Good initiative. So we going to focus more on. Okay, we going to take your input also. So we going to take uh, work uh, more on this. Uh, okay, the proposal. Okay, okay best wishes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. We can move on to the next presentation. Yes, sir. I would like to invite uh, Tapasun uh, Sultana, ma'am, from Vishweshwarya Technological University, presenting an efficient and real-time schematic image retrieval for bone fracture and X-ray image analysis using machine learning approach. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, okay. I'm just uh, seeing my uh, file. Uh, share. Okay, uh, it's opening, ma'am. File is opening. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, am I audible to all? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Uh, yes, uh, my something. slides are visible. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is okay. visible, ma'am. Okay. You can. Take. Shall I start my presentation? Yes, ma'am, you can. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my research work. My myself, Tabasun Nahe. I'm from VTU University, uh, KBN Engineering College, Kalburgi. Uh, I would like to uh, start my presentation on an efficient and real-time semantic image retrieval for bone fracture and X-ray image analysis using machine learning approach under the guidance of Dr. Asma Parvin. 
uh, these are the agenda of my work. Uh, so I start with the uh, abstract. Here, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning approach has uh, uh, recently gained popularity in the field of healthcare system. The idea of my work is to develop an ideal model which help in automatically detecting X-ray bone fracture and as well as the, the different types of bone fractures, such as uh, there are six types of bone fractures that are uh, such, such as traverse, oblique, spiral, and comminuted, uh, displays and green stick, which are difficult to predict. And then finally, implementing a clinical decision support system, which is uh, a second opinion for, uh, which help in uh, giving the opinion for medical experts or doctors. Uh, as, the, as you know, radiologists uh, interpret thousands of images, X-ray radiographs, which is a time-consuming process that leads to fatigue and tiredness. The, that results in false, uh, false diagnosis or uh, occurrence of fractures. And there is a poor recovery of the fractures. So in case of emergency where the patient suffering from a traumatic fracture, uh, uh, especially in the rural, rural areas where there is the unavailability or non-availability of the resources. So this uh, CAD system or a uh, computer uh, diagnostic system, uh, disease system act as a primary treatment to avoid the uh, inessential medical procedures. So current uh, uh, CAD system are specialized for automatic detection and uh, uh, they are diagnosing diseases. And, uh, 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 and finally, they are decreasing the rate of false diagnosis, which, uh, which, is, uh, which help to assist the medical practice, practitioner with a second opinion. And these uh, CAD systems are uh, uh, uses a pad, uh, software tool that is uh, to recognize the images, detect the, uh, based on the uh, recognizing images, they, they will detect the bone fracture in the digitally X-ray images, which helps in decreasing the processing time and increasing the accuracy of disease diagnosis in digital images. So as you, as you know, uh, that bone fracture is a common problem, which occurs due to the uh, falling accident and uh, uh, or uh, or the bone fracture may occur due to the high pressure uh, applied on the bones, uh, or uh, or it is a it occurs in the condition where osteoporosis uh, the patient suffer from osteoporosis disease. Uh, osteoporosis disease is a weakening of bone, uh, especially well, to the. Then we can skip on this introduction part. Okay. Let's move on to the work part. Okay, sir. It'll be much more uh, interesting. So I have gone to uh, I have gone through some papers, sir. Uh, they have also applied the machine learning approach, but they have uh, concentrated uh, on only a specific region, only a single region, and uh, they have taken less images, less X-ray radiographs as compared to the proposed system. Uh, I will be explaining further. Mm, uh, the drawback, the limitation of the previous work is that they have con concentrated on the single region uh, for detection of uh, uh, fracture bone as well as normal bone. Uh, and they have not detected different types of fractures. So this uh, the problem is uh, the unavailability of the efficient uh, automated detection, uh, the, making uh, it uneasy for the medical personnel or doctors to interpret, classify, and effectively diagnose and prop and to give the proper treatment to the uh, patient. So this uh, automated detection of fracture from X-ray images can assist the doctor to suggest and help the accuracy, help in uh, increasing the accuracy of the diagnosis. So to overcome the above problem, because uh, these uh, Bone fracture, uh, if it occurs for the patient, they are unable to move. And uh, they, uh, there will be a lot of uh, pain and displeasure to the patient. So the, uh, to overcome that problem, this uh, uh, combination of image processing as well as the machine learning algorithm, uh, they are able to uh, accurately classify the normal bone as well as the fractured bone. And they, uh, and they are able to uh, uh, identify the type of fracture using the uh, real-time X-ray images, as well as the uh, uh, whatever the previously, previously stored X-ray images. So the- treatment, uh, What parameter you are using to identify this one is the uh, factor image, uh, factor phone, and this one is not factor phone in the image, X-ray image. Okay, sir, I will show, sir. Okay. Uh, so the pra parameters are uh, the, the confusion matrix, uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, identifying the uh, fracture and non-fracture bone based on the true positive and false positive rate. Uh, the uh, parameters are accuracy, precision, recall, and F measure, sir. F this is for uh, measure, measuring the accuracy. 
I must yeah. parameter which is used to identify to train the machine. This one is the uh, factor yes. phone. This one is the non-factor phone. So for yes. that, which parameter we are using? Because uh, X-ray image, you know, all are the white color the image only. So in the between, which part is the factor? How it is identified? The machine how can uh, uh, learn? For so, that, which parameter we are using? Sir, uh, I have. Uh, I'm using the different types of classifiers, sir. Hmm. Classifier is technology. I'm asking in the image which part is. See, if you take your one image, one okay. uh, uh, normal image and a uh, fractured image. Okay. So you, from that, uh, you have to identify the, in the some uh, uh, black color scratch or the black color line is there. When you just uh, break on uh, fractured image, like that, we can say or manually. So same like that, how you train the uh, system. So which one is, this one is fractured only, this one is not fractured. For that image point of view, which parameter you are considered? So, uh... Sir, I am using these uh, convolutional neural networks. Mm -hmm. These are our technology. Is... Uh, for that input, for this uh, convolutional neural network, also you are, you are using. For that, you are giving in, input. No. So, in, for that input, which point you are using? Sir, uh, uh, image I'm... point of view. Image from image point of view, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, first, uh, uh, whatever the x ray, real x ray image is there, no, sir. Uh, that will be converted into the grayscale image. Mm -hmm, okay. Then, uh, uh, then it may uh, the the noise uh, will be removed uh, in the pre-processing stage. Mm -hmm, okay, okay. Uh, sir, then after that uh, it may undergo segmentation because uh, mm -hmm. that should be divided bone this, part this and the part flesh. This part only I am asking. This part only. Yes, How sir. you are identifying this one is the fractured one and this one is yes. non-fractured one. For that only you clearly explain that part. You yes. explain clearly. Yes, sir. I was uh, going step by step, sir. So, so after that uh, segmentation uh, after mm -hmm. division. Then uh, we are applying the uh, hog transform algorithm, sir, for getting the, the features. Breaking. Yes, sir. The voice is breaking. Okay, can I continue? Yes, sir. Uh, now, sir, it is clear, now, now, sir. Now it is okay. We'll continue. Okay, sir. So here uh, again, after segmenting the X-ray images, uh, bone and as well as the flesh part, it undergoes the hog transform algorithm, sir, for getting the feature points. Okay. Uh, then it uh, then uh, uh, again uh, uh, it may fed to the four classifiers, sir. Sir, I am using the four classifier such as uh, uh, KNN, SVM, ANN, and CNN. But uh, I am considering the convolutional neural network because uh, it is most favor favorable for image uh, recognizing the image pattern, sir. Okay. Then uh, uh, based on the sigmoid function, it may detect the normal as well as fractured bones, sir. And uh, and uh, the type of fracture, sir. Okay. So then which data the, I am uh, collecting the data from the hospitals, uh, uh, hospital as well as uh, I'm, uh, I am. I have uh, uh, collected the standard data sets also. Sir. So I have mixed the X-ray radiograph from the hospital real images as well as the standard uh, images. Sir. Okay. So this is the, after anything, any interface you are using in uh, uh, application interface you are using. The mobile application or web application, any kind of uh, desktop application, any kind of application you are going to develop? Sir, I, I just want to uh, det, uh, implement a software tool. Uh, uh, that tool can be injected directly to the uh, X ray machine, sir. Uh, oh. th that yet to be implemented, sir. CAD system. That is the CAD system, sir. Okay, you are directly in, in implement on the X ray system. That while taking the X ray image itself, it will show it will be yes, image yes, or yes, not sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, if you have any literature review for that, it is possible. How much it is possible and how much it is the complexity? Sir, uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, how much your concept? No, you are implementing yes, the concept yes, sir. application to the X ray image. No, yes, sir. No, so that, yes, sir. how much it is possibility, feasibility is there, and what yes, are the complexity may be there? Do you have any literature review about that? Sir, uh... Complexity, complexity means, uh, sir, yeah, feasibility uh, means uh, yeah. X-rays are most uh, common and uh, oldest technique, sir, as they are cheaper, sir. And uh, in, uh, incorporating to the machine means where it will, the application will take place and uh, how it will be identified. Then it will be so, it will be a fractured image and it will be a non fractured image. In which way, in X-ray image means uh, they are taken after that, some do some processing, after that only it will be converted to X-ray image. Yes, sir. Okay, that how it will be possible to incorporate to the image, the machine itself. That's my answer. 
Uh, is it possible? Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's why I'm asking. Sir, uh, nowadays, uh, nowadays, sir, uh, all people are uh, uh, health conscious, sir. No, sir. I'm asking. X-ray image. You are you. You know very well. Sir. I saw. You saw idea about how X-ray image machines are working. Yes, sir. Where how you are incorporating your application? Where which place in which way? That is the. Sir. Uh, Sir, I just uh, I will say on my own words, sir. Okay, okay, no problem. Sir, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, I'm just uh, I, I am in a process to implement, sir. Okay. Uh, it will be helpful for health uh, healthcare industry, healthcare okay. field, sir. Okay. Uh, Still, uh, my how much, it, uh, how much it is efficient to compare to uh, any any idea you give up? Ex ex yes, sir. In the existing application, what are the problem other than that you are? Yes. Uh, Yes, sir. I will show, sir. I will show, sir. Sir, uh, in this uh, paper, sir, uh, in the previous uh, work, uh, they have only concentrated on the uh, uh, that uh, only leg region, sir. Okay. Bone fracture may occur in a whole whole part of the body, sir. Okay. Like uh, wrist, uh, hand, uh, ankle, okay. like so. I uh, in further my future work, it uh, it I will concentrate more than uh, more than one region, sir. And okay. right now I am concentrating on leg and hand, sir. Okay. So I want to concentrate on ankle and wrist surgery, wrist fracture, sir. Because there are... the fracture is come in the image, no? It's yes, sir. It fracture yes, means sir. if it is a fracture means everywhere it is a common one. It is not only for leg or hand. So everywhere the bone is there means in the yes, means it is a, a fracture means the fracture size is it is look like this much means everywhere it is there means it is a you can identify, no? Uh, yes. How it is only for uh, leg or only for hand? It is for common for everywhere in the whole body. No? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so it is my point. Okay, you have to start with. Yes, sir. I want to the bottom one. Okay, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Very good presentation, ma'am. Uh, uh, just go to that uh, uh, flow chart. Flow charts. Okay. Flow chart. This one, sir, classification. Uh, 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 this, uh, okay, this one here. Classification, you have given so many algorithms over here. Yes, sir. See, it is like CNN is a deep, uh, you see, it is a deep learning technique. Yes, sir. It's specifically used for uh, uh, for uh, images and other images. Uh, again, you have KNN and machine. So, in which part of your uh, architectural flow you are actually applying this CNN and this KNN and other things? And why you have mentioned ANN as a specific uh, thing over there? The, uh, sir, sir uh, I have uh, whatever feature points I got, uh, sir, uh, that have applied to different classifiers, sir. But uh, based on the accuracy, I am considering the con convolutional neural network. Sir. Uh, no, no, no. What I am asking is that uh, you, ha you have you you have done you you have in this you have mentioned as classification by KNN, SVM, ANN, CNN, ANN and right? CNN. Yes, sir. Ah. So in which part? So KNN is a machine learning algorithm. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Is, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and in the case of CNN, it is a pure deep learning. Which deep part learning. of your ah? Uh, uh, which part of your architectural flow you are actually applying these different types of algorithms, or else what you are actually doing with so many algorithms? Are you testing with all the algorithms and finding out which one will be best for? I mean, optimal yeah, for this thing, yes, sir. and then choosing. Okay. Yes, sir. Separately, I am testing, sir. Separately, yeah. all images are uh, separately going to the different classifiers, sir. Then, based on okay. the accuracy, sir, I am uh, okay. uh, deciding which uh, classifier is uh, better uh, perform in performance. My suggestion is that if you, uh, I mean, theoretically, if you are able to know more about these uh, classification algorithms, it is easily for us to even predict what, which is uh, CNN is best. Yes, sir. But CNN is best. You have come to a conclusion after uh, performing certain uh, yes, experiments. Sir. Yes, sir. But uh, when you know, the, I mean, um, the subject matter. If you are able to uh, know about what what is KNN and how it works and other types of uh, uh, deep learning and machine learning algorithms, you will be able to predict. Like, without going for an experiment, you will be able to predict by yourself that probably this will be the most uh, uh, not optimal. This will be the most. Uh, um, um, uh, suitable uh, uh, thing over here. Uh, 
sir uh, actually so sir hmm. actually sir in the previous work uh, they have uh, only used uh, two two types of classifier hmm. sir so i hmm. thought uh, to uh, gain the accuracy uh, uh, to increase the accuracy if i uh, increase the classifier if individually if i per perform the images on no, the no, classifier in the earlier work in your base paper there may be two types of classifier that yes. may be the best two Yes, sir. Best one and best two. Best Suppose two. if you are going to take the other two, these two will will always be at the lagging. Though if you are adding two algorithms and you are comparing, yes. the output of this particular thing will always result. Results are always same, irrespective yes. of who is performing it. Suppose if yes. I am performing and I suppose if I am the author of the best paper and I give yes. two algorithms and these yes. two algorithms are the best, best one and two. Yes, sir. Huh? Suppose if you are uh, comparing these two means the same results only you will also get. But the thing uh, it is a known fact that these two algorithms are going to underperform. Yes, okay. yes, sir. Yes. So that that literature survey that is what I am coming to the, uh, again and again coming to the same point. This literature survey and back to that particular subject. If you are able to be much stronger, uh, uh, your work will be much more easier. That is the thing. Yes. It's not like that you are not worked. You have worked well, but uh, you can actually uh, do smart work. Okay, sir. Okay. Less, sir. less than the time, less than the effort, still yes, uh, produce very good sir. results. I have uh, concentrated on accuracy, sir. Uh, they have uh, somewhat uh, less accuracy, so I thought uh, uh, the idea, sir. Okay, okay, ma'am. Best wishes. Okay, ma'am. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Sir, uh, uh, sir. In conclusion part, I just want to conclude by saying that uh, thank you to everyone. Uh, and uh, by by uh, by some code i am uh, just ending my presentation love your brown and protect your future thanks thank you good good okay ma'am we shall move on to the next presentation by yes sir i would like to uh, invite k sai kiran ma'am from vishweshwarya technological university presenting on hand gest Gesture recognition and voice conversation for deaf and deaf and dumb. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, is my uh, screen visible? Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I am K Sai Kiran. So I am currently pursuing my M Tech uh, uh, in R Y M Engineering College, Balari. So under the guidance of Dr. An. Narada, ma'am, I am uh, doing this particular project, which is like hand gesture recognition and voice conversation for deaf and dumb. So uh, this is the agenda I have for this particular presentation. So initially, I would like to talk about my problem statement. Then I would like to uh, talk about the existing solutions which are present available and what are the drawbacks and how I am tackling those drawbacks and implementing a new solution and how I am trying to deploy this particular uh, um, solution so that people can actually use it. and we'll discuss about the impact and then yeah i can take uh, questions in between as well so uh, moving on so what is the problem statement i'm trying to tackle so basically deaf is a uh, disability when a person is unable to hear and dumb is a disability when a person is not able to speak or can uh, or talk properly so when a person is having this kind of disability they use something called as a sign language which is like the baseline interface for them to communicate with each other so in this particular example so waving hand in this particular finger position is called as hello so basically this particular uh, expression or sign language is only only known by them general public doesn't have this uh, knowledge so they they face a challenge in communicating with them so especially in the times of distress so if a particular disabled person is in distress and they want to communicate something it's not it's not very feasible and one might say like okay they can they might know english or any regional language and they can take pen and paper and write the write down the issue or converse in that way but this day and age people are uh, not carrying pen and paper much often so like we are moving to digital era so there should be a digital solution where uh, we wish we should be able to do it in a much more easy and smoother way so in the right hand side i have i am depicting like there are like 26 english character uh, letters so this uh, indicate the like we can see like how complex each uh, signature is so it is very challenging for an ordinary person to know all of these even if they learn all of these uh, to use them in an efficient manner the way like in the uh, the other people use it's very difficult 
and also like uh, the disabled people like they 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 uh, hesitate to uh, start the conversation as well because they have that feeling like okay this guy or this guy cannot understand what i'm trying to say so there is this gap between them so it basically this project what i'm trying to do is like trying to bridge that gap so that um, there is very less friction between the communication of all the people so there is already existing solution so one of such solution is uh, based on harris algorithm so basically this algorithm does um, the image recognition and uh, and then produces the result but then these results are not accurate accurate or is still error prone and there is also a solution which uses matlab but what it does is it uses the lip, lip sync so that um, what a person is talking based on the movement of the lip it tries to guess what is the word it, the person is trying to say but also there is a chance that the words can be interpreted wrongly there also exists some other solution but they are not well tested and they are kept proprietary so in the real life situations it cannot be used without licensing and so on so basically uh, what i am suggesting like what my idea is like i will be using ai ml uh, technology concepts here so basically in particular i will be using cnn technique to try train the data set of the all the available hand gestures so and then uh, when a new hand gesture comes a new in the sense like in real life any hand gesture comes uh, that will be used by this model to uh, check like which which among them will fit the best and then we will be able to know like what is that person trying to communicate and also i am trying to keep my implementation open source so that it can be uh, made available easily accessible and usable uh, by me, by all the public and also i am trying to accomplish this uh, with devices which have internet and which does not have internet so basically how i am going to implement is the first step is i want to register the users so for that i am using firebase technology which is a google product so for firebase i'll be using the authentication feature so that i can onboard the users easily using their uh, google login and then they, i'm using firebase analytics so that i can perform i can get a feedback like how the application is performing so uh, so for the registration and analytics i'll be using firebase and then uh, one requisite is like all the devices where this application will be uh, it's assume assume that it will have a camera so from the device camera i'll be able to take the feed like the video feed and eliminate the noise and i'll be processing it frame by frame so once the noise is eliminated it will be given to the algorithm to predict which gesture is it so once the gesture is uh, known uh, then i'll be generating the corresponding sound so basically the out the input basically will be uh, a stream of gestures and the output is going to be basically a stream of text and corresponding sound along with it so this is how i am planning to uh, implement and deploy it so this is uh, a situation where we have a thin client so basically the thin client uh, is like uh, it will basically take the video feed and frame by frame it will start sending it to the cloud so basically in the cloud we have an uh, load balancer which distributes the load uh, across all the available web servers so basically they, i am trying to construct two particular endpoints one is for users so basically this endpoint will Uh, be used for authentication and the analytics section another one is for frames so as the frame comes in uh, uh, it will be uh, measured with the database and based on the algorithm it will predict what is the uh, gesture and it will be returned back to the interface so in this particular situation i am trying to uh, have high availability so i am using docker technology to have each web server as a container and try to scale them to three particular instances and even the database is scaled up to two instances so the main key part which i am trying to do is uh, to have a single unified interface so i am trying to use a technology called ionic so using which i'll be writing the user interface in uh, uh, in web technologies basically html css and typescript and that technology will allow me to generate apk which can be installed in android and ios applications so it will uh, produce a bindings which can be used in mobile applications as well also since it's written in native web uh, technologies it can be deployed as web application also so and the deployment happens in the cloud so basically all the back end related things can reside in a cloud environment so this is in a scenario when we want a thin client but the drawback of this thin client is it uses a lot of bandwidth but in some situations uh, there when there is a lot of bandwidth available this particular deployment i'll be doing but in the situations where like uh, we are in a remote village and um, the bandwidth is not so great so in that case i'm i'll be hosting the web server within the application 
uh, instead of having a public IP, it will be having some private IP, and then there will be a small data set running along with it. But the accuracy of that one might not be as good as something which is deployed in the cloud, because in the cloud, you have a vast amount of data and we can store a lot of data. But I'm trying to target both the things, but the code base will be remaining the same. It's just the deployment pattern, which will be varying both in thin client and the thick client. So uh, the uh, impact is basically like, uh, it is estimated that there are around 80 million people which have this disability. And basically using this technology or this particular software, nobody has to learn anything because the people with disability, they already know the sign language. They need not do anything extra. And the general public need not learn the sign language. This uh, software will become the interface and it will uh, uh, make the uh, communication between the two easy. So it will reduce the friction and they'll feel more comfortable in sharing the problems. And also the software will scale easily because it is all uh, microservice architecture based. And since it will be deployed on the cloud, based on the users growing, um, the payment also increases. It's not like I'm paying a lot of uh, money just for the server cost. So yeah, this is like uh, the cost which I have estimated by discussing with my mentor. So basically the front end uh, basically will involve generating the iOS and Android application and also a website and the backend will include all the uh, cloud co cloud side like backend uh, REST APIs development and the interaction with the database, all those things. And AWS service cost is basically the um, uh, AWS account cost. And then I will be training uh, and collecting the data that cost. So this is the cost I have estimated. Mm, yeah. Uh, if, okay, are there so any questions? Are, okay, your presentation was very nice. And uh, in your uh, article diagram, you mentioned one mobile uh, mobile application, mobile phone, and uh, one uh, desktop. Okay. So considering the user interface, so how user user is the uh, mobile uh, they are user having mobile phone. They are, yeah, they they will using the your application. Am I correct? Yes, sir. So user can okay. use either mobile phone or a laptop or tablet. In okay. So, so in that, what is the your application interface? How they will uh, use your application? In which way? Yes, sir. So in case of a mobile, so based on the platform. So for example, a mobile can be an Android device. In that particular okay. case, they will have an Android application. So basically, okay. I'm using one technology called Ionic. So when I write okay. code in it once, it will be generating different wrappers. So it will generate an APK and it will generate an iOS compatible uh, files. So those files can be distributed among the users and those platforms can install that and interact with the web server. Uh, I'm asking in the interface, user interface, the uh, end user, how we see, visualize your application. Yeah. Okay, okay. Gesture, no? So how they will see and from that what they will get benefit. Okay, okay, sir. Um, so basically, uh, it will be like, uh, there will be, so as, let's assume a scenario like one person who is having the disability is having a mobile and the person okay. who is not having a disability is on a laptop or a desktop, right? So okay. when, uh, so, so when a person is trying to communicate, like uh, he will okay. show gestures on the screen. So the okay. mobile's web camera will be taking the feed frame by frame and sending it okay. to the cloud. So the cloud okay. will uh, predict what is the gesture uh, done and it will return back to the user interface. So it will come back to the same interface. Sir. So um, Okay, so the information that uh, hand gesture is going to server, server what uh, what processing will take place and uh, what result it will, it will generate. Okay, sir. so first step is to authenticate if the user is a valid onboarded user and it's not a fraudulent request. So that validation will happen. Second one is like, uh, then it will uh, compare using the algorithm like CNN algorithm. It will- No, no, no. I'm asking only output. What is your output? After sending the hand uh, okay. to the server, what server it will produce the output? What kind of output so, it will Okay, will okay, okay, sir. So server will return back two things. One is uh, text, uh, which will be basically like, A means what is a symbol, B means what is symbol. So basically that text will be returned back along with a parameter. So the user interface also has uh, some sound files. So basically it will return the key like, uh, okay, A in the sense, this is the file name, you play that sound. So those two parameters will be returned. Both basically those two will be the text. 
Okay, who are all the users of uh, you are told it is communicating to people, okay, due to the help of your application. How another people can uh, communicate? If the one person wants to communicate with another person, means how they will do communication using your application? Yes, sir. So uh, first, at uh, first, like uh, in my current level, what I'm trying to assume is like both the person are in the same using the same interface. I mean the same device, but it can be easily extended as in like one person can be in one particular uh, location and another person can be in another one. Uh, so okay. I need to extend my backend, but still it is a feasible one. Yeah. But currently I'm trying to target like uh, only one device exists. Uh, both the people are using the same device at the same time. Same device, how they can use it? Can you clear this in the remote? Uh, two people are there and one mobile device is there. Yes, sir. So uh, the device... person with disability will give the gesture. So when the output mm -hmm. comes in, he shows it back to the other one. Okay, for two people are same device, means nearby, no. So they are no, the transmitter signal uh, meaning. Then directly they can communicate. No, why they want to use your interface? Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, so the one person knows the hand gesture, the other person does not know the hand gesture. Okay. Oh, in this scenario, yeah, because, communicate. Yes, sir, because it is very difficult to know mm -hmm. all the things because th this is just a subset what I'm displaying here, but there mm -hmm. are some, uh, some signals which can even mm -hmm. describe a word. For example, in my, this slide, this is basically an hello. So okay. this, this represents an entire word, but these things represent a single characters. So okay. uh, a person who is very new, uh, I mean, he will have a lot of learning curve to understand and use. Sure, it so the real time example scenario can uh, uh, can be so which scenario the two people, one people with the uh, disability people, another one people, normal people. So in which scenario they, it will be helpful to your application? Real time scenario. Okay. Uh, can you please repeat your question, sir? So there will be two uh, people. In, uh, in a real time, real time concept, I am the disabled person, you are the normal person. We two people are one place. Okay, in which okay. way it will be helpful? So for example, uh, the disabled person is in some kind of a distress, like he want to communicate something immediately. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there is no easy way for him uh, to say like what he wants to say. Uh, he will be trying to give some expressions and sign language. But in case mm. if I am not educated enough to know what mm, it actually okay. means, or even if I know. So if you give the uh, disabled person, disability person give some hand texture, and that will be processed by the server, and the written text conduct will be displayed on the your mobile screen, am I correct? Yes, sir, yeah. By that, the normal people can read that content, and uh, how he will give the input, and uh, the uh, disability people can understand. For that, any provision you are given? Uh, okay, yes, sir. You are talking about the reverse path, like yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, the another thing is like um, like I have made another assumption also. Like they are able to understand what uh, the other person is trying to say. Only the mm -hmm. one-way communication is not done properly because mm -hmm. uh, my 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 whole problem statement is like how does a disabled person communicate with the general public? But um, okay. I uh, can you please give one like any scenario like uh, when this situation can happen? So, so I can extend this one uh, so that the reverse also is possible. Okay, example uh, on the disabled people are there in a, I want to know where is the one particular shop. Like that is he is asking. Okay. The disabled people. So he gives some, it is available their particular location or some other information. So that information he is telling to words. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. The normal people give some voice based input, uh, input given to the disabled people. So, but he can't uh, understand, no? So, for that, how yes, you, you are giving the interface like uh, it will be understandable by the disabled people. So, for that, yes, what you do means uh, some con uh, for that uh, NLP you have to use, natural language processing you have to use, and by that you have to match with a, a particular symbol, and that symbol should be displayed on the screen. By that, the disabled people can understand like it. You have to implement that is your part. Okay, okay, sir. Got it. Sir. Okay. So basically, uh -huh. if I have to rephrase like what you're saying is like uh, the input, like the reverse communication from a normal person to disabled will be like, he will just uh, mm -hmm. speak it out what he wants to say. Mm -hmm. And using mm -hmm. NLP, I'll be generating the hand gesture so that the hand okay. gesture will be shown to that disabled person and they understand. Okay. 
Sure, sir. Okay, sir. I'll extend. Okay, your, uh, your uh, idea is very innovative and uh, very useful one for the current scenario. So, very good. You do very well. Okay. Okay, I will move sure, on to okay. Paul Murugan, sir. Okay, sir. So, Sai Kiran. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, very good presentation. Uh, before going on to questions, I just want to know why you cho chose this problem of uh, serving deaf and dumb people. Um, so basically, there is a personal life incident which happened to me. Um, so basically, I, I was uh, once in an NGO and I was trying to, uh, I mean, I was part of a community and we were trying to distribute some food to the people there. But there was one per person trying to communicate something to me and I couldn't understand like what he's trying to say. Uh, because uh, for, he was too fluent in sign language and I couldn't understand anything. And then I thought like, okay, given the knowledge I have, I, I should be able to implement a translator so that I can understand like what he's trying to say. But as the sir said, like, I never thought like, will he be able to understand me? So yeah, yeah. so that was my motivation. We generally underestimate people. <laughs> that is our problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, proceed. Yes, sir. So basically, uh, I, I thought like, okay, if I am not able to understand them, so there will be a lot of people who will be like me and they'll be having, even if they want to help, uh, they will not be able to effectively communicate uh, with their disabled people. So in those lines, I was thinking and given like I know uh, some of the tech stack uh, and since I'm doing um, like masters in uh, AI and ML, so I thought I will apply these learnings and uh, develop the application. So that is why we call them as uh, differently abled people rather than labeling them as uh, disabled. We yes, generally sir. label them as uh, differently abled because they have, we will not be able to, uh, uh, what to say, uh, predict what, uh, what are all the, uh, uh, the, I mean, the postures they are having in, in the, exactly. on the other side. The presentation was clear um, and uh, the, the Block diagram, all these things. You are you are M Tech uh, student or PhD student? Uh, no, sir, M Tech student. M Tech student. So what I suggest is that you can add some more of the research uh, uh, concepts. I mean, uh, uh, more of the novelty of the research, and you can extend this particular thing in your even in your PhD. Suppose if you if you are uh, in a plan to do your PhD, my suggestion is to include this. Uh, this is a very good problem, but the research. Uh, 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 factor uh, in that particular thing, it, it is a bit less because when you consider this particular thing itself, it is like um, uh, uh, I mean, assembling all the things and keeping it to form a system. But as far as what is the research over there, what is the originality over there, it is a bit lagging. So I suggest you to it, a bit work upon uh, it for this particular project as well as for your uh, future uh, research uh, voyage. Best wishes. Okay. Okay, okay. So yeah, actually, that is in my mind sir, to pursue PhD as well. I'll take uh, these points into consideration, sir, both the NLP part and this part. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the feedback. Best wishes. We can move on to the next presentation. Yes, sir. I would like to invite Ragya MB from Vishweshwarya Technological University presenting paper on driver drowsiness detection and accident prevention. Ragna, ma'am, are you there? Ragna, ma'am, is not there here, ma'am. So we can move on to the next presentation. Okay, okay. I would like to invite Neha Bharat, ma'am, from Vishweshwarya Technological University, presenting on portable assistive de uh, device for them and them. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. One minute, I will share my screen. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Neha Bharat. Uh, I am pursuing a Bachelor of Engineering at Pass Institute of Technology and Management, Shumoga. Uh, our uh, project is a team project, and my teammates are Disha, Malikajun, and Tejaswini. 
Today we are going to present about our project problem statement and result analysis. So why this project means uh, communication between deaf mute and normal person have always been a challenging task. So this research aims to develop a sign to standard language translator. We are using glove means uh, we are using gloves to uh, interact with normal person between deaf and dumb so it it's an iot project we are programmed some uh, c programming and develop this project next next we'll continue by my teammate thank you your voice is feeble ma it is very feeble Problem statement. Uh, yeah. Our project problem statement is to the major issue for the deaf and dumb community is difficult to express their views uh, to local peoples, and these peoples to communicate via sign language, so that uh, the majority of the peoples are not familiar with sign language and they are not willing to learn this language. It makes a communication gap between the hearing and impaired people and the other people. So the sign language recognition system is to convert the standard language to text and voice, so that it avoids. Logging to two devices. Can you switch up only one device? I think you are switching on logging on two devices. I think you are to switch up one one device. Then only this voice is clear. I was echoing is there. So why is not audible? Ma'am, are you there? And now we can proceed. Hello. Ah, uh, yeah, ma'am, you can proceed with the presentation. Okay, ma'am. Ah, uh, next the objective statement for this project. Ah, uh, 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 first one, the we are convert, we are uh, divide for the objectives in two major parts. Uh, one is the to design for the first we have to design our project device uh, for as, hand assistive system for the deaf and dumb people. It will convert the hand sign into the text format, and uh, uh, this text will be displayed on the LCD display. So we. Uh, so the normal people can understanding what they are saying uh, saying and the second part is to next we will implementing the sign language to the audible voice so that uh, can uh, somebody are not uh, uh, not to, uh, understanding they what they are displaying in english. they are in the english language so they cannot understanding what they are so that uh, we can use the speaker uh, he can understanding what they are saying uh, next is the result analysis uh, of the objective one and two. This is the result analysis for the objective one. Uh, we are first we have to uh, just add, uh, just we have to develop the hand assist uh, device. We can see this in diagram, and we have tested for the four uh, by using a two flex sensor. We got uh, totally having a four uh, output uh, in the form of zeros and ones. And uh, next objective is the uh, uh, we are developing for this adding with speaker, and uh, in that uh, we are only uh, speaking with A B C values only for the characteristics characters. And uh, third objective we are using the frequently used hand uh, gestures so that uh, they uh, totally we have sixteen gestures uh, so we can communicate with uh, by uh, by frequently used and most free, uh, most usable uh, sentence. And uh, next, I will start with the uh, demo demonstration. Next, we'll continue by our teammate Malik Arjun. Hello, sir. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Malik Arjun. So I'll be showing the uh, basic demo of this the project. How we are going to work on it. Uh,
Uh, I just need a second, sir. I'll be owning my camera. Yes, yes, please. Uh, can you please stop sharing your screen, uh, Tejshin? Sir, my, uh, sir uh, my name, uh, there is an account name called Mallikarjun. Can you see the video, sir? Uh, we are uh, able to see a video in a very short, uh, like uh, in a thumbnail uh, kind of thing. Yes, sir, uh, in case if I present my screen, then uh, uh, like... Uh, oh, yes, yes, it will be there in the full screen mode, I think so. I'll try it, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, now, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so as my yeah. team has explained you complete my project. So this is my hand gloves. So right now I'm wearing my hand gloves. So there are some flex sensor attached to it. So there are three flex sensor right now I have attached to it. So the working of the flex sensor is that it will read the resistance value and then we'll convert our resistance value to the binary value. So I'll show how my project will be working right now. So I uh, right now I'm uh, using my three fingers. So that is thumb, uh, index and the middle finger. So now, right now, if it's straight right now, so the in the LCD display, uh, it uh, I have defined it as by like I can you can see uh, as for the demo purpose I as uh, index uh, like uh, thumb value as I uh, then index value as M and the middle finger is as O. So uh, but the, uh, the all the three are straight, so it is one sir. So the value we are given is by. So right now I'll be changing one finger to this. So right now it's nearby cleaning. So right now I have bent my thumb. Uh, I have bent my thumb finger and the both the finger are straight right now. And later on, I'll now I'll be bend one more finger. And the output is uh, how are you? And later on, uh, same way, uh, I'll be changing the uh, gesture right now. Okay, any extra uh, demo you wish to say? Uh, like you're saying, I nearby clinic, uh, like uh, as gesture is made, I assume I lost my wallet. Okay, very nice. So, uh -huh. can we go for the uh, uh, anything you want to show, or this is the thing? Uh, like uh, this is the basic demo we are, we are doing right now, sir. Okay, very nice, very nice. Can we uh -huh. go for question questionnaire? Okay, sir. Like, uh, okay, let's go to question and answer, sir. Instead, uh, like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, I'll stop so my video. Where, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you have you develop your uh, concept is very, very nice and innovative idea, yes, and uh, you developed also some useful demo. Okay? Yes, sir. Good demo you are doing. Oh. So my question is, you, you, the person need to wear that gloves, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, he, he should be wearing the gloves because. Uh, uh, do from the gloves only the input so can you explain the gloves to uh, back the, now you are using uh, direct wire connection to the, the display yes okay. yes so sir. after in the real world uh, how the different variable people wearing the gloves and how it will be interact with the end device okay. what, what is your uh, opinion or what is your plan yes sir uh, right now i'll be explaining 
how the projects work on so the mm-hmm. hand gloves yeah. which will be providing in the few, uh, will be attached with an arduino id board so arduino mm-hmm. the, the reason why we are using arduino id is like we are making the project as a budget friendly so mm-hmm. if you are intend implementing machine learning or some other techniques other python techniques then we need to use raspberry pi so as of now due to the chip shortage in the uh, indian uh, market so the cost of the raspberry pi is around 7000 or 8000 rupees so instead of that we can use the arduino id board which is 600 rupees so which makes the project budget friendly so the uh, input taken from the flex sensor the sensor which will be atta- attached to the fingers uh, will be go- going to the arduino id board arduino id board mm-hmm. where we'll be uh, reading the resistance and then converting the resistance to binary value for example if the resi- uh, the resistance yeah yeah okay so uh, what is the uh, uh, communication device communication device like your display you are showing the display no on yes, device yes, sir. Okay. like that uh, he, uh, are you going to use so mobile device or some other device no no so sir i will be using lcd display and also a speaker so uh, speaker okay. further uh, within two days that be... lcd display where it will be available in your application now uh, after completing your application after completing uh, we can make it as wireless or can we, with the wired only we can make it an another box and uh, uh, give a lo- long wire and you can show it to the person sir so okay ah, okay and and as me real time uh, scenario how they will use it your application so uh, close they can wear in the hand okay yes, after that where you are plan to place your display screen uh my uh, plan is to displace my display on the uh, hand gloves is it on the back side of the hand gloves so when the oh, person okay. is uh, facing the friends uh, opposite to the uh, person so the okay. lcd will be correctly visible to him so in that mm-hmm. position i'll be placing my lcd and with that lcd i'll be connecting a speaker so the speaker reason why i am connecting the speaker is i'll be con- uh, in the speaker format i'll be giving the regional language input uh, regional language okay. input so when he saying uh, how are you in kannada for example so we are doing in kannada language hey gidya so then the speaker will be uh, spelled out hey gidya means he uh, if the person is, can uh, uh, able to understand english and he'll be reading the lcd display in case if the person is not able to uh, understand english then he can understand but he is listening to kannada sir okay so it is very nice uh, answer and uh, the vice versa is possible in uh, as per your application Uh, no sir uh, the other person uh, other person can speak uh, so you can also you uh, can use it by his mobile display but uh, okay. there is no vice versa communication here sir only the one side person the who is uh, deaf people who now as per as of now you are doing only one way communication for person you are developing yes sir i am developing for the single deaf people uh, where he can communicate with other people sir okay Okay. Uh, so, so the this project will be like budget friendly so we are doing in the mass uh, mass implementation so then mm-hmm. uh, so right now uh, for single project is up my cost is around 3500 so total arduino id sensor everything so if you are buying in the bulk and doing everything so it may cost around 2000 to 2500 sir the cost of the project okay. will be so the uh, so the project cost so my present project cost is 3500 sir that much only you are asking yeah but that one we are making it as i mentioned we are making budget friendly so if we are buying the bulk components in the bulk and then start implementing then it will be around 2500 so normal user can uh, afford this sir any yeah, uh, the one more thing uh, how the uh, power storage the power thing you are going to handle power uh, uh, there is two ways sir one is uh, you can use a batteries 9 voltage battery which cost around 20 rupees so you can be okay. changing uh, some uh, after uh, it get exhausted or if the person is having a power bank then we will be able to directly connect the power bank then so the, because the power bank capacity is around 10000 mah so it will be long long lasting sir are you providing any provision uh, when whenever the requirement is there that time with the fun your device will be working after that we can switch up the our device like that yes, sir we can switch up the our as soon as the uh, in like case that you are you are going to construct am i correct yes sir yes sir so in case okay. if easily so we are doing is easily can plug out the power supply so that it will be mm-hmm. switched off so because uh, power supply I, as i mentioned is uh, 20 rupees 9 voltage battery so you can regular be changing after like uh, the it may uh, from 9 voltage battery it will be working for around 4 days as a minimum for 4 to 5 days uh, so that he'll be okay. cha- he can be cha- changing or if you not then uh, if he is having a mobile phone then he'll be having a power bank in case some uh, in some case so then he can directly connect the power bank to it, sir. okay so uh, 
okay so uh, uh, idea is very nice and uh, vice versa option also you have to think over it okay yes sir okay. Okay. okay so i move on to balam yes sir. okay sir so mallika arjun yes sir ah uh, very good presentation very good demo yes sir uh, so you have taken efforts to show the uh, demo properly along with the presentation it was good yes sir uh, but, uh, the uh, i mean uh, from the demo i understand that uh, the the hand uh, it is it actually a hand posture right not gesture yes sir hand posture so for uh, the reason and why posture you... only yes sir so okay from hand posture to text yes sir text and audio so, uh, further sir ah that's what i'm asking why, why if, if, if you are able to come uh, to the level of uh, uh, converting it to text mm -hmm. then converting into an audio is very easy speech yes, yes sir it will be it will be much more comfortable for a person to communicate for a, for a normal person to to come for a deaf dumb person to complicate communicate with the uh, normal person yes sir so the uh, because the same thing you have uh, mentioned in the, the presentation also oh yes sir uh, so that i think uh, you can uh, uh, take it as a future work uh, yes sir uh, future, uh, like uh, right now i have got the output for the speaker also but uh, i i could not integrate today for today for to okay okay within two days i'll be integrating it so uh, in the speech format we will not be doing in the english we'll be doing in the kannada so it, it will be both regional language and uh, standard english language sir. Oh. Yes, sir. okay best wishes to malli arjun and team hi sir thank you so much okay. okay move on to the next presentation now. yes sir I would like to invite Millie Sadan uh, from Coimbatore Institute of uh, Technology uh, presenting Universal Document Interface. Madam, I am Ram Sir. My my slot was given in morning. Yes, sir. Uh, when my slot? I am waiting. Okay, sir. So shall we go with the presentation with Ram Sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ram Sir, sir, you can present it. Ah, yes. Can I share, sir? No. Yes. Yeah, yes, 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 my title of project non destructive assessment of quality parameters for fruits and vegetables using near infrared imaging spectroscopy so are you able to see the full screen sir now my ppt yes sir yes sir ah yes, yes. so i am belonging to vr siddhartha engineering college vijayawada industry collaboratory electronics system private limited who are doing some sensor related and iot related projects and image processing like the project they are having some interface designs for this project that as per we collaborate with that so uh, as we mentioned the title the aim of this project is to develop proof of concept is technology readiness level 5 with a prototype model with a methodology of near infrared hyperspectral imaging technique for the analysis of quality parameters of fruits and vegetables the application of this project will be for fruit processing industries and farmers for assessing the quality of the fruits and vegetables without destructing i think so here what problem available under the fruit processing industries and farmers about the fruit quality in the existing methods say example like image processing or infrared method visual image methods are used but that are having low spectral resolution that means the very simple camera image only taken like a web camera or like mobile camera or maybe high resolution camera that will be having normal spectral image not a hyperspectral image so that it has low resolution low accuracy Uh, or in other words it cannot penetrate that infrared or visible rays cannot penetrate inside the fruit or vegetable so it cannot reveal the attributes inside the fruits or vegetable there is a problem available in the, the current system so avoid such problem the proposed methodology will be using near infrared along with the spectral imaging so that in a particular image there will be so many slices of images that is called hyperspectral in addition to single uh, single slice of image there will be sequence of images will be revealing the the uh, interior features of fruit so that is the main aspect of this uh, proposed solution which will be analyzed deep inside the fruit that is called deep spectroscopy using near infrared along with the spectral imaging so this reveal the quality parameters of fruit without uh, detecting whether it's a back side or front side or side view or interior 
or dark side, whatever it is, will reveal the features. So this technique, near infrared hyperspectral imaging, will be working in the uh, optical range, near infrared range, 900 nanometer to 1,700 nanometer. In this particular project, we select because one particular device we selected that uh, has a specification range in this NIR. So along with this NIR spectroscopy and apply with the commemorative, that means the, the normal image processing method, pre-processing and uh, then uh, background elimination, then classification, calibration, then where all these uh, sequence of steps will be following after NIR uh, sensing method. So following this method, this will be useful to identify the spectral and scattering signatures of deep fruit inside the fruits and vegetables. That's a uh, novelty of this project. And the main objective this is this to make a proof of concept and product model for the quality parameters of uh, fruits and vegetable uh, using near infrared as well as hyperspectral imaging processing. Then the methodology will be using, one stage will be using near infrared imaging, then second stage will be using hyperspectral imaging through methods. Then apply, after applying this uh, near infrared and hyperspectral imaging, that classification will be using the machine learning. As usual, many projects are using nowadays, like AI based method, machine learning based like that. So there, one of the familiar algorithm uh, support vector machine will be used for classifying that uh, uh, fruits, whether it is a qualitative fruit or non qualitative fruit, like that. In addition to that, it will reveal the quality parameters so that to decide the quality class we are for the fruit processing, which class, uh, class A, class B, class C, like that, they will classify the fruits for processing. So, their classification also will be helpful based on this method. So, the main significance of this project. Uh, this will be used in near infrared spectroscopy along with the HP spectral. The main feature of this technique is revealing the hidden feature inside or dark nature or backside of the fruit or in the bulk quantity of fruits, the uh, inlet of the fruit processing that all can be uh, processed at a time, maybe 1000 fruit at a time like that. But nowadays the processing will be done uh, in single, a single fruit at a time. One fruit at a time only can process through a camera like that. Because of the interior feature you can pass through, in your it can it can, uh, it can reveal the feature under the mass number of uh, fruits at a time. So that is one of the significant merit for the fruit process industry. And novelty already I mentioned what different from the problems available in the current fruit processing industry, which is using visual image processing or a year technique that will having many shortcomings. Well, only how the human eye can identify the same kind of technique only visual image processing, VS technique. Or IR also can will only the surface kind of things, what can be revealed at the, uh, by seeing our human eye like that extent only, not to the interior end. So these technique only available in the market. So apart from that, this is the technique we are using, NIR based hyperspectral image analysis for revealing the interior features in the fruit. So this is a novelty and this uh, methodology to be used in this project. And what technology profile began this NIR HSI? Why chosen this technique NIR HSI? Uh, as mentioned there, the basic feature is it is uh, because of this wavelength range, 652,650 nanometer, uh, it can pass through the interior of fruit as well as at a single image, single image it will reveal this uh, spectral, spectral image as shown in the graph over here. Uh, like this, the main advantage of hyperspectral image, hyperspectral image means each slide will be having one particular wavelength. Okay, say example, one graph if you see that XY, there are some uh, say example, some 256 pixels or 1000 per pixel in one, one image slice. Like this, for each of the wavelength, this slice will be taken. Um, say example, 1000 per slices. So, as number of image slices increases, the resolution of our processing will be increasing. That's the advantage of hyperspectral image. So, here in the graph, it is showing 3, 6, 9, some 10 slices are there. Like this, maybe n number of slices can be increased at narrow bands, like 10 to 20 nanometer. Every 10 to 20 nanometer, one one uh, uh, image slice so that the uh, final accuracy of your uh, analysis will be increasing. But what happens the spectral image is normal spectral image. That means you know, directly we are taking some uh, visible uh, images or uh, spectral images, multi-spectral images. There will be only RGB, three valence only will be there. Okay, red, green, blue. This is a normal uh, image view there. But here in addition to RGB, number of valence slices will be taken. Uh, with a band of 10 to 20, 20 nanometer in between. So, how GR uh, that wavelength aligned with the, with the, with the, between some 
different wavelengths same way uh, with the bandwidth of 10 to 20 nanometer between this uh, slices we are arranging so many slices n number of slices based on the device and application uh, okay so say exam if you need very high accuracy then number of slices can be increased so there is a technology behind this nr hsi uh, the normal spectroscopy without hsi only one slice will be there so along with x and y number of pixel may be 256 or 1024 like that that only de uh, decide the accuracy of the system but here the number of slices will be increasing the lambda direction so that means this will be revealing a three dimensional view x y normal image view uh, x into y normal x uh, image view and along with that lambda lambda is another scale so in that three dimensional view we will get there is an advantage of combining near infrared as well as hyperspectral image the, that wavelength Corresponding to the reflectance given in the right hand side graph, which is called spectral signature analysis. So, this way only the fruit uh, quality analysis will be analyzed with respect to different wavelength, which wavelength is absorbed, which wavelength is reflected. So, where the defect inside, whether no defect, these are based on the particular wavelength, reflectance, or absorbance, or transmittance. So, like that, that's the basic technology behind this. This is a technology profile. Why you chosen this technique here? And finally, after completing this project, I come to bring out what are deliverable will be as I mentioned the TRL5 proof of concept with the prototype model one uh, for the fruit analysis for the quality parameters then research paper related to this uh, some index journals from the outcome of this uh, project some results or uh, some prototype model that will be shown in the SEA journal publication along with the results then the same design and concept will be given, uh, filed for patent this is another one then, if possible, it can be transferred to product commercialization based on the market analysis uh, with respect to the existing uh, technology available in the fruit process industry. That is the last one. So, based on this, there are several applications. One is uh, directly mentioned that fruit process industry uh, for revealing the quality parameters. Other than that, the normal use like a fruit markets and vegetable market, there also it can be used to segregate the fruits, different classes of fruits, different class of vegetables like that that also another application the normal commercial use in the in the, in the fruit market like that and uh, based on the market analysis it can be sustainable only for the prototype model or proof of concept it may take some higher cost but once this is acceptable through commercial product from prototype to the final product then it can be mass produced and it can be launched even with the mobile app interface then it will be more cheaper than the very bulky model only for fruit processing industry it may be go some higher cost because of mass uh, mass kind of uh, investigation uh, diagnosis needed like that but for a, a small shop or small market or small home use like that it can be interface with the mobile app like that so that kind of sustainability can be afforded through home or some small shop like based on the requirement it can be sustainable for the future applications so as i mentioned the objective that actually divided into several activities in the time plan so the first objective is to present the near infrared spectroscopy first part second part is to analyze the quality parameters in the fruit okay, okay. so the third part is analyzing with respect to hyperspectral images third part so these three objectives map to the corresponding activities uh, that means like a methodology action methodology action first part the nr spectroscopy second uh, second action is prototype modeling third one nr image processing pre processing then next one nr spectral analysis so after completing spectral analysis, uh, the third activity is mapped to hyperspectral imaging, hyperspectral imaging analysis, then finally reporting. So these are the activities mapped from act, uh, activity to activities that are called uh, methodology steps. So these are mapped to the work plan month one to like that up to 12 months cycle. So in the final deliverable or milestone also written over the last column. Uh, in the first cycle, from the first activity, the prototype model of NR spectroscopy alone will be done. Second part of milestone will be quality assessment parameters, what parameters we are revealing from the NR cycle, that will be done. Here, some kind of accuracy, the more accurate result will be from the third stage of activity with the help of NR combined with hyperspectral imaging. This is the third stage of uh, a project. So, three stages of milestones, maybe like a four months, four months like that, the milestone will be achieved. This is objective activities and corresponding deliverable map with reference to time plan. Sir, what is your financial assistance? Sir? Final? Financial assistance. What is your financial assistance? Sir? 
final but assistance financial assistance a financial assistance actually this uh, 1.8 lakhs sir i'll, I'll come to this uh-huh. later slide sir but there are some okay. some part of sense are available in the institution itself okay and some particular device available in the electronics that we only we collaborate with the electronics so what not available only i quoted in the budget sir okay so uh, some working so yes, you are mentioning that we can using ir scanner we can analyze can be improved and by that we can identify whether it is mm-hmm. defectable or any damages are there or not we can classify it so yes, sir. Yes, sir. so the scanner is scanning the image okay so mm-hmm. after that where it is processed process processing in the system uh, suppose if you are using the uh, fruit processing industry this should be a like a laptop or system okay so you are telling it will be useful for the normal uh, shopkeeper also yes sir For there it will there, be yes sir in such cases we incorporating the there can they can use uh, ir scanner but the processing for that what they will going to use ah for processing that only this for small shop like that all they cannot process in the laptop so there we provide bluetooth based uh, mobile app interface so this device having bluetooth interface that can be adapted through mobile app that mobile app will process that and will be using mobile app or directly that scanner ah yes sir yes, uh, this will be applicable for some small shops markets like that In that place it can be used I am asking your uh, your full implementation will be in mobile app or scanner and the laptop communication. Uh, for fruit processing industry, the first model will be uh, using the NIA scanner along with the laptop processing, like computer okay. processing. That okay. will be the complete product model. But okay. uh, the prototype model will be with the using NIA scanner, same sensing uh, processing will be with the mobile mobile app okay. Okay. for a s- simple portable model. Okay, so small. two things are you are plan to go into prepare. Yes, sir. But uh, here, but here actually because of uh, small budget, it will be done along with the okay. system process, computer process. Okay. And one more thing, so uh-huh. uh, to identify this is a damaged image, a damaged food. What uh-huh. are the uh, parameter you are consider for identifying this one is classified, this one is damaged, and this one is non damaged? Uh, there are usually from the literature we identified some parameters. Say example, dry matter. How much dry matter in the food? Say example in the apple or orange like that. The dry matter if you decide whether the fruit is damaged or not. Uh, like like that uh, the sol sol uh, soluble sol this some uh, some parameter I didn't get I show you. So okay. this parameter already we consider here. Uh, see total soluble solids, dry matter, mm-hmm. sugar content. These all the main attribute distinguish the quality fruit and non quality fruits. Okay, this will be uh, scanned by the uh, IR scanner. Yes, sir. This whatever the whatever the parameter you have mentioned now, no. Uh. This can be uh, scanned by AI scanner. Is it possible? Uh, the normal normal imaging ca- camera cannot reveal these parameters, sir. So I'll show okay. you the device. This device only called as a, a Texas Instrument NIA scan nano device. And the image okay. was shown here. This particular device only can able to reveal these parameters. Ah, uh, that's what I'm asking. This device can scan all the parameters. What you are telling. Ah yes sir uh, yes in uh, here we we taken some parameter only here but it can reveal so many parameter what they specified in the Texas manual. Okay. Ah uh, so yes sir. From uh, from that how you identify uh, in what uh, processing you are going to technology what uh, other than you are going to use to identify this is the damage and then damage. What mm-hmm. sensor you are using or what manner you are identify it is a damage it, it only scans key and then measures the value. So yes, from sir. that how you how you identify any threshold value standard threshold value is that or who uh, will decide that threshold value? Ah uh, yes sir. Suppose some particular defect that defect will absorb the NIR wavelength at a particular range of eight ninety nanometer. So in that eight eight ninety nanometer some dip is there in the graph. You see the graph right side. The dip indicates some defect uh, that correspond to the particular wavelength. That wavelength is absorbed by the fruit, not reflected. So like that, we can identify which particular defect is there. At what wavelength it was absorbed? What wavelength is uh, it is reflected? That you can see from the reflectance graph. That's called diffused reflectance spectra here. So like that, for every slice, we'll get a different graph. So that the more in depth, that means the fruit can be sliced into some thousand slices. All thousand slices, what kind of defect or no defect that can be revealed? Say example, simple apple, you can slice. Some ten or twenty slices. So each of the slices we can reveal the defect. 
without cutting that how many slices should be it is uh, uh, user defined or pre defined user defined sir user defined based on the application okay. we can uh, define the number of slices okay if you need a higher accuracy you have to increase the number of slices more so if the need... slice will be uh, from the outer body or uh, you are told the higher channel will uh, sensing all the part of the food inside I mean. inside not outer inside 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 inside, uh, inside, inside, inside. Uh, Yes, sir. In each slice, uh, each uh, slice means the whole food. It will be we mention by uh, ten slice means only mm. it will be whole food will be divided into ten slice and uh, each uh, slice will be considered a particular part of the food. Am I correct? Yes, sir. In in any of the slice, if any of the slice if the wavelength dips in a particular range, then there is a defect. Okay. Ah, okay. Yes, okay. One more thing. And one more thing, you are, while you are presenting. You you mention uh, bulk amount of foods also can be possible to uh, uh, detect in the scan in the single scan. Is it yes, possible? Sir. Yes, yes, sir. How it will be classified in the uh, uh, thousands of or uh, hundred of foods at that? Yes, sir. Which for uh, food is uh, detectable? How you identify? Ah, uh, so in the in the cases, these fruits will be considered as slices. Say, example, there are thousand fruits are there. These thousand fruits will be considered as slices. Okay. Uh, again within the within the slices again slice within slices like that so okay. again dimension will be increasing in that case okay and one more thing one food uh. is small one food is big how uh. you classify one food is completed in particular slice and one food is next food is come ah uh, yes sir for that actually this nr scan is no, no need actually we are done with the experiment of texas instrument another one sensor uh, called this tsc Well, they have one, one particular sensor there. I, I mentioned here. Uh, one color sensor is there. That sensor okay. can uh, identify the color and size okay. without use of this sensor. That also will be supplement to the sensor which identify okay. the size and color. Okay. Ah, uh, suppose some apple is uh, different color. That also can mm-hmm. be segregated in the surface itself, not to see inside. Okay. Okay. Another aspect to, to class be based on the size of apple or anything like that. So that is another kind of sensor. Do you, do you have any uh, any ex- uh, experimental output for this kind of uh, sensors for uh, different uh, the bulk amount of food classify? Ah yes sir. Uh, actually, the preliminary experiment what we did was one spot fun uh, device A seven two six three for the color sensor and size sensor we used. That result only I displayed here. You can uh, see that here, sir. Mm. Yes, this is one uh, one experiment we done with the uh, Texas instrument uh, in one small sensor, which reveals uh, quality parameters approximately, not accurately. Approximately level of evaluation done one level one level of experiment, and another experiment. So in the classification of the size size and different fruits, if you mix up with the different fruits, it will segregate uh, by fruit nature or the size of the fruit. That also done with the Texas instrument TC is two thirty. This two experiment we did uh, like a preliminary experiment, but only thing this can uh, do only approximate level of segregation, not accurate, and even the quality parameter oh. also only approximate level of uh, parameters revealed, not accurate value. Uh, to avoid this problems only we are going for the NIA scan from uh, Texas instrument. This device, this device okay. we are going. Okay. So your presentation was very nice, and uh, you can enhance a lot of features in that uh, your application. I just uh, wishes I move on to follow more things. Can you show the budget and other requirements, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. Your budget is also. Oh, and uh, also, follow more things. You can continue the query. Okay, yeah, yeah. Very good presentation, sir. Ramasamy, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, yes. I am also keen to look into the budget. Hmm. And uh, and this concept uh, actually I published in a UOP uh, book chapter also this year. Okay. And this is a model done for classification of fruit and uh, some approximation of the parameters during the first level. The budget will be the total budget like this, sir. But here some of the equipment available with this, uh, say some uh, NAR interfacing board available here, and some sensor like infrared visual sensor that all available. Some interfacing board available with the electronics. Uh, Vijay Wada there. So that equipment sale I not shown in the uh, IFRB grant. So mainly the NAR scan device from Texas we need for that and some uh, fabricing cost 
some, some sensor interface that cost alone i included and, uh, and here as far as this budget split up i shown 1 lakh sir from this so here uh, what funding possible from that can be provided sir the remaining all will take it from our institute and uh, the electronics our industry collaborator in which uh, you you we told that this work you have published is as a book uh, chapter no ah uh, yes sir this is the review of different methods based on the accuracy and other thing uh, like a review of different methods uh, up to now comparing with the nir and uh, ip spectral we made a, like a review of methods in uh, iop book chapter okay 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 yes sir okay there is one book uh, which i edited uh, two years back it was released uh, human communication technology a very similar concept uh, or oh, one particular chapter by another i am not sure of who's the author okay so sir possibly you can have a um, um, i mean of as a literature uh, uh, um, reference you can also take, take uh, the, the, the report that particular book human communication technology violent uh, uh, uh for what application sir uh, i mean very similar to that of what you have uh, mentioned over here okay okay sir uh, i'll refer sir uh, yeah uh, not only that particular thing multiple things are uh, are there uh, very similar to the above what you have proposed uh -huh. not not the same similar okay okay uh -huh. so it will give you a, like a competitive uh, what are the other people are actually doing are there any uh, takeaways you can actually take this my just my input because uh, looking yeah. at the presentation i it, it is like uh, many i just like looking into many of the chapters of my book mm -hmm. Okay. it reminded me so it uh, as, a, as an input i just give it uh, you can refer to the human communication technology okay okay sir hmm. a book by, published by wiley 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 oh. yeah yeah i published uh, i am the editor i am we published it in uh, in uh, two years back two years 2020. back 2020, 2020. okay yeah. i'll refer sir hmm. okay okay sir okay sir best wishes uh, okay so this, this is the complete experimental setup this is and uh, this is the flow of the method uh, here okay. Uh, okay. Uh, here only the yeah, uh, yeah. nr device is there okay this device this, this device only that uh, texas instrument device so with that other device to interface and program it it can be on the computer or it can be with the mobile app okay yes sir i will just give the particular book a uh, link in the chat box also you can have mm. a look at it i will i will i will put it in the chat box so that you can have a reference you can this is reference okay sir. best wishes ah uh, thanks okay ma'am you can move on to the next presentation yes sir think the neha ma'am um, ne मिली सर I would like to invite Millie Sadar, ma'am. Ma'am, are you present there? Ma'am, uh, Millie Sadar, ma'am is not present here, and I think so. You can move on to the next presentation. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. I would like to invite Shing Mukam Kim, ma'am, from Delhi Technological University, presenting chatbot inquiry for PG accommodation. Ma'am, are you there? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. And my screen is uh, yeah. visible, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, thank you for giving uh, me the uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, talk about our proposal for seed funding scheme. Um, 
uh, before that, I would like to introduce about myself and uh, my teammates. I am a, a full-time PhD scholar from Delhi Technological University. I have an experience of uh, teaching BTEC students as part of my teaching assistantship. And also I have uh, peer-reviewed three SCIE index uh, IEEE journals. And uh, I have presented three international conferences, out of which two got published by IEEE and Springer Nature, Singapore. Uh, currently, my supervisor is in uh, California, so due to time zone constraints, she's not able to be here with us today. So on behalf of my teammates, I'll be presenting uh, our proposed work. Uh, the contents for my presentation today are introduction, the motivation uh, behind why we are working on this uh, topic, membership group you. problem statement, the research objectives, the work distribution, methodology, the project stages, and the project goals and RT. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I have invited uh, Dylan, the founder of uh, Genius Voice, to uh, give a little bit introduction about their company uh, and their uh, objectives. Um, so uh, I'll just be playing a short clip about what your company is doing. The video volume is not there, ma'am. Yeah, there is some problem, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Got you, stuck you, can, somewhere. you can just paraphrase what he has said. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, basically, he is saying that they are uh, um, working on a chatbot application and uh, they are, uh, yeah, uh, just a minute. I don't know about this. Yeah, so they are uh, uh, welcoming every researchers who would like to uh, work on your uh, uh, on a chatbot application as part of their research. That's what he was saying. And uh, I, I can't move ahead right now. There is uh, some kind of uh, technical issue here. I don't know. What is it? And uh, one more thing, ma'am. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Yes. So can you, due to time constraints, can you explain with uh, short and smart what is your problem statement? What is your solution? Yes, sir, yes sir. I'm going ahead. Uh, just a minute. I can't. What do I do? Just won't stop. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Uh, but I don't know what is wrong with my system right now. Um, it got hanged and I yeah, can't. Uh, ma'am, basically your PowerPoint presentation has been hacked. Yeah. End the presentation and start again. All right, I'll do that. I hope it's visible. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Just a minute, ma'am. It's loading. Now 
Even can you move on to the next question? All right. Just give me one minute. I'll try. If I can't do it within one minute, sir, then you can call someone. And... Okay, so I'll just be sharing it this way. I hope yeah. it's visible. Okay, so the motivation, yeah, yeah the motivation behind our work is that uh, every year we see students and young professionals migrating to different cities or countries, uh, either for a job placement or for universities. And some of them don't like to stay, you know, uh, in hostels, um, maybe, uh, or some of them don't like to uh, stay in a rented place, right? And uh, um, so some of the struggles um, uh, with uh, them are, uh, uh, could be due to limited number of hostel seats or uh, that they prefer independent lifestyle or different due to different preferences like food, food quality, hygiene, hygiene, security, and uh, more homely days, right? So, uh, um, taking all these points uh, into consideration, we have come up with this uh, problem statement to build an interface that can assist the person with finding a suitable PG uh, based on their preferences by making use of the NLP technique and technologies. Uh, all right, so uh, the benefiters would be not just the students and uh, the professionals, but it will also benefit the PG owners uh, by helping them marketize their business. And um, yeah, coming on to the next point, um, uh, so, uh, our research object objective is to test the accuracy of our proposed model and to see what impact it has on our application and to find the parameters that can affect the uh, model's accuracy. Uh, uh, I won't be giving in detail about uh, what uh, we are doing right now, uh, uh, but uh, if you want to, uh, 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 see about the different types of uh, ch uh, chatbot implementation. I have published one paper earlier, uh, uh, which is openly accessible. You can check my publication and see that. Um, so, uh, can you tell me um, what is the problem statement? Yes, sir. What is the problem statement? What you are yes. going to do? Yes, sir. Our problem statement is to build an interface in the, uh, in the form of a chatbot, okay, uh, that okay. can assist a person uh, who is looking for a PG, uh, okay. uh, that will help that person find a suitable uh, PG based on their preferences. Okay? okay. Yeah, that's what my problem How statement is. Yes, sir. Uh, in which way you are uh, going to implement this application? What are uh, the uh, where are okay. the input you are going to take? Okay, sir. So this uh, is this kind of a demonstration of the final product that it will look like. Uh, for example, the chatbot, uh, um, um, uh, the user may input hello or something like I'm looking for a PG. Oh. Right? So that's what the user will input and the chatbot may say, how may I help you or assist you? And okay. uh, the chatbot can ask like for more details. And uh, the okay. user can say that I'm a student studying in this college and I would like to know about a PG which is within two kilometers or three kilometers mm -hmm. from my college. And mm -hmm. these are the things. And uh, 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 okay, so uh, talking about the uh, prediction model that we are going to use, that is transformer. The, uh, the basic uh, work of that would be uh, that uh, here, uh, I'm just giving the uh, end product here uh, but uh, as you know, chatbot is a pre-feeded data. So in the, the, the pre-feeded data, there would be a list of available, uh, you know, uh, reply that would be pre-feeded for a particular request. So uh, the, the basic work of the prediction model would be to uh, give the uh, 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 most suitable uh, uh, I would say having the highest score probability. Okay, so in that, uh, how the data ah. is collected for your application? Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. And talking about the data collection, uh, this can be 
done both manually and by using API. Uh, those uh, PG which are having website, uh, we can use web scraping method to scrape the data. Okay. And, uh, and we will also be using named entity recognition for detection of the, uh, uh, the, the entities, such as like the price of the PG or uh, 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 what else we have, uh, what the, the type of PG it is, like whether it's for a uh, female or it's for a chatting, uh, uh, rather than uh, input by the end user, uh, you will get the wrong end uh, data, maybe. Am I correct? Yes, sir, you are, uh, uh, some, there is some distortion in the sound. I don't know, it's from my side or your side. Uh, can you please repeat? Okay. Just a second. Uh, apart from the presenter and as well as the um, the judge people, uh, others, please kindly mute your mic. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. So now the data question you told manually and as well as web scrapping. Yes, sir. So you are now going to do web scrapping. Rather than the user giving the input, am I correct? Uh, uh, see, um, I, I, it will be kind of a hybrid method. Uh, okay. if I'm, asking, asking, yeah, yes, I'm asking, if you do web scrapping means, what yes. are the information available in the website, that uh, one will be reflected. Uh, not, not everything, some... sir. That's why I am saying that we are going to use named entity recognition for detecting the named entity. Okay, after okay. detection of the named entities, we will be uh, using web script. Uh, we will, uh, uh, on, on top of that, we will be using web scraping method to scrape those entities which we want. Okay, yeah. I'm asking my, my question is whether yes. the end user means the data provider directly they will give their information input, uh, uh, giving as an input, or you only collecting all the information? Uh, collecting information, sir. Yeah, exactly. Then, that then that may be how you are uh, uh, confirm that uh, information is correct. Uh, uh, dynamically, how you are to verify? Uh, sir, for that I will also uh, so right now I'm going to work on on only on the uh, PG which I uh, am aware about. So I'll be talking to them as okay. well. Yeah. So yeah. So, uh, I'm asking if you you are collecting the data means if on on PG. If you consider the limits or metropolitan speed to fence limits, huge amount of PGs are there. How you verify all the PGs are dynamic values? Okay, how you are uh, collecting the data correctly in all the time, daily, daily basis? If um, it is in one uh, server based application, you use that server or kind of application like uh, uh, normal booking application, driver booking, or kind of booking like application like that one man, manner means. It's easy to collect the data, no? Your concept is somewhat uh, confusing. Yes, sir, for that, I think I'd have to, you know, be in uh, contact with the owners. That's mm -hmm. all I can so say. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from also, that, I, I don't know. Uh, my suggestion is you also uh, prepare a dog on a mobile application or a publication. By that, you ask the end user, means like in a uh, uh, PG, uh, PG service holder, they want to uh, log in your application and they want to provide your near data. Like that manner only, is, if it is there only, it is good. Your application is logic is getting uh, by successful. It is my suggestion. Okay. And uh, any other point uh, about your application? Yes, sir. I don't yeah, know no. what is wrong with here. There's a lot of disturbance around. Yeah. Ma'am, you try to incorporate oh, the. Ha, sir, or maybe you can uh, yeah, send you can you try to incorporate uh, yeah yeah that's what I um, Ramasamy sir will be able to send the uh, suggestions on a text format so that you can incorporate in your work yes sir yes. okay okay best wishes for your project best wishes your uh, presentation was nice uh, but, but sir I have one doubt uh, okay. to the organizers I am doubtful about the uh, maximum budget that they can fund it to us. Uh, that uh, we haven't decided it yet, uh, ma'am. Yeah, uh, because... Uh, so it, it all depends upon what is the novelty of the project, how, what yes, is the societal yes. application of the project. Yes, sir. So yes. multiple factors are there. Uh, 
so at this particular point of time like deciding upon it is not a, a smart decision so uh, only upon looking into the um, the performance of all the people who have presented all these things the, the, the maximum limit we will be able to decide. yeah and uh, moving on ahead my project call would be to, to deploy it on a website plus uh, publish my you know a paper in a, uh, uh, a free sci index journal so yeah that's all best mm. wishes okay thank you can move on to the next presentation yes sir uh, i would like to invite k sain kiran sir from vishweshwarya technological university presentation on waste management multi platform application project again sain kiran sain kiran second paper second project yes yes sir. Sir. yes sir. wow uh, is my screen visible yes sir yes yes visible. yes uh go good evening everybody uh, thanks for giving me the another opportunity as well i'm um, so today i am mean, you deserve it <laughs> thank you sir you deserve it because uh, i care thank you sir thank you sir. uh so now i'm going to talk about another application which uh, i i'm in process of development which is basically waste management application which can be deployed in multiple platforms uh, i'm doing it under the guidance of dr anuradha ma'am um so basically the problem statement is that uh, waste generation and the dump um, which uh, happens within a city or a locality it happens at irregular intervals of time because like um, uh, the like normally households would do it once in a day uh, maybe like but there can be some events organized at random intervals and then uh, the waste generated can be uh, at random intervals so basically waste can be generated in random intervals and there is very less transparency exists between how municipalities address the complaints so basically when waste is uh, dumped because people want to get rid of it as early as possible so they just dump it uh, wherever they find it suitable like not all are a very good citizen so basically uh, things go wrong so basically when some good citizens notice it and say like okay uh, there is waste uh, generated here and municipalities take uh, there is a lag or the way in which they work it's not very transparent and it is not uh, uh, going in as the public expects and also mm, when stagnant waste is accumulated in any place it, it attracts a lot of insects reptiles it's not a pleasant environment to be in so basically my problem statement which i have taken is to generate uh, create an generation application which acts as an interface between the municipalities and the public so that both uh, are in uh, aligned with each other so so basically in the existing system like basically what happens is like public goes and registers with the municipality so they assign employee or employees a group of people to address a particular complaint and then like uh, they find the employees also face multiple issues like they because they are not the first person to get in touch with the whoever complaint they might not understand the full scope of the issue and then they might not be able to find the exact location and so there might be lot of delay happening uh, so that is uh, from their perspective and from the pu public perspective it's like there is a delay in addressing and it the delay always uh, goes beyond certain interval uh, that it doesn't matter like they come and take care of the situation or not so because the system is not uh, very transparent and nobody can audit it like uh, what is the like when was the complaint registered and how much time it took for them to respond and what was the course of action they have taken so those kind of auditing information is not available because it's not recorded anywhere because it all happens in an informal fashion so mm, the system what i am proposing is to generate an application uh, which has three kind of actors one is like admin one is the municipality and one is the public and each uh, actor will be given a different set of permissions within the application which they can do and which can which they cannot and then um, Uh, and it will basically go uh, go on further so basically this solution is going to be a social media kind of application plus with integrated ticket management system plus uh, it has some kind of role based control basically it says like a person who can be who is a municipality they cannot go and delete a complaint which is generated by public and public cannot go and edit some other uh, um, other tickets which they have not opened but everybody can see all the tickets which uh, are been created 
so that kind of a system so so the implementation wise so it is very similar to what i have proposed in my previous slides as well so basically for user onboarding i would like to use firebase authentication it's a google product um, so for analytics i'll be using google uh, google uh, firebase analytics so basically the flow will be like the admin will be uh, initially generating all the um, clusters basically each cluster of area is assigned to a municipality and the municipality uh, uh, credentials will be created and shared with them and then uh, the users can be onboarded on their own so basically they can go on themselves and they can sign up and they will be by default assigned as a public role in case they want to uh, get higher access privilege they can contact the admin and just uh, we can add the role so that they can get the privileges so that they can do multiple operations other than just raising a ticket they can add other information as well so when a ticket they basically a ticket is nothing but a complaint and a complaint can have multiple metadata information so it can include basically i am trying to include the gps location the uh, image or a video just as a proof that this place is not uh, up to the standard and it needs to be addressed by the municipality so that kind of a uh, uh, ticket can be generated and it will be automatically assigned based on the location to a particular municipality so we have a clear uh, trace of log like when the issue was uh, logged in and how much time did the municipality take to acknowledge the ticket and what is the course of action taken and how much time is it taking to resolve that particular ticket so we can have all lots of analytics done to see like how much is the mean time uh, to resolve this particular ticket and so on and then we can improve the process and then it will help um, even the public to know like if the government is working and what are the uh, problems they are facing so that everybody can work together and uh, keep the environment neat and clean so basically the implementation yes sir yes uh, second uh, okay can you tell me directly what is your interface okay, how your end uh, users stakeholders are uh, your application going to use in which way they are using and which way they will be working so that's what can you explain shortened part yes sir sure sir uh, so basically this slide demonstrate exactly the that part so all the metadata information which is static which will be written into s3 blob storage because it's uh, only for reading purpose and all the other information will be written into rdbms so how the users are going to access and uh, they they can use any interface they want basically it will be a web application also it will be an android application and also an ios application uh because i'm using ionic framework so basically when they register themselves they will get assigned a default role as public and uh, there will be one single user which will be called admin and admin can uh, add or delete the privileges based on the request so uh, a public can become a municipality user or uh, a municipality user also can become an admin so based on the privileges they have there will be different endpoints on the http web server so based on the role they will be having access or reject uh, uh, flags assigned uh, to them so that they can do sorry yes sir. sorry so you are explaining a real time scenario point of view what is your input what is your uh, process what is the output very short and small detail after that is the okay. technological uh, explanation will be taken place later so first you explain what is the input who will give input and who how it is flow the project flow is how, how it is going okay 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 sir sure uh, so if i am the public so i saw like okay this particular area is having some waste dump so what i am going to do i am going to take the application i am going to sign up using my google account or some uh, other uh, other methods and once i sign up i'll be able i'll be assigned as a public role so i'll go there and i'll register a complaint so basically it will be like i'll create a ticket so that ticket i'll attach the image i'll take a image and attach to it and then i will add my gps location like where it is there and then i'll just submit so my part of work is done so then okay. uh, this so automatically the system will assign the ticket to the respective municipality so that mapping like which locality to, to which municipality is already done by administrator when the application is bootstrapped in the back end side so the municipality will get a notification like hey uh, there is a new ticket and then they will based on the information provided by the user either they choose to discard because if someone is already working so if it is a duplicate ticket they will discard it if there is a valid reason and they will post like okay this is something we are looking into they can provide some update like uh, what is what they are going to do like how much time and those details and then like once it is done it will be marked as resolved 
for example there is no action taken by the municipality side then there may be multiple users they can come and upvote uh, i mean they can comment on that particular ticket saying like okay it, the, there is no action taken so far so that it can be shared across social media so that quick action can be taken so once uh, if the issue is resolved it will be marked as resolved and uh, i mean that is the process okay and one more question so how i will say uh the particular the snapshot is correct or not how you apply so it is a exact problem there the uh, public people taking the snapshot or wrongly unwanted uh, information they can take the snapshot so how you apply okay okay sir so when they uh, uh, so okay so that moderation part it is up to the municipality to do it like uh, like mm-hmm. i i think yeah, i'm asking means ఫిల్టరింగ్ provision yes sir so one good thing i am doing is like i am trying to onboard the users using their google credentials so i know like how much request they are sending basically how many tickets they are raising so one is like mm-hmm. i can rate limit them so that mm-hmm. they do not uh, open a lot of tickets unnecessarily mm-hmm. so that one mm-hmm. thing i can do based on the uh, like public cannot raise more than 5 tickets per day something that kind of limit i can put and coming to the second part the metadata like whatever they add uh, the content is moderated or not so i i am as of now i didn't uh, thought about it i just wanted to keep it simple but yeah i think that makes lot of sense like some can misuse the product so i can do some pre processing like before it is uh, onboarded to check if um, it it is uh, it doesn't have anything which is not related to the actual context so for images i can do some kind of uh, image processing like uh, i'll and then flag it like uh, but At end of the day it will be taken by the municipality to either to discard it or uh, to accept that as a valid okay in your application you can provide one provision by uh, multiple uh, or particular threshold if the one single a particular person is giving wrong input then here that person's flagging uh, may be blocked like that you can do some provision that is good also yes sir yes sir exactly like yeah we can maintain the scores for each user yes sir Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, that is on the and uh, another thing I have uh, a question I have to ask that um, okay, now I will move on to the column and, and uh, after that I will continue with you. Mm-hmm. Thank you sir. Yeah, thank you sir. So, Sai Kiran, your second row, Sai Kiran. Sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, your, your second row, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your second row, your second presentation. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Yeah. Okay. So good uh, that you are uh, taking up multiple problems to solve. I'm happy. Thank you, sir. So uh, basically, this okay. doesn't involve a lot of... Um, i mean this uh, i want to do this particular one as a product kind of use so mm-hmm. the one which mm-hmm. i have done earlier was like research kind of oriented this one like i want to do it as a complete product mm-hmm. uh, like uh, it, it is a good intention that you are going to do as a product but uh, any product uh, which uh, uh, because research and products are not two different entities people are actually generally confused like that research means you should end up in a paper publication or a patent Uh, whereas product is no research uh, i mean uh, the um, uh, the base of a product creation is research only okay if this particular product what you are going to develop if, if it, ha- it it does not have any novel contributions research contributions then uh, people will not be able to appreciate it yes sir yes, see you, you just yes, consider sir, uh, you just consider um, uh, like uh, Uh, earlier we had as uh, when whatsapp was not there like and our android mobile was not there when we were doing our uh, pg and all we had only the 0100 mobile 
okay that mobile yes, also it, it costs around 2000 3000 rupees that 15 20 years back itself okay now yes, now yes. there the, something uh, some, some research has been done that the people are much more receptive to this pictures and uh, um, uh, videos and so they have uh, made a research and they have found that uh, this whatsapp can be done or sms uh, all these things could be uh, integrated to the mobile and now if you are able to give a mobile with a 10000 even though the cost is uh, thrice to uh, twice or thrice greater than this i am able i i want to buy because i have new things in it yes sir yes when compared to the, the w100 definitely my the features uh, i am going to enjoy in this new mobile of 10000 rupees mobile is high still i am able to pay the price because i i appreciate the uh, advancements over there so similar to that uh, this particular product also this particular product which you have, uh, which will help the municipalities uh, research is and definitely an important concept okay again what i so i told to the uh, i told uh, for the previous uh, presentation similar the, the similar thing holds good for here also concentrate on the research part research is not uh, only on i mean researching uh, literature survey it is researching upon what are all the previous works are there and how we how, in which way we are going to make this particular product superior when compared yes, to, it is so. it is a, like it is it's like a competitive analysis only competitive analysis what are all the feature not market analysis competitive analysis what are all the features which is already there in which aspect we can actually give the best features okay so that aspect if you add to to, to this to this you can definitely take this to so you, you have one problem for your phd you can take this for your post doc sure sir okay yes, sir. yeah <laughs> best wishes and uh, um, my genuine appreciation for uh, for presenting two ideas thank you sir yeah uh, yeah i agree sir like uh, that uh, part was a bit lacking yeah uh, i will address that one sir very good and this this uh, this trait is also very important that taking up the suggestions and uh, improvising good okay we can move on to the next presentation yes sir I would like to invite E Shankara from Francis Xavier Engineering College, uh, presenting on crowded analysis for COVID nineteen. Crowd analysis for COVID nineteen. Shankara sir. Yes, ma'am. You can start with your presentation. Yes, sir. So we are unable to hear you. Shankara sir, can you hear my voice, please? And can you hear Shankara, me? Now? Ah, just now we are we are able to hear you, Shankara. Shankara. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, you can start your presentation. I give my immense pleasure to share this idea in this uh, colloquium. Uh, these are the 
I already said this uh, team uh, team, uh, team members details. Hope you see the names and the uh, title of our project is a uh, uh, crowd analysis for COVID nineteen. It's especially for the uh, COVID nineteen cases um, in a uh, India to maintain the social distancing. Uh, we thought uh, prevention is better than cure, so we are we are uh, highly motivated to uh, prevent the public gathering in a uh, public places. Uh, problem identifications uh, uh, as uh, the COVID nineteen uh, situations, uh, which is uh, which is the de de deadly disease. Uh, so we found that uh, we are supposed to be build uh, some application to reduce the crowd in a public gathering area. So we found this idea. A few features of the projects um, uh, by using our applications, uh, people can able to see the um, crowd in a particular place and. Uh, uh, schedule the time in a uh, different uh, different uh, places and the uh, different time uh, by seeing uh, uh, seeing the particular count in uh, in a particular place by uh, in their home without going uh, to visit the visit that place and also it will uh, and uh, our project will help the government officials to regulate the particular uh, place crowdy area and um, make check uh, check up on their uh, place to reduce the crowd. In existing model, we found that uh, uh, people counting is uh, is uh, done, but it's a uh, but output is uh, only for in the local host. It's uh, in console only. They get, uh, they show the output. So we thought uh, thought uh, it, we supposed to build an application, and it's uh, entirely for the public view. Uh, so we proposed this uh, idea to build uh, applications, and we found that some of the drawback in the uh, existing model. We uh, we came up with our proposed model, which. Uh, uh, which enhance the uh, existing model ideas. Justifications of idea, uh, we found we, we didn't found that any applications uh, to reduce the social distancing. Uh, so may so, sorry may maintain the social distancing. So we thought uh, application uh, for the COVID nineteen is a uh, um, enough to, to uh, maintain a social distancing for the. Uh, people our target audiences are uh, mall status and exhibitions and uh, uh, inst education institutions okay ma you can go to the exactly uh, the solution to the problem technical solution oh, yes. so this is the technical solutions uh, the mall camera uh, uh, by installing the uh, software uh, it counts the number of people in a particular place by using a image processing or uh, um, yeah, people recognitions by can edge detection it uh, it counts the number of people in a particular place and it's sent to the uh, database by uh, by database uh, detail it will be retrieved to the applications by the appli application people can see the but uh, um, People count in a particular place. Suppose in the example, uh, in Chennai six, the number of people are uh, uh, fifty plus. Like like that, it will be show. And uh, by our previous uh, data, we can also predict the uh, future crowd. And the and this model also suggests you to uh, the red light. Um, uh, red light indicates the um, it's highly crowded. And agree, agree indicates now it's okay. It may be increase and uh, and. Uh, uh, yellow yellow light uh, shows that uh, uh, it's uh, the crowd is average and the hardware and uh, software requirements are uh, python uh, no sql uh, java and android studio for uh, application development and cctv camera is a uh, major thing to build this supply build this model Um, with the with the minimal uh, uh, minimal things, we uh, I find this a uh, uh, sample out output. It's uh, showing the number of, number of people. Uh, two people are uh, moving to the place, and the green 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 box indicates the uh, that's are human beings that indicates in the green uh, green box. And the budget, uh, and we also published this uh, idea in the Indian Patent Journal, and it's uh, it's been accepted. And uh, other application of this uh, same idea uh, by using this uh, same kind uh, kind of application, we can uh, in a government at a, 
pra private uh, bus uh, camera we can uh, take the number of people count and uh, we place the uh, people count in uh, near to the uh, near to the uh, place board uh, that uh, uh, bus is already full uh, no no other people are allowed to be enter uh, by using this we can reduce the footboard footboard accidents uh, especially for students in a uh, uh, public as well as uh, the local buses And the budget uh, estimations will be explained by my teammate, uh, Anto Jewel. So, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So, hi, I'm myself, Anto Jewel. So, budget, uh, as per, we have done this budget, budgeting uh, as per the internet, and everything will be considered as a, a end product uh, results. And these budgets, uh, the prices may be vary as per the bulk orders. Okay. First of all, ca camera CCTV we uses RTSP protocol enabled cameras. Uh, which is 8,000 in uh, AliExpress, followed by the setup mount, uh, like uh, for setting up that uh, uh, camera, which is 5,000. And uh, uh, since this is a completely software, uh, software plus hardware based, uh, we need a server farm plus IT services and hosting domain, and that costs will be 10,000 uh, each. Uh, then followed by the manpower, uh, which is like a negligible value, 6,000 rupees. So the total will be receiving as per 59,000, uh, approximately 60,000. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So your application, how it will be implemented? Where it will be yes. implemented? Uh, our application is uh, currently uh, the live, and uh, we have created a web server. Uh, followed by we have also developed the application. Uh, like the web server will be running uh, in the mall, or the, rather we have implemented the camera itself, and the data will be moved on to the Firebase uh, real-time databases. So from the real-time database, we'll fetching the live data. Uh, the, the app will be completely customizable. For, for example, if a mall person needs a completely uh, different analytics, whereas institutions, they need a completely different analytics. Therefore, uh, our apps, UI, and database architecture will be completely different for both of them. But the base backend will be the same, which is implemented like uh, right now. Okay, so your application, what functionality will do after uh, sensing all the information? So there will be a cloud and a, a non-cloud. So any other uh, intimation or any other decision it will take place. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes sir. Uh, yeah, sir. It's uh, we plan to send a message to the government officials that uh, the crowd in a particular place uh, place is very high. Okay. Which can but be also used in some kind of. Only you are sending the message to the. Okay. Another thing you. You told, okay, one person from the home while it's uh, taking a particular location where it is crowded or not. Okay, after that, he will decide that to go now or future. I think you give an on scenario in the uh, initial stage. Right. Hello, yes, sir. You're right, sir. Ah, okay, so how he will decide uh, in the because he is in uh, from home to that particular location of our travel means. How you dynamically he, he, he can suggest or recommend that particular person now it is a crowd, now it is, a, it is not suitable to go? Sir, uh, the green light is, it indicates that now it's a uh, now it's not a crowd. For example, it is one o'clock, one person from home is checking, it is now a crowd. Okay. So after that, uh, he will start that time itself, he reached that particular place of an half an hour place after all. So at that time maybe it will be crowdless now. Any recommendation you are providing to uh, those people? Sir, the tendency between the users, uh, it shows the uh, number of crowds. Sir, for that purpose, we have a certain model like a uh, few. Uh, future crowd productions that are in Laona Club, the crowd will be usually like this. Mm -hmm. So your application only is sensing the crowd count and it will be indignation only. Okay. Uh, and a uh, future crowd production also. Future count prediction. Crowd, uh, crowd, uh, crowd number of crowd. How will you that AWS offers uh, like the uh, machine yeah, pre -mach pre uh, model machine learning uh, like machine learning models sir. So that we can okay. just give the input data so that AWS will be automatically giving us a result and data uh, uh, in just a couple of reasons. Uh, so that we can also do the machine learning in the clouds itself. So the client side will be uh, completely uh, like lightweight. Okay. Uh, 
So your application is good, and one more thing you can add is uh, extra feature in your application. From uh, in the from the cloud no, even less amount of people also there. So there, whether they will maintain a particular safe distance or not. So for that also you can uh, in the from the image you can uh, measure the distance from one person to another person, and you can suggest or intimate or alert message you can give to the common uh, speaker like okay. So you are in a group nearby the another person. So keep distance like this. On alert message, they they can can provide. Like this manner also, you can but are inter interpret on features in your application. This makes sense, sir. Okay, yes. uh, your uh, idea is very good. I move on to Balam. Thank yes. you, sir. Sir, uh, we have uh, a minimal. Ah, uh, Shankar Selvam. Yes, sir. Shankar Selvam and the group. Uh, very good uh, as far as the presentation uh, as far as the presentation uh, and, um, see, apart from the presenter and other people please uh, unmute your mic mute your mic Okay. Uh, are you there, uh, Shankar Silva? Sir, we are here, sir. Okay. So, uh, your pro project, uh, the inputs for the project uh, um, and uh, the presentation, everything was good. And uh, what, the crowd analysis and other things, what uh, you have, uh, and the, the, answer, the way in which you answered the questions to Professor uh, Ramasamy sir was also uh, really good. Uh, I have only one question. Uh, so this is actually a crowd sensing for COVID-19. Now, at this scenario, if this particular product, uh, suppose if the particular product is funded and if you are able to come up with this particular, uh, uh, I mean, with this innovation in the market, how will this product be received by the uh, society? Suppose yes, if this product uh, uh, come, has come in 2020 beginning, then, productly, then probably this particular product will be a big hit because the COVID was at the high of uh, was at the rise and it was uh, um, uh, in the peak for the past two years. Now it is in the uh, like uh, descending phase and uh, people have all been vaccinated and uh, and uh, according to the researchers they say that uh, not too much of a hike like the 2020 and 2021 will be repeating. So, if this particular product is, de is developed at this point of time in life, so how uh, successful do you think that this product will become? Yes, sir. I'm just Literally. asking about the reception of the product, not about the technical. Technicality is good. Yes, sir. Everything is good. Sir, I'm just sir, asking. Sir, is literally, uh, literally, we had the same uh, uh, doubt as you as you asked to us. The same so, questions we asked to our, ourselves too. I and got your mic voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We came up with another one thing. Data is completely the resource. For example, mm -hmm. uh, if uh, if some people kind of people are entering this data, uh, entering in a mall, for example, a mall data, for example, temples, uh, some this much people has been entered to in this into this uh, mall, so that we can have the analytical data of this much people is entering to this mall at this time. So at this time you can uh, the people count is so much higher, so that you, are, you can have a high level of marketing. Uh, like it will be completely different from the COVID. It will be coming becoming to marketing. No, uh, no, no, no. See here, when I was doing my engineering uh, time 20 years back, uh, I don't know whether Spencer Plaza is there in Chennai right now. But it, at that time, there was only one plaza, Spencer Plaza. Spencer Plaza will always be crowded. Yes, sir. But uh, it doesn't mean that people who come over there will definitely buy, uh, buy or uh, there are a lot of college students and uh, fresh IT graduates who come there, uh, buy a uh, Coke uh, and sit there till <laughs> evening and chat. Yes, sir. So that's a case. Uh, uh, yeah, so th there's an exceptional case like this. This is not an exceptional case. This is a general case. In such a case, the number of people within the mall, uh, it, it is not, uh, you, you cannot equate it. There's no direct proportion that uh, if the mall is crowded, the, uh, the, the um, I mean, the profit is high. It is actually less. 
only after that only after 2005 2006 only they have brought to the some rules that you should not buy one coke and spend the rest of the time over there because that is a misguiding thing because a coke was just 20 rupees that time 20 years back so getting one coke for 20 rupees and spending all the whole time over there if you uh, in this particular uh, scenario uh, it is actually the, the correlation is not there like uh, even if the, the uh, uh, mall is densely populated it will actually lower the um, uh, profit uh, uh, paid by the other shops yes sir so in instead completely... actually this yeah sir i sir i have another option for you okay, but in that the case we'll be following yes yes, yes. Uh, who's that uh, sankara Sank- uh, your friend has an another option we'll look for another yes, option what we'll like share something yeah. also like sir. the the, yes, the, the google for example the marketing strategy followed by google is like uh, just giving the ad ads as if uh, like just showing the ads so that it will be making a tempting us uh, like relatable ads like complete relatable mm-hmm. ads but it's showing yes. the ads for you that that's it. that's the point of uh, google's ad ad campaign like the same yes. way like the point of uh, this this is a peak time for you in this for example uh, obviously the people who are, uh, is coming for even i to do the same thing in that case uh, like uh, the, the like we completely in the mall in sense mask made of multiple uh, sh- stores for this stores this much people are going this store this much people are going you can get the annual ticket of single every single malls so that the malls uh, revenues and uh, like every single stores revenue uh, like how much people is engaging with the stores that the more kind of data will be getting the data is the value completely in that case we can be implemented not only on the malls but also in kind of in education institutions like in every single class uh, doors we can say we can fix this every education every institutions act. education institutions okay i i agree but mark yeah, even see how many see t- tell me genuinely how many of uh, us go to malls and purchase i don't go for malls to purchase i do window shopping only yes sir no <laughs> that is the truth we go to yes. to mall see, see we go to mall to purchase all the things all dresses all the other things is it the is it the uh, motto where which we are going to mall then we cannot go for mall wow well, we can we can if we can go to mall only once in uh, in a year we don't go for mall for that purpose yes yes sir yes sir obviously you and yeah. me yeah uh, so then probably this is not applicable for a the shopping thing because it is uh, uh, because the scenario is different as far as education is the scenario is different. good yeah good yeah, yeah. i think uh, you have got the concept and uh, we can uh, uh, that, you are the you... case we can implement the... in theaters like this much people's uh, even in the booking also you can get but in some kind of uh, like theaters uh, we can use in the institutions like temples like in the this much row in this row this much people are on the way this has a overcrowd over here that should be control uh, crowd control over in the in this Like riot controls, like multiple things, we can be implementing this technology, sir. Theaters, we have designated number of seats. See, last week I went to a film in Fun Mall. We have designated number of seats. They don't even look at the the uh, the, the tickets of the ticket counter because everyone has a ticket in their hand. They go and get seated get, uh, get seated in, uh, in their place. It is not. See, twenty years before when Gajini film was released, I was doing my engineering third year, right? at yes, that sir. particular time there was no concept called is the pre booking and all we should go and and at that particular time lot of students were uh, 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 in the theater and uh, police has started with lathi charge when mm-hmm. that is the scenario then we can give that uh, okay uh, it is uh, too much of crowd is there then probably you should not go but nowadays when you go, people seldom come to uh, theaters it is very very less nowadays if even uh, uh, in this week i plan to go for a movie i drop it because within one week i will get it in disney hotstar yes obviously so the yeah. so the uh, the uh, i mean the the, per, the density of population is less uh, today is 2022 if it is going to be 2002 then definitely this can be applied just mm. my uh, okay Sir, can i get a chance to address your question huh sir can i can i speak about this sir Yes, sir, Sankara, Sankara, yes, Sankara. Sir, uh, suppose you are a working uh, profession, uh, you need some time to go to the ration shop to uh, sign the sign to buy the products. You you need a permission. To ration shop. Ration shop. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
okay uh, patient job uh, and uh, you supposed to uh, get a uh, permission uh, uh, about one hour by uh, seeing this application you can see the crowd uh, hmm. okay the crowd is uh, now normal and now i can get a permission go to the shop and get buy the products so one of the applications uh, shankara have you have you got, got uh, ration materials for your home very recently unmaya <laughs> sollano <laughs> Yes. Sir. Yes. Yeah, middle class. Still, we are middle class only. No, no. Nan, nan. We also, I, I also get ration materials. No, na. I am not saying that. Whether you are going to the ration shop and getting, or your mother is getting. Sir, my Tell me mother is not going. Sir, my father is going. Ah, your father is going. So it is only father and mother's game. You are not going. Sir, so but they are not. You know what is this? Professionals. Professional officers. Yeah, yeah, they are not professionals, but they know what is the current scenario. Because even in my home, I am only going. My wife is going. My son is not going. For the thing is, no, no, no. I am telling you now. Nowadays, there is no so much of crowd in uh, uh, Naya Village. Even uh, I mean, uh, last week Saturday, we had a call from a ration shop that uh, this particular product is there. You come and buy. So such a situation is there now. And you supposed so to be living in a metropolis in city, I think, sir. No, no. This this scenario was that 10 to 15 years back. 10 to 15 years back, even 20 years back, when I was doing my college and other things, we used to. It is be a very long line to get all the other things. But now it is like very few people are coming, and uh, uh, the the I mean uh, the, uh, the the thing is the uh, entire thing has been streamlined. and again uh, people don't uh, hesitate much to uh, stand for a few minutes so if it is going to be about 10 minutes to stand in line suppose if i am also standing for my home and uh, shankara you are standing for your home to get some uh, beat and uh, who's the other uh, master who answered the, who was talking to me previously anto anto myself yeah 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 and ah, yeah okay anto anto you are also standing so do we really get uh, frustrated for standing for 10 minutes definitely we will start chatting something and we will make the time somehow comfortable 10 minutes or something is not a matter what i'm trying to tell over here is that the problem if, if this is if this particular thing is uh, applied to that it will not be much appreciated though it may solve the problem but it is not a big problem if i go to a uh, ration shop and if if i see uh the line for abo- uh, about 10 people or about 6 people and it takes only 10 minutes it is okay for me anyhow uh, there's no covid there's no problem of getting uh, co- uh, I-, i will be uh, transferring covid to you nothing like that so let's uh, uh, stand and chat have a good time sir in that the case i got uh, i got another one thing this is a for example uh, consider a political conference like that okay we don't have give any tickets or count any people how much people coming inside going or say we don't have any count over there it will be completely uh, under the control of the police department or the com- uh, like whoever taking the defense judge so for making them process easy why can't we implement this uh, technology over the uh, places like where people are g- gathering so much uh, like political conferences for example uh, 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 the, this, this is one promising area where we, i especially not political conferences especially where like uh, in a places where they um, um, like uh, the, the public uh, we, long, we are not uh, aware of the uh, the, uh, the volume of public there will, will be coming yeah mm-hmm. so uh, yeah, so in such, a, in such a scenario it is definitely applicable yeah. yes in bus stands you can like register Yeah, like at the bus stand, coin bed. You know, coin bed. How it will be? Uh, you know, now, that the case yeah, is how. Uh, see, uh, now okay. uh, like people are uh, traveling very now on a free basis. Only you and me and yeah. gents like uh, us are traveling so, with that thing. Uh, uh, so like there's salt, no waiting. Like the problem, problem <laughs> no, situation is changing. Yeah. Anyhow, anyhow, I think we are uh, like, uh, taking up a uh, lot of time. Anyhow, yeah, we yeah, can yeah. just look yeah. into this. Uh, very good presentation and best wishes for your projects. Thank you, thank you, sir. thank you so much. Yes. Okay, we can move on to the next uh, presentation. Yes, sir. I would like to invite Himanshu Rai from ITM University Gwalior, presenting on iTech.
सर एम आई ऑडिबल यस मैम यू आर ऑडिबल ओके गुड ग्रीटिंग्स एवरीवन रिस्पेक्टेड जजेस दिस इज सौम्या शर्मा टीम मेंबर ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट फ्रॉम आईटीएम यूनिवर्सिटी ग्वालियर मध्य प्रदेश रिप्रेजेंटिंग माय आइडिया आई टेक टूडे सो बिफोर मूविंग अहेड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू प्रेजेंट माई प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इन दिस प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन डिटेल्स about the intelligent traffic can you management do, uh, uh, slide show sorry for the uh, interrupt uh, can you make it a uh, slide show uh, excuse me sir can you make it slide show yes sir so oh. it's going on in slide show mode only okay okay sir sir my problem statement in this problem statement we will be discussing in detail about the intelligent traffic management system which will automatically generates the e chalan of any vehicle and will also help in finding any lost vehicle so before moving ahead i just want you all to just imagine of a situation that you are sitting and enjoying with your family and friends and all of a sudden a pop up arises on your phone which is about your e chalan the situation is totally changed and now instead of enjoying peacefully you are thinking of a day when did this happen doesn't it sounds very disturbing so this just the same situation happened with my team member himanshu his chalan arrived at his home after 3 months and he was also confused like this that when was the day this happened moving ahead so the solution for this so just to solve this problem i am You are yes, still on the first slide. You still on the first slide, ma'am. I am proceeding my slide. I guess there is some network problem. Just a second. And uh, and one more thing, you uh, due to time constraint, uh, uh, short and smart. You explain the product statement, solution, and the how to implement. Sir, is it, is it yeah? Is it visible, sir? Uh, is it visible? Now it is okay. And now it is okay. Is short okay, and smart, okay. you have to explain. Okay. Is it uh, on next slide now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Next slide only. Okay. Yeah, short and smart, you explain. Okay, sir. So that the previous slide was of each alan, which my team members, which was of my team members. So next is solution. So just to solve this problem and also to help Indian Traffic Police, I and my team are inserting an in integrated system in camera to make it high tech, which will immediately scan your number plate and search for the mobile number on whose name it is linked and will send you the message of each alarm in some seconds. So in minimum words, I would like to say the solution is to integrate the ITMS technology. with hsrp security uh, high security registration plate and anpr automatic number plate recognition which will help in generating each alarms in seconds moving ahead how our idea will work we are going to create a integrated system between anpr and hsrp in which any vehicle who will break any tra traffic rules like red light violation driving without helmet tripling at any crossroad then the high resolution cameras present on that crossroad will scan that vehicle number plate and then send the information to the database of the vehicle from where the mobile number is linked and with that vehicle will be sent to each alarm throw that message immediately on that mobile number now my next slide is about how my project will work a small glimpse this is how camera is scanning the number plate and it will look for that data on the database and the number linked to that uh, plate the message will be sent to that number about each alarm so this this is my database connectivity how my database is working in this this is the database of chalan how many kind of chalans are there and this is database about the details of vehicle more of there are two more database about the vehicle details whose chalan each chalan is generating and also the normal details when and where the chalan is generating okay now moving ahead now coming on our next move which is a plus point that with the help of this we can also find our vehicle as well what you need to do is only register into our app name raftar 
as soon as you will register yourself here your and your vehicle data will be saved into it and will and when your vehicle got missing you can register your complaint into this app and this will be under traffic police so there is no chance of any misuse of your uh, data as soon as your complaint is registered it will look for your vehicles vehicle number plate in that database and you will be easily able to find your vehicle with the help of traffic police so this is our estimated fund required in past our idea has also won number of hackathons and we have also collected some amount of money and with the help of that we are proceeding with this idea with 60% of work done but now we are needing we are in need of 30 to 50000 rupees to proceed it further and to bring it in daily use so that we can give this under government and help our indian uh, traffic police so this is the last conclusion with the help of our integrated system the e chalan which usually takes around 1 to 3 months to be generated with the will, will be generated in few seconds and which will help government in establishing strict traffic rules as well as in the collection of revenue through challenge chalans thank you so much so uh, uh, presentation also was nice and your uh, concept also was very good okay so how you implement what is the user interface here uh, sorry sir can you repeat please uh, uh, what is the user interface how it will be uh, implemented in the real time that it is implemented how sir, it will be helpful sir we sir we are creating some database and also some machine learning algorithms into that uh, mm -hmm. uh, our camera which will make it high tech and also sir there was one slide in which image was there are how our camera will be working because uh, through that machine learning algorithms it will like mm -hmm. we will put some algorithms like how helmet looks like how much angle it will make from the red light so that it can detect that number plate and so the number plates used in this are hsrp number plates high security registration plates which will having qr codes in that so it will be easily uh, scannable and will be easily to maintain that uh, data uh, into database so what uh, algorithm you are using for classifying the uh, the identifying the number plate image to text and the connecting the image to text Sir, with the help of QR code and some machine learning algorithms, which on which my team QR members are working. QR code is not available in the number plate, no. No, sir. Some there are some machine are... learning. Sir, there are some ML algorithms on which my okay. team members are working. Sir, there are my team members are there. Two, three team members who are working on backend. So, uh, they are working on that. Uh, which way ML algorithm you are using, man? Sir, uh, actually, I do not have any information about this ML algorithm because they are working on it. No, no, yeah, that is not a back end work. That is the main work. Yes, sir, the main work. Actually, I am not doing that work. I am only uh, doing the main like Raftar app work. So I am using, I am doing that work. And okay. The so it is, it is a group project, right? Then uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Then uh, you, you should encourage your uh, uh, team members to speak about it because you are telling. Well, uh, actually, uh, Sir, actually, Can the you... problem is of communication. My team members are not that uh, comfortable in communicating in English, so that's the main reason. But that is so okay. Uh, you collect the uh, suppose, information and you present. Uh, suppose if you are SCC, you as a group only you are uh, seeking the funding assistance. Yes. Yes, sir. So yeah, the, you, and you have taken the responsibility of uh, collecting all the information and communicating with us. Yes, sir. So uh, whenever if I have any queries regarding this, then I have to post it to you only. Sure, sir. Sure. Then if you are telling you no, I don't know. It is their work. Means then what I can do? Sir, uh, my team member is sitting with me. He know Hindi, so can he speak in behalf of me? Sir, okay, you ask them and what algorithm they are use. Okay, that one you get from them and you communicate to them. Okay, sir. It is just one word, no. See, suppose if it is like a my machine learning algorithm, if it is going to be work, for example, if it is a, a, a KN algorithm, is KN the same in English as well as in Hindi? Okay, you can that just ask him. Work. You just convey and you can tell me the what is the algorithm because that is the main work. That is the novelty over here. So that I'm asking. 
Sir, he just communicated with uh, the member who is working on it. He said he is using Kane algorithm to propose some uh, robotic uh, uh, algorithms, machine learning algorithms in that, so that it can work. Okay. Okay. As far as my observation and other things, I will just uh, give you a few uh, uh, my suggestions. Sure. Uh, uh, before go going on to this proposal, proposal and other uh, uh, funding and other things, I think that uh, uh, the gelling between the team members should be improved. Uh, yes. the communication and jailing because uh, once the fund has been released then if if the fund is released then the, the with, with the uh, i mean without a very good uh, rapport with the uh, members it is very very difficult to uh, disburse the fund and use it very effectively so first and sure. foremost is the communication among the member then only comes the project idea then only comes the novelty then only comes the applicability then only comes the uh, uh, i mean uh, the commercialization everything so the hello, first hello. step the basic step is yes. simple yes yes sir good good evening sir my name is manishu rai uh, actually yes, sir. sir there are some communication barriers uh, like i don't completely understand english and matlab uh, uh -huh. not having confidence in speaking english so that's why i am uh, here with somya so that she can present but we are there total 8 to 10 members who are working on this project for since one year and total three hackathons the mp state level rgpv hackathon this project has been won in which we have won 35000 rupees which we used for like uh, high resolution cameras but only the main point here is that i am not confident in speaking in english in front of you that's why she is uh, in front of you and speaking uh, said so this is the problem only by the way we all member are here only and we know about each and everything no no i am not telling that you good people they are not communicating no the thing is yes, that yes, when sir. i ask one question uh, yes because it's a very basic question i really appreciate that you have won so much of amount and you have uh, everything yes, is sir, very yes. much appreciable at this particular yes. point of time if one question is being there or uh, uh, one, one way of answering is that it probably they don't know or she says that uh, my team member knows and i am not aware So you, you just yeah, consider yes, my situation. How will I uh, how will be yes, able yes, to sir. evaluate this project? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if we will remember consider, that. <laughs> you consider me. Suppose if you uh, you you are the evaluator and two members, yes, two sir. to five members are coming and one person is uh, um, presenting and you are asking one. Uh, you and she is telling that uh, I am presenting on behalf of the other. Okay, you are asking one question. If she is, uh, okay, says sir. that uh, sir, we will take, uh, we will take care of this uh, next time, sir. Uh, that is the difficulty from my side. That is why I am telling. Okay, as far as the presentation. I'm sorry, I, sir. Uh, I'll uh, take care of this next time, sir. Sorry, sir. No, no. It's just it's just a learning. Okay. Okay. Yes, Best sir. Wishes. Sure, sir. Sorry, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. We can move on to the next presentation. Yes, sir. I would like to invite K S V Kartik Kaya from Jantuk, Kakinada. college presenting on cardiac treat prediction using segmentations of iv us images kartik yes sir are you present there ma'am kartik ma kartik sir is not present here so we can move to the next presentation ma'am okay okay I would like to invite Mohammad Ullah Khan sir from Lords Institute of Engineering and Technology, uh, presenting on Dr. Ling. I think Mohammad is also not present. I think so. Okay, sir. He, he, are I you present, uh, uh, Professor Mohammad? Not present. Sir. would like to invite dr sudhan shu from symbiosis institute of technology and from symbiosis international university pune presenting on intelligent iot based heart rate monitoring and analysis of patient thank you ma'am welcome sir so, is my screen visible am i audible yes, sir. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You audible and your screen is also visible, sir. Okay. So here I want to talk about somewhat the intelligent IoT best heart rate monitoring system and analysis of the patients. So along with me, there are some of the my colleagues, right? That colleagues are nothing but the faculty members like me. So who are the working in the department of computer science and engineering at Symbiosis, a university of uh, Symbiosis International Dream University part. So here we are generally making the talking about the motivation why we are working as a part of research in this area the currently there were the lot of requirements of hospital as well as doctors right and the continuous monitoring is an, a, one of the tedious tasks which is very very important for every doctor as well as for the particular patient they should get treatment frequently they must be a multiple round regularly routine checkup and that may lead to the physical as well as mental exertion to the doctors they also been a part of an uh, important uh, society to handle all the information record that we currently have about the covid cases right so the aim of this research from that we find out the aim and the objectives as well to monitor the heart rate as a piece of the major doctor part, we are taking small part as a research part to monitor the heart rates and analysis of the patient using the IoT bus technology. So why IoT? The IoT will help you to connect with the help of sensors, not a wire connections are required to ECG, EEG like that we always see in the ICUs to monitor that in the efficient way and accurately. The data of that patient may be analysis with the help of machine learning techniques as well as deep learning techniques. And we are also calculating the throughputs and the latency of the network because every record will be stored on the cloud. As well as we are utilizing some latency of the computer system affiliated with the uh, wireless network as well wireless sensor network as well as RFID, and this will lead us to uh, take one step for the doctor to reduce their effort. So how we are doing this is a small diagram because it is an a proposed work just we are starting so. The first, when we start, we connect the IoT based device patient uh, means through sensors or chip or somewhat to read the heartbeat ratio. If the heartbeat ratio is there, then it will display on the LCD screen. It will seem that it is a one kind of output that patient is alive. When we are connecting the IoT based uh, patient, then we require some kind of power supply transformers, sensors, and with the help of that, every bit of that patient will be calculated. That calculated bit of that patient will be transferred to the doctor monitoring system. Now, monitoring system is collecting the CSV file that we always do in the machine learning, deep learning, and the neural network, right? And then we apply some different types of uh, algorithm for the data analysis. The same thing, the one part of the system will be there, intelligent system, which will monitor the doctor database. And there will be some kind of threshold value and the sensor value will be considered according to the guidance of the medical doctor, right? And if the heart rate and the beat rate is up to that uh, less than threshold, then there is a requirement of the doctor and that system will send an alert to the doctor. If not, then stop the algorithm. Otherwise, the same process will be continued for the monitoring the patients. Now, the procedure is that the sensors are put on the bodies uh, of the particular patient who is suffering any kind of disease, and they are well connected with the IoT device. 
Every sensor will perform an operation of reading patient health and transferring data for the storing on the doctor monitoring system. The threshold value of every sensor is set based upon the health of the patient as suggested by the medical doctor. And if the threshold value is less than that of the sensor value, the message and the alert will be transferred to the doctor system to his or her mobile. And the same step will be repeated for to easy communication. Now, what happens when the, we get an alert to the doctor? The particular read the record, the doctor will check the record, whatever the message that is getting, whether it is connected to the healthy patient. Because in the COVID cases, wrong injection vaccines are being also given because there are the bulk of patients. So if there is a healthy patient, then send a message to the doctor and if the system matches that particular data with the database system then it the healthy patient is there then no need to check the patient if it is not there then check the patient update the record maintain the record is patient discharge yes then stop the process otherwise if patient is not improving or we want to take a care as a medical doctor of that patient, then repeat the same process. So same process is being repeated for that case. Again, why we are talking all these things? We are also doing the analysis with the help of heartbeat, as well as some of the uh, other parameter as our doctor is going to guide because we also have the symbiosis uh, medical doctor. We have a symbiosis hospital. So in that case, so hardware requirement for this research that we are considering, that is Raspberry Pi 3 kit, uh, heartbeat sensor, resistor, capacitor, connecting wires, monitoring screen, battery, UPS, rectifier, etc., and the software tools. For Windows as well as Java, why we are taking, we are also utilizing the cloud service as well as the encryption uh, of that medical record on, and storing on it. But doctor is also analysis. For that case, we are utilizing some machine learning algorithm, but the doctor, medical doctor will not understand it. Engineer can understand it, but to display to the doctor, we are utilizing the service of Power BI, which is directly connected to the cloud. After every um, license purchase copy, we get an, a more refreshed dashboard for that uh, patient uh, and data analysis. So for that case, we required the Linux operating system, window operating system, latest one, uh, latest version of Java compiler, graphic, uh, graphics process, processing software. So here, the duration tentatively we have considered that is for the uh, different activities such as procurement of the various equipment. We are spending somewhat six months to um, get an POs and all these things. We are also doing the simultaneous study called as the literature survey, what is missing? what we can improve, what we are required, what are the different types of Indian uh, people are there in our India, right? So experimentation that we are implementing for the part of the uh, human being, then analysis, experiment, um, experimentation by taking the active case study and publication, which will be a part of an, uh, not journal paper, but as well as for making the IoT kit device. So this is the work that we are carrying out. So this is the estimated fund required for our project. That's why I'm presenting here. So hardware, we are taking almost 15,000, software 15,000, and the cloud service that we require, that is 10,000 and publication for the any patent or journal paper, then we require the 10,000. So that was my presentation. So these are the reference that we have studied and we are going for the implementation. So any questions, sir? Uh, sir uh, yes, sir. Good evening. Your presentation was very nice. And uh, your application will be going to implement in the patient uh, body, am I correct? And uh, yeah, uh, it, it will be connected to uh, doctors only. Uh, sorry, sir. Can I get your voices? Your, your application is going to implement on your patient body, am I correct? Yes, yes. Monitoring the heart connect... rate. Okay, after that, it will be connected to the doctor's chamber. I mean, yes, yes. we are taking the okay. suggestion of medical doctor. Okay, so 
uh, it will be uh, continuously monitoring or whenever the threshold is crossing the point sir, after, uh, uh, co continuously monitoring because in icu what happen in general hospital there is a capacity okay. of eight patient there is capacity okay. of 20 patients right so okay. every time okay. doctor cannot be in the icu so mm -hmm. instead of that only the okay. specific emergency is required. The alert should go to the doctor on either on the one of the mobile device where the doctor okay. is uh, on the other work or other round, right? Okay. Only okay. then only the doctor is required to come here. Uh, that we are going to do. The second, okay. if he has given one uh, round morning, for example, the Power BI dashboard also tells that what was the trend before and what was the trend after after publishing the data so the data is also gathered for that particular doctor uh, patient's uh, bit rate and then the dashboard is varying just like an uh, uh, one of the real time examples right now i have uh, in my mind that is uh, stock exchange market always we find the graph is up and down like this right the same thing instead of utilizing the more equipments of the electronics gadgets we can provide them on the single dashboard utilizing the Power BI service, and that can be published with the help of cloud. So that is okay. the and one more thing uh, in uh, in the doctor's uh, uh, it will be mobile application. How the doctor can see the output uh, if any uh, notification okay, okay. comes yes. through the mobile uh, talk, mo monitor yes. or mobile device. monitor through the monitor or. Okay. Through the monitor, okay. just like in a okay. mobile system, right now we can browse from the mobile as well as we can browse it from the uh, monitor system because Power BI supports to the web browser, PBIX file, that we can open it, right? So okay. uh, it will not support. You, you incorporate mobile device or mobile application kind of thing. Yes, it because will be a mobile application. Uh, yes. Always a doctor may not be available in this, in this chamber and they can't, can't uh, always be not seeing the monitor. Okay, that is one point. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if monitor is not there, but definitely mobile is there. And mobile yeah, is uh, that, always with the person. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, That's the, why the uh, alert the is sent to be the incorporated doctor. with the mobile and the desktop kind of thing. Okay. Yes, yes. Fine. Yes. And yes, you are only your application only monitoring the rate only. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry. Your your application only monitoring the heart rate beat or any yeah. other extra uh, parameters. Extra, we are uh, we are taking some input from the doctors and then we are proceeding uh -huh, one see. by one, one by your, one. Your application monitoring the heart rate. Heartbeat rate only or some other uh, extra parameters. Uh, okay, okay. Parameters. Okay, other means we can also utilize the blood pressure. Yes, we are moving one by one step. If we are okay. successful in the one case, then. Yes, no, you are only concentrating on this heart rate. Heart yes, rate. yes. Heart rate. Yes. yes. Okay. Currently, we are on the stick with the heartbeat rate because there is an, a peak signal to the noise ratio. How much should be there when we are snoring in the sleepy mode? When we are taking a normal breath, what will be the exhalation and inhalation rate and all these things will be calculated and that all the inputs are being set for the threshold with the help of medical doctors. Okay, uh, very nice presentation. So I want to for the Anything else, sir? Okay, sir. Any Good presentation, notes? sir. Thank you. Good presentation. Thank you, sir. Can move so, on to the next. Yeah, thank you, sir. I would like to invite Anu Raghavi, ma'am, from VIT Chennai, presenting on ECG based heart disease classification for coronary artery disease. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I present there. Uh, ma'am, I'm present, but I couldn't share the screen since the... Yes, ma'am, now I will be sharing my screen. Yeah. Uh, is my screen visible, ma'am? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening to one and all present here. So this is Anu Raghavi, uh, research scholar from uh, Vellore Institute of Technology, Chennai, guided by Dr. P. Subhlakshmi, ma'am, assistant professor, senior, 
grade one from VIT Chennai, and I'm going to present on ECG based heart disease classification for coronary artery disease. So these are the table of my contents, which I'm going to cover for the day. So which I'll be explaining in the next slides. So introduction among the various uh, life threatening diseases so heart disease, it plays a very important role in the medical research. And uh, CAD is one of the cardiovascular diseases and has become the leading cause of the death for both men and women worldwide. So according to a survey by the World Health Organization, nearly 17.7 million of the people have been diseased because of CAD, which is nearly 31 percentage of the population results in the death mortality. So let me explain what CAD is first. So CAD is the accumulation of the plague in the arteries. So what happens if the plague gets accumulated is it stops the blood flow to the heart they'll be resulting in the heart diseases. So I'll be explaining this with the picture. So this is the a normal uh, heart structure where we can find the root-like structure that is called as the coronary artery. So we are this uh, root-like structure, the oxygen-rich uh, blood supply, it, uh, it, it, it flows to the heart. So the bottom left is the normal artery which supplies the oxygen-rich blood supply without any issues. And in the bottom right, we can see the yellow-colored substance which is called the um, plague content that plague content it starts accumulating in the arteries so what happens if the plague gets accumulating us uh, it stops the blood flow to the heart so uh, when the plague gets uh, multiplies more and more um, the blood flow it uh, stops completely they will be resulting in the heart attack so the objective is to incorporate a multi-level classification strategy with the ECG signals and also the demographic parameters in order to predict, my, predict the CAD and also to create an automatic warning system for the patient so that they can uh, uh, predict the uh, CAD at initial stages and they can go to the, uh, go to the hospitals for the further diagnosis. So these are my literature. So according to this uh, first author by Jamuna, so they have categorized the ECG signals uh, and uh, the, uh, sorry, they have categorized the ECG signals as a normal, uh, that, that is healthy patients. The other one is the CAD infected and MI and congestive heart failure classes. And uh, according to the, the uh, according to the paper, heart disease detection using a deep learning methods from imbalance to ECG signal, they have incorporated an in ensemble learning method by combining the LSTM and GAN. And what I inferred is that the accuracy is a high in the system. And also in the paper, automatic diagnosis of valvular heart disease by impedance or cardiography signal processing. So here a non- Yes, sir. Uh, and due to time constraints, can you go to your proposal? Sure, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, sir. So from the literature, what I identified is the real-time uh, real time ECG data set is not taken. And also the different classifications of CAD is not done. So which I'll, I'm trying to give an attempt on the real-time ECG data set and also the multi-level classifications of CAD. So methodology, I'm dividing it into four sectors like data acquisition. So the I'm using the low compact ECG signals for acquiring the ECG signals from the individual. And uh, the acquired uh, signals has been given into the signal pre-processing. So where it pre-processes for the noise and the suitable filter will be uh, analyzed for the future work. And the signal feature extraction is the pre-processed signal is given for the feature extraction phase where the uh, features are extracted. And also the imbalance to nature is also being sorted out in this feature extraction phase. So um, next is the signal classification where I'm going to classify it uh, whether the, the subject is being infected or he is a healthy subject by using the suitable classifiers. So this is the flow diagram of my model. Uh, so the raw ECG signal is being given into the uh, signal pre-processing. So the inputs here, which I'm going to consider are ECG signal as well as the demographic parameters. So it is given into the signal pre-processing phase. So once the signal gets normalized and uh, filtered for the noise, it is it is being given into the feature extraction, where the extracted feature set is being given into the feature selection. And uh, the finally, I'm going to classify the ECG beats as uh, whether uh, the subject is a uh, CAD infected or he is a healthy subject and I'm going to test the same. So coming on to budget, so I'm going to implement a Zoncare iMac ECG for this. So, so the price of this is 45,990. So conclusion is I'm going to implement a hybrid medical expert system uh, for the real-time ECG data set. 
for the multi level classification of care and also we are not only going to uh, categorize whether the subject is uh, infected or healthy and also an attempt on the severity of the care was will also be predicted and also with all the with the with my available input the other heart related issues uh, i mean other heart related diseases can also be predicted so this is my work plan and these are my references okay. If you have a question, it was my plan. Okay, and, sir. Uh, so, from ECC signal, how you identify uh, it is a um, disease level or not normal? What uh, parameter sir? you are considering in the ECC signal, it will be classified as a uh, uh, normal under the disease level. Okay, sir. Level. Sir, actually, I'm going to seek the help from the hospital, sir. So initially, I have uh, tried with the ML algorithm, sir. So I have uh, utilized okay. with the fuzzy logics, and I have considered only the uh, clinical parameters, which is uh, the demographic parameters. With that, I have identified. So okay. an attempt on the ECG, I have uh, uh, considered for this work, sir. Mm -hmm. That ECC signal. Okay. Okay, it is a up and down ECC signal, no? Yes, sir. Okay, from that, how you what parameters will helpful to identify? Classify that is a disease zone under normal. Sir, I'm going to uh, seek the help from the hospital, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, even you get the hospital, but okay. you have to identify uh, your application or implement. No. Yes, For sir. Yes. Specific parameter you get, get it from the hospital. Uh, sir, I'm going to consider that PQRST wave. So if okay. I'm getting some fluctuations in that wave, uh, I'm going to divide my signals into one seconds, like two seconds and three seconds. And I'm going okay. to analyze which one gives the best uh, performance. Okay, uh, you're, you're explaining something, but uh, can you explain uh, more clearly? Sir, actually, the, the answer the, I'm getting somewhat, but uh, okay, okay, you okay, sir, okay, sir. More it is good. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I, I, I'll be explaining. So, for my system, I'll be uh, giving the input as ECG signal, and the another one is the demographic parameter, sir. So, okay. the signals I'll, uh, I'll be taking with the help of that uh, low compact ECG uh, sensor. So, with that, I'm going to record the ECG signals and the recorded okay. signals, which will be in the digital format, I'll be uh, feeding that into my uh, software pipeline, sir. Okay. So, I already mm -hmm. have. After that, okay. uh, can you understand what, what I'm asking from the TCC signal? In which way you have to classify this is normal signal, this is a this is signal. What parameter is useful to classify? That is my point. Yes, sir. I'll be considering the PQRST, no, sir. Uh, that, uh, from that, that I'll, uh, uh, from that that I'll be extracting. Can you that point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I have considered the PQRST wave, sir. So from that, I'll be extracting the features and with the demographic parameters also. The both the features I'll be giving into the feature selection process, sir. Okay. Whether I'm so conveying to you. Technically, sir? the technical word only you are telling how it will be exactly work. That one I'm asking. PC, okay, sir. PC one signal you are told, no? So yes, from sir. that, how you identify? Uh, sir, actually, if we have some fluctuations and that uh, ECG signal, that's why I'm so asking. we'll be that's calling it I'm as asking. the infected signal, sir. Yes, sir. And so if we I'm have asking. some if, fluctuations, if, yes. If the signal is continuously uh, one particular stretch means it is good. Yes. Okay. Yes. If yes. 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 Means it is this is yes. If we so have some fluctuations point, in the uh, okay. that part, you have to give it as an input to this system, and that that will be in future it will be classified. For the one name as yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the the initial system that is uh, for the healthy patients, the PQRST wave will be without any fluctuations, and for the okay, infected so patients. Whenever you present, no, in future, okay, sir. You okay, also sir. So that wave normal uh, normal person normal person state. Normal and, and healthy. Okay, okay, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, so sir. Only we can identify because it is your point. You only working on that. Yes, sir. You yes, know, sir. These are the parameters, but. Uh, and no, novice people how can understand this is the normal and this is not this is a good one. Sure, the sir. Sure, sir. Show the uh, proof, then only you can understand. Okay, sir. Next time I'll be uh, refining this step, okay. sir. Thank you. Okay. From uh, from that, uh, what any uh, algorithm you are using to classify? Uh, sir, actually, for the classification, I have uh, reviewed some papers, sir. So, okay, and then a random forest, ADA boosting, they have considered. Okay. So, I'll be finding out the best classifier for the system, sir. Okay, it's only for I'm asking uh, if the uh, uh, stretches know that the signal stretches is different only, it will okay. be going to classify. So, okay. normally it is very basic thing. Okay, for that, uh, 
two chip classification algorithm structure. It is a, it is within the one particular uh, distance or range. Only okay. very less amount of signal is there means it is normal. Okay. Sir. Of, any uh, vice versa maybe. Uh, okay. Huge amount of signal is big. Okay. This is the basic uh, threshold point or uh, and classification point. So for that okay. more uh, classification algorithm structure or basic thing is required. Uh, sir, actually, what I have uh, surveyed from the papers is uh, like uh, uh, with the help of this uh, uh, convolutional neural network, we can make this uh, possible, sir. Okay. So, any accuracy point of view, whether you have picked out in about your application? Uh, sir, application. actually, so far, what I have reviewed is they have just classified whether the subject has been uh, healthy or uh, not healthy. And so far, I haven't come across for, by finding out the severity of the cats. Uh, so where I'm going to implement that, where I'm going to give a try on the implementation to find out the severity of the disease, sir. Okay, what is the noise, uh, novel uh, approach in our system compared to the system? Uh, so novelty is uh, the two, two things which, uh, which I'm going to uh, clear. So first one is that they have uh, just uh, uh, used the classification alone and the severity has not been done. And the second one is I'm going to club this uh, ECG and the uh, demographic parameters, sir. Okay, your application where is going to implement? The implementation After is... Uh, sorry, sir? They are getting the ECG signal uh, yes, in your data set. Point. So after that, where it will be uh, uh, real-time uh, end-user interface? Where yes, sir. they can visualize Yes, sir. So the ECG, that uh, compact uh, ECG machine, it have a port uh, where I can uh, bring the digital uh, signals into my uh, uh, software, sir. So okay, your laptop, okay. yes, sir. Yes, sir. To the laptop, I can there fetch that uh, digital be... signal. Yes, sir. In the laptop, I'll be doing my feature extraction, feature selections, and the classification, sir. After that, what is this? Uh, the, this classified, it is a decisible person, a signal, uh. then it will be transferred to whom or what to... Who will uh, be so, benefited or who, who will be take, responsible to take this action? Sir, actually, I'm uh, just uh, making this attempt so that uh, so we have some blood pressure test, no, sir. So if we find some symptoms at home, no, no nowadays we have a BP machine. So if we, if we experience some abnormality, we are uh, gently, we are doing that BP test. And if, if we find some abnormality, immediately we are approaching the doctor. So in the same concern, I'm uh, thought to implement this. So if I have some symptoms like uh, like uh, chest pain or some um, th some symptoms related to the heart, so immediately I can uh, do this test. So if I find this uh, critical, then I can uh, consult the doctors immediately for diagnosis. Okay, my suggestion uh, is my input to you. Okay, okay, you sir. implement incorporate your application to the smart watches or smart uh, wearables. So from that, because every time the person not going to hospital, okay. So, yes, sir. Uh, in, while wearing that uh, smart waist or smart wearables, there okay. itself it won't to set the uh, uh, IDPD particular crossing the threshold or uh, unexpected situation. It will be transferred to the uh, uh, patient's mobile device or uh, doctor's mobile device or like that you have to incorporate some features. Then sure, sir. Sure, sir. We'll, sure. Okay. Sure, so sir. we'll be deploying to, it in the future, sir. Okay, now I move on to one moment, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, good presentation, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, with a very good uh, uh, detailed uh, review. Okay. Sir. And one, uh, I feel very happy to find one of my friends' paper and the reference is the second one. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. And this is uh, Suresh Chandra Sapapati, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So it's a very good paper. <coughs> then definitely I definitely can uh, seek his help also, sir, if I'm in need in the future. Sure, definitely, definitely. Okay. Best wishes, ma'am. Best wishes okay, for sir. your PhD. Thank you, sir. Thank you, well. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank sir. You. On behalf of IFERP, I heartily thank all the evaluation committee members, session chairs, students, and research scholars who have actively participated in the IFERP. Thank you so much for sparing your valuable time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I thank you, Balamur, Dr. Balamurin, sir, and Dr. Ramasamy, sir, for sparing their valuable time from morning till evening. Thank you. It's a pleasure, sir. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you very much, Sundar, sir. Thank you very much, sir.
thank you and i also congratulate all the participants Wow. Despite yeah. being a Saturday yeah. to Sunday, yeah. and Sunday. also the organizers, despite being a Sunday with all full energy and enthusiasm, it's really great. Best wishes. Mm. And regards to Ramu Sami sir also. Thank you, sir. Same to you. <laughs> you are also. Thank you. Actually, we are waiting for the presentation. Uh, our uh, title is uh, Blood Fusion Warmer. Okay. So we are waiting. Actually, we allotted the time at the four forty p.m. Uh, we are waiting here from four thirty. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. Is it from India? Can you? Ma'am, uh, from EC department, I think. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, this is a CSE room. Sir, yeah. Um, yes. Sir, shall we conclude the conclude the paper? Ma'am, your name uh, when when in the EC session, your name was called. You were not avail uh, available out there, ma'am. Hey, felicitation for your five minutes. Sir, me to be God, sir. Uh, we joined at the correct time. And inside the ring, there is a red or tone. You check it properly. Can you discuss it? Okay, so in EC break breakout room completed, ma'am. Okay. The session is completed now only. Yeah, show two minutes to go. It's complete. Sir, <laughs> what should we do now? Actually, my students okay. are also here. <laughs> ah, one minute. Okay, sir. Uh, Sunil sir, me and uh, Ram sir, sir, we'll make a leave. Ah, okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ram Sam sir. Thank you, sir. A very warm good evening to one of our present here. And my name is Emma Amrita Valley, and I'm going to explain about blood infusion warmer. Okay, you can come in. Blood infusion warmer, and this is a project, and the, I'm the leader of this project, and my partner name is Shankari Malakar. Now I'm going to explain about. So these are the subtitles of my project. And now I'm going to explain all these about. So this is the abstract. So in this, the main project of this is we are going to heat the stored blood by using warmer based on the patient's blood temperature. So in this blood temperature, our blood bank has been stored at a low temperature about two degrees Celsius to six degrees Celsius. The both sensors can be sent to the output to the microcontroller inbuilt with ACD. Here, the two temperature sensors has been used, where one is to detect the body temperature and other sensor to detect the blood bank temperature. 
So here we have introduced our microcontroller based protocol, paramedic blood warmer, which aims to decrease the time of warming the blood by providing controlling heating. So this is our interaction. So in this, our normal body temperature will be 37.5 degree Celsius. In this, the blood has been stored. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, will you please move the screen? Actually, your screen is in the uh, first. It, it is visible in the first slide. Um, maybe some network issues, I think, so you can't visible, sir. I have been moved to the pages. Okay. So one minute, sir, I'll be going out and I'll be again sharing and logging, sir. Okay. So can you visible now? So? Yes, ma'am, you can proceed. Uh, it's okay. visible. Okay, sir. So our body normal, our normal temperature of our body is 37.5 degrees Celsius. In this, the blood stored at low temperature to the lower metabolic rate and the bacterial of growth. So in this, an adult receiving frequently more than 50 ml of 15 ml of blood blood a patient with active cold organism paroxysmal hemoglobin cold blood could cause arrhythmias and cardiac arrest so in this objective what i'm going to say is the so we are producing a minimal of invents portable and the time saving and the enhance useful and emergency patients who have major temura have changes of getting affected by hypothermia. In this, the major fact that hypothermia contributes a severity of injuries and anesthesias and sedications of agents. So this is our literature review. So this is an existing method. In these, uh, there are several methods of warming. Four fluids and blitz are currently available. So in this, uh, four tub tubing in a wa water bath, microwaving the bats of fluid to be infused. Adding heated saline to blood to be infused. Passing the four tubing through the heat blocking or through a plastic tube warmed with forced hair. Passing the fourth tubing through a conductive surface, interfacing with a counter current, heater, water bath, magnetic induction, tree warming fluids in a convection over or in a microwave oven. But in all these methods, consuming times are not safe. The overcoming this, we introduced the microcontroller based protocol paramedic blood warmer for the transfusion. In this proposed method that already have said that uh, we have introduced that microcontroller based protocol paramedic blood warmer, which this aims to decrease the time for warming the blood by providing controlling heating. In this, the LM35 presides temperature sensor is used to measure blood bank temperature. In this, the output of microcontroller, which is sending, it can be inbuilt with ADC, that is analog to digital converter. Here, we describe two inventions of proto portable warming devices for blood and blood products and fluid solutions. The devices have several advantages, including reduced contact with blood and blood products, instant preparation of blood for this injections, decreased damage to blood and the blood products. These precious controllings of heat process, avoiding physicals and chemical changes in quality of blood 
and blood products and also avoiding hypersensitive symptoms due to injections. So methodology. In this methodology, we are approaching or using two of LM35 temperature sensors to detect the blood temperature and our body temperature. The vibrating sensors is used to find any abnormal conditions like first stage while transfusion of blood. So while the during of abnormal situations, the transfusion is halted and detected by the vibration sensor. The overall process is done by automatical or manual. For manual operations, we can use keyboard. For the automatically, we don't need to use the keyboard. It automatically generates our blood pressure, our temperature, and a heart rate also. So this is our proposed systems block diagram. And this is pin diagram of our blood infusion warmer. And this is our circuit. So by using these oil kits, we have been made this. So these are the materials of hardware and software components has been used to our circuit. So in hardware, I have used a microcontroller, LCD, power supply, temperature sensor, vibration sensor, and pillitrol module and relay. In software components, I have used embedded C and Arduino IDE. Now let's see the process to it. So first, collect all the hardware components, then give connections between the sensors with microcontroller, then the Arduino IDE software installation, creating coding for temperature sensor interfacing, coding for vibration sensor interfacing, coding for pillitrol module and relay interfacing, and debugging and testing. So this is a block diagram, microcontroller, this is Arduino MC. So in this Arduino, we have been basically used as AT Omega. Kavi Priya, your block, actually the block diagram is not unable to. <laughs> Sir? Uh, your screen is blank. Oh, I think so, maybe some network issues. So one second. Okay, okay. okay you can. So now, can you see, sir? Sir? No, no, no. Can't able to see. Oh. I think so. Some, I think so. My actually here the networks has been too slow. So maybe. So you can come. Okay, sir. So this is an Arduino MC. Now I'm gonna explain about this. So. So uh, AT Mega 328 is basically an advanced virtual RASC AVR microcontroller. So it supports to the data up to eight bits. The AT Mega 328 has 32 KB internal built-in memory. This microcontroller has a lot of other characteristics. That is, the at Mega 328 has one KB electrically that is erasable programmable read only memory, double EPROM. So this property shows the electric supply supplied to the microcontroller is remote when it can store the data and can provide whistles after providing with the electric supply. So in this, moreover, our AT Mega 328 has two KB statistics random memory, that is SRAM. The other characteristics will be explained later. So in this, uh, the AT Mega 328 has several different features, which makes it the most popular devices in today's market. So in these features, the advance has been uh, contained as RISE architecture that good performs low power consumption, rival timer counter having separate oscillators, six PWM pins, programmable several USART, Programming lock for software security through input up to 20 MIPH, etc. So in this uh, AT Mega 328 is mostly used in Arduino. This is the vibrating sensor. This vibrating sensor, uh, sensor has a features an adjustable potentiometer. 
the vibration sensor and a LM393 comparator chip to give an adjustable digital output based on the amount of vibration. So this potentiometer can be adjusted to both increasing and decreasing the sensitivity to the desired amount. The module of output logic level height, that is VCC, when it's triggered to a low, that is to ground, when is it? Additionally, there is an onboard LED that turns on when the module is triggered. So in this, the vibrating sensor, the features has been used is the default state of switches always will be closed and the digital output supply voltage is 3.3 volt to 5 volt. The onboard indirect LED to show the results, the onboard LM393 chip, the SW420 based sensor, normally closed type vibration sensor. So the dimension of the board is 3.2 centimeter of 1.4 centimeter. So this is an pelletral module. The pelletral module is an passing an electric current through this circuit consisting of two different conductors. One side is will be the cooling effect, which is absorbing one junction, whereas the another junction experiences a rinse in temperature. This changes the temperature at the junctions is called the pilateral effect. For example, when the copper wire and the bitsmith wire are connected in an electrical circuit, heat is generated at the point where our current passes from copper to bitsmith and a drop in temperature occurs. So in this, the current passes from bitsmith to copper, it is reversibly in nature. And the other one is the heating or the cooling effect absorbed at the junction where we provide can be reserved by changing the directions of the current flow. This is the temperature sensor. The LM35 is an integrated circuit sensor. This can be used to measure temperature with an electrical output proportionally to the temperature in zero degree Celsius. So in this, the sensor circuitry is scaled and not subjected to oxidization, etc. So the high the LM35 generates a higher output voltage than the thermocouples and many are not required that the output voltage be amplified. So these features has been operates from 4 volt to 30 volt, less than 60 mu to current drain, linear plus 10 minus m volt degree Celsius scale parameter factor, 0 0.5 degree Celsius en route accessories at 25 degree Celsius, rated for full, that is minus 55 degree Celsius to 150 degree Celsius range. And this is really, this relay is an electrical operated switch. It consists of set of input terminals for a single or multiplying control signals and a set of operation contact terminals. So in this switch, we may have many number of contacts in multiple context forms, such as make contacts, break contacts, or combinations therefore. So in this features, we are seeing, uh, we are seeing as RW series, that is relay conveyors, switching capacity by 10A in spite of miniature size to compile with user's wide section. So in this, w, RWH is approved to CUL and TUVD safety standard. So the employment of the suitable plastic material is applied under high temperature conditions and the variable chemical solutions. This is software equipment of Arduino 1.85. So this Arduino is an open source electrical platform based on easy to use hardware and the software. So in this Arduino boards, we are can able to read inputs, light or a sensor, a figure on a butter, on a Twitter message. It turns into an output activating a motor, turning on an LED, publishing something online. So due so this, so you we can use an Arduino programming language based on wiring and the Arduino software IDE based on processing. And this is embedded C that's used in software. So the embedded C is set of a language extension for a C programming by the C standards committee to address commonly issues that are existing between C extension for different embedded systems. 
So this uh, C programming requires no standard extensions to the C languages in order to support exotic features such as fixed point arithmetic and multiple distance memory banks and basic input and output operations. So in this embedded, the most of syntax and semantics of standards we are using is main functions, variable definitions, data type declaration, conditional statements, if, switch, case, loops, while, form, for, functions, array, and strings, structurals and union, bit operations, macarons, etc. So these are effects of COVID-19 paramedic of supplying and the use of blood for transfusions. Coming to you, what is the budget of your project? Sir, it's almost 12,000. Okay. It's a very nice presentation to you have given. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So these are the contributions, declarations of interest, and this is acknowledgement. So in this contributions, we have been SJS, NS, and JD convinced of the idea for the reviews. So uh, in declaration of interest, we, uh, we declare the no component, uh, no company and interested. Acknowledgements, we could like to acknowledge Kim Clazy, NHS Blood and Transplant, John Radcliffe Hospital, Oxford, UK, for an administrative support and formatting. So these are the work done that I have already said before that we have installed Arduino software required and the components and embedded C and the other thing. So these are the conclusion. In conclusion, the everything what I have said before that I've been uh, totally um, interacted into that and I have connected everything to that uh, by giving all this uh, process to the current and I'm showing, I will show you the video for this. This is our outcome of the project and, uh, oh shit. Yes, okay. Sir, can you see my, uh, uh, I mean, can you see my results, sir? No, your uh, screen is not visible actually. Till now from the starting itself, it is not visible. Oh. Okay, but it is a good presentation. So you can, uh, can we, okay, we can close the session. Okay, sir. It's already. Okay, it's a nice presentation, so okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kavipri. Thank you, Kavipri. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank okay. uh, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so we are ending the session. I heartily thank all the evaluation committee members, session chairs, and the students, and the research scholars who have actively participated in the IFERP Innovative Project Seat Funding Scheme.